Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 1 Xiao Yuan was the president of a company. Probably because both his father and grandfather were tyrannical presidents themselves, his family had always wanted to make him into a tyrannical president as well. A tyrannical president should be handsome and rich, evil and arrogant, someone that'll spoil his loved ones, and above all, he must be able to memorize by heart the 300 quotes from the previous presidents. Unfortunately, Xiao Yuan could only be the first. But that didn't matter at all. The Xiao family firmly believed that they could turn Xiao Yuan into a man who is loved by all women and makes all men jealous. Someone that spreads powerful pheromones everywhere. A tyrannical. President. The Xiao family had two important family mottos. There's nothing that can't be solved by money. If there is, then just double the price. If you have money, you can do whatever you want. Looking at these two awe-inspiring, passionate and shocking family mottos, everyone could understand why the Xiao family wanted to make Xiao Yuan into a tyrannical president. However, Xiao Yuan himself wasn't quite able to understand their reasons. He felt that the loyal dog, warm man type was good enough. His family firmly believed that the only reason for him to think like that was because he hadn't met his true love yet. His true love must be someone who isn't rich or too beautiful, it's even better if she's from a small city, preferably a low-level employee of the Xiao family company. She can't be too pretty, but she must be kind. She must have the goddess Halo, someone that is compassionate and reasonable, even when facing her love rivals. She must not be too clever, and she absolutely can't refuse her male partner. And even when facing her love rivals, she must. Not. Seek. Revenge. It's also better if she, from time to time, picks up a stray dog or a cat from the street. Just perfect. That day, while getting off work, Xiao Yuan actually bumped into someone like that. Literally. Bumped. Into. One. It was all because this young woman, who was running through the company's lobby, ran into him. The young woman then fell to the ground, with tears flowing from her eyes. The flower vase in her hands also fell, shattering into pieces. Xiao Yuan quickly helped her to get up, I'm sorry, how much does this flower vase cost? I'll pay for it. However, the young woman shook off his hand and angrily shouted at him, Who wants your money? Do you rich people really believe that money can buy everything? You better apologize to me. But I apologize to you, Xiao Yuan thought. And it was you who bumped into me. I'm sorry. Xiao Yuan thought that the young woman might not have heard him, so he just repeated himself. In order to express his sincere apology, Xiao Yuan took out his wallet. How much do I owe you? Who wants your money? The young woman knocked the wallet out of his hands, resulting in it falling on the ground. Wow, she's not like those women who are flirtatious and pretend to be humble on the outside, she's so unpretentious. As a tyrannical president, Xiao Yuan should have that thought. However, Xiao Yuan only felt that there was something wrong with the young woman's brain. He picked up his wallet, and by following the idea that her stupidity might be contagious, he left as fast as he could. After the Xiao family heard about this, they thought that this type of woman might not be suitable for Xiao Yuan, so they arranged a party for him. At the party, Xiao Yuan met a young rich Missy Wan. The name of this young Missy was, Lin Mei Dai Bing Jing Zi Puli Yi Huang Ling. Xiao Yuan didn't want to meet her. He felt that a normal Chinese person wouldn't have such an inexplicable name. But because his family had put a lot of pressure on him, he had no other choice than to go and talk to her. Xiao Yuan's first thought when he saw Missy Lin Mei Dai Bing Jing Zi Puli Yi Huang Ling, was, what the fuck? Two there's people out there who are bold enough to dye their hair rainbow colors. In this era, when the 90s generation started to lose their hair and began balding at such a young age, this young woman's approach was truly painful. Too shocking. Too horrible. This Miss Lin Mei Dai Bing Jing Zipoli Yi Huang Ling, is very clean and tall, she got a PhD at the age of 14, and is proficient in piano, chess and calligraphy. 
she has the mark of a red spider lily flower three on her forehead, and when she laughs. Oh, it's a good thing that she doesn't have petals falling off her face when she smiles, otherwise, materialist thinkers would be crying on the toilet. Faced with such a vivacious, beautiful and intelligent young woman, Xiao Yuan only said two words. Goodbye. The Xiao family felt disheartened, their chest hurts as if they had angina for, a muffled pain in their precordial region. You can't even like this type of woman. What type of woman do you like, Xiao Yuan? Suddenly. The Xiao family realized something. Fuck, Xiao Yuan, he. He. May. Be. Gay. Xiao Yuan originally wanted to say that he would like someone who is plain and normal, but since the entire Xiao family had all come to such a decisive conclusion, Xiao Yuan was too lazy to argue with them. Because he had never liked a woman nor a man. Maybe he really was gay. Unsurprisingly, he actually met a show 5. Chapter, 2. A tyrannical president just met a lovely and cute show. His beauty makes women jealous. He has big watery eyes and bright lips. His character is naive and gentle. And he has a wicked female friend by his side. He likes to cry, especially when the president forces himself onto him. He would cry no while also not pushing back, and then hell cry over the loss of his own virginity. But don't worry. Since he can somehow forgive the tyrannical president afterwards. Ah, that's love, I guess. This love is bullshit one. Xiao Yuan yelled in his heart, I can go to the street and find a young woman who is a hundred times better than you. Someone that will not make trouble. And will not cry all the time. Faced with this kind of show, Xiao Yuan felt that even if he was gay, he might be scared straight. The Xiao family noticed this. Wait, something isn't right. Why don't you even like the typical tyrannical president's show? Could it be? Holy shit. Is Xiao Yuan a show himself? His too. The Xiao family felt depressed, corrupted, and like they were falling into tragedy. This was beyond the family motto. But it doesn't matter, since he can't walk the road of the tyrannical president, they can still solve it by transforming him into the seductive show president. For example, if he meets a mafia boss a tyrannical, black-bellied gangster that emits s aura everywhere. After leaving work that day, Xiao Yuan found that his car had been damaged, and then saw that a piece of paper was stuck on the door of the car, asking him to negotiate a compensation. Xiao Yuan dialed the man's phone saying that it was okay and that there wasn't a need to compensate him. The man sneered and said, Do you even know who I am? Xiao Yuan. I don't care who the fuck you are. Why did you put a scratch on someone else's car? Is it too difficult to just apologize? Wait, those words sound just like the quotes of a tyrannical president. Sensing that Xiao Yuan was silent, the man laughed and gave his name. He turned out to be an actual mafia boss, the type that ignited fear by mentioning his name. He asked Xiao Yuan to come, saying that no matter how much money he asked for, he could afford it. Xiao Yuan thought, since he didn't have the potential of becoming a tyrannical president himself, he might as well go and see what an actual tyrannical boss looks like. So Xiao Yuan went to meet him. However, Xiao Yuan soon realized that this guy was sick. Because they didn't talk about the compensation at all. They didn't even talk much to begin with, when the mafia boss said that he wanted to imprison him. Xiao Yuan said to him that he wasn't an M, and he wasn't interested in SM or BD. The mafia boss said that it was okay I will transform your body with bondage play, imprisonment play, and many other kinky things. You will fall prey to lust every day and for the rest of your life, until you became my submissive. In the end, we'll finally fall in love. We'll try to kill each other and being together will become complicated, forever tangled into a sadistic abusive relationship. Hmm. It sounded inspirational, but Xiao Yuan still felt that this guy had a serious problem. After all, he doesn't suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. This tyrannical boss was very bossy. Lifting up his chin and pinching his waist, saying things like hell tie him up and force him into imprisonment. Then, he was beaten up by Xiao Yuan. After all, Xiao Yuan had practiced self-defense ever since he was a child. 
After the beating, Xiao Yuan felt even more nervous. He felt at a loss with his role as a tyrannical president, and now his role as a seductive show president went downhill as well. Forget it, love affairs are way too frustrating, it's better to just keep doing my work. So Xiao Yuan worked diligently. Intending to be a positive figure of society, to be a good young man, an excellent member of his political Chinese party, and to serve the people for the rest of his life. And then, he was diagnosed with a terminal illness. Chapter, 3 When Xiao Yuan got his medical examination results, his face darkened for a long time. Then he went back and read 233 tyrannical presidential novels, but he wasn't able to find a single story with a president being diagnosed with a terminal illness. However, Xiao Yuan didn't care and instead developed a surprising hobby. And that was reading novels. Reading. Web. Novels. He couldn't find his role in life, and couldn't cure his disease. So why don't use the last of his existence to read novels and comfort his soul? But in the end, when Xiao Yuan wanted to find spiritual comfort from novels, the heavens had to slap him hard in the face again. Xiao Yuan was reading a novel that was on the top 10 of a certain online list. There are thousands of masterpieces in this world, but Xiao Yuan just had to immerse himself into a novel in which he wanted to bury the author alive after he finished reading it. This novel was way too toxic and cruel. The author fed the knives to the readers, as if they were flies molesting everyone they couldn't be avoided, and they were like those big Spanish flies. After reading, Xiao Yuan flipped through the comments section of the novel, and as expected, the readers kindly showed the author the lower limit of their cursing skills. A perfectly good historical novel got fucking turned into a stallion novel one. Im Arg. Author, come out. AI promise I won't hit you. It'll just cut you with a blade. The first half of the book was amazing, but then the second half arouses my desires to kill. This novel is stupid. In the comments section, the insults were original, but they weren't fun. There were some who were insulting the characters, and some others who were insulting the plot. True fans versus anti-fans, it was truly chaotic. Everything and everyone was being insulted. In the end, most people didn't even know what they were insulting anymore. Xiao Yuan saw an interesting long comment, the general content was like this, as a fan of historical fiction, and as someone who once held this book close to my heart but now sees it as pure dirt, I feel I have something to say. And I have a lot to say. First, let's take a closer look at the name of this book, The History of the Four Kingdoms. Listen. You guys listen. What an orthodox name. How elegant. How meticulous. How awe-inspiring. And this novel starts out very decent too. Let me briefly explain the story for those who haven't read it. It tells the story of the prince of the southern Yen kingdom, who was captured and taken prisoner to the northern kingdom. The male lead, who used to be a prince, was tortured, humiliated and abused in the northern kingdom. But even then, he endured the humiliation and was able to escape from the northern kingdom. However, the country in which he used to live, was already at war. The people suffered and the land was occupied by enemy countries. From then on, the prince relied on his hatred and in his talent, summoning his subordinates, recruited troops, and defeated the northern kingdom in one fell swoop. He even killed the young emperor with his own hands. Afterwards, the prince went further and further on his road of unifying the four kingdoms into one. Friends. Look. Look at the rise and fall of this country, look at the mountains and rivers that are breaking down. What an exciting novel this is. However. Ever since the author finished writing the male lead defeating the northern kingdom, it seems as if they were high on drugs. His ego began to let go of the status quo. The female generals of the Western Shu Kingdom, the erotic prostitutes of the Southern Yen Kingdom, the twelve singers of the Eastern Wu Kingdom. The male lead was like a walking aphrodisiac, growing his harem while also fighting a war. Growing. His. Harem. While. Also. Fighting. War. Why haven't his subordinates killed him yet? Wherever he went, the girls would climb onto him without asking for anything in return, 
it looked like an open invitation. And just like that, he unified the nation, out of thin air. It's fine to write it as a stallion novel, even having ten girls a night is fine too. But writing an historical fictional book as a harem drama fiction is really too ah forget it. But what the hell is a soul reanimation potion? How come there is fantasy too? What? Although the princess of the northern kingdom is the moonlight brightening the male lead's heart, and she's the reader's number one and only goddess, there's no denying that she's the female lead. But. She is dead. She was killed by the author. How many years has it been since she passed away? She's not a cold corpse anymore. She's a rotten body. To hell with the soul reanimation potion. Still, you self-centered prick. Author, doesn't your conscience hurt? Does. It. Not. Hurt. And. Even when the male lead is described to have many lovers, why did you have to write a paragraph about him looking like he was in true love with her? It's so confusing. After seeing this comment, Xiao Yuan thought about it for a while, and then replied giving his own opinion. The male lead should have been in love with the princess of the northern kingdom. But the princess not only committed suicide because of him, she also didn't accept him until her death, which is why the male lead became like that later, right? If the princess of the northern kingdom showed a hint of love for him, I think the male lead will only love her for the rest of his life. Chapter 4 Xiao Yuan's health began to deteriorate day by day, and he had no intention of relying on expensive treatments to continue his life. Xiao Yuan decided to anonymously donate his money to a hospital, and then put all of his remaining assets into a bank account. After doing this, Xiao Yuan quietly left the hospital and went to a nursing home in the suburbs. This was a very high-end nursing home, a place where even the middle-class families couldn't afford to enter. Making one wonder, capitalism is really dark. Stained with the blood of the working class. Xiao Yuan was familiar with this nursing home and easily found a rather luxurious room. A young nurse walked out of the room and was slightly surprised when she saw Xiao Yuan, Mr. Xiao. Is he in a good mood today? Xiao Yuan asked. He's all right. Really? That's good. Would you like to go in and see him, Mr. Xiao? Yes, please tell others not to come in while I'm inside, even if they hear any noise. Understood. The nurse nodded and walked away silently. Xiao Yuan took a deep breath and took a look at his phone. Well, the company's affairs have been dealt with, and there is no problem with his testament. Just as Xiao Yuan was about to put back his phone, a message suddenly popped up on the novel website. Xiao Yuan thought it was a hate reply to the comment he sent that day. After all, on a normal day he wouldn't even look at it. But today he felt different. Xiao Yuan then followed his curiosity and opened the comment section. It wasn't a hate reply. Not only it wasn't a hate reply, but also the person and the content of the reply made Xiao Yuan feel very surprised. The message was sent by the author, and the content was a single sentence. Only you understand him. I understand him. Xiao Yuan was confused. Who do I understand? Was it the male lead? After wondering what the author meant, Xiao Yuan put his phone away, pushed open the door, and entered the room. The room was bright and spacious, the long curtains swayed in front of the clear windows. In the middle of the room, a young man in a wheelchair was holding a cat's neck and pushing it into a goldfish tank. He was emotionlessly looking at the cat who was struggling from drowning. He didn't even raise his head when he heard the sound of the door opening. What are you doing? Xiao Yuan went to him and asked. The nurse said it likes fish, but the fish is in the water, so I'm helping it get it. The man's voice didn't fluctuate. Is that so Xiao Yuan murmured softly, oh by the way, I'm leaving. The man suddenly trembled. He looked at Xiao Yuan and his hand went slack, loosening the strong grip on the cat's neck. At that moment, the cat hurriedly ran away. Leaving the floor wet. For how long will you be gone? The man asked. I will not be coming back. Xiao Yuan answered. The man nodded and rolled his wheelchair to the coffee table. He reached for a cup and threw it hard at Xiao Yuan. 
The cup accurately hit Xiao Yuan's forehead, the pain he felt accompanied the sound of the cup shattering on the ground. Xiao Yuan was shocked by the sudden hit. Instinctively, he touched his forehead and some blood spread it through his fingers, then falling down towards his eye. Do you still remember what you said to me on our mother's grave? The young man asked. Yes, I do remember. Xiao Yuan took a breath and tried to relieve the pain coming from his head. What did you say? The man suddenly shouted. I said that I would take care of you for her, for the rest of my life. There was more. If I don't do it, I will die. Then fucking die. I I transferred all my assets to your bank account, you. Fuck you. Go to hell. For now on, you will have to take care of yourself, I'm sorry. Shut up. And die for me. All right. Xiao Yuan walked right to a window, opened it, and then jumped down from the fifth floor. Chapter 5 Xiao Yuan was dazed by the light gauze drapery and dazzling smoke that surrounded him. He slightly nodded his head and found himself covered with a slightly fragrant bedding quilt. On this bedding quilt was embroidered a majestic golden dragon, this dragon was breathing flames, his sharp teeth and dancing claws one made him look very much lifelike. Xiao Yuan braced himself and sat up on the bed. Suddenly, long silk-like black hair fell down his shoulders like a waterfall. Ha! Huh. Xiao Yuan grabbed a few strands of hair and pulled hard. Ouch, it hurts. Xiao Yuan's mind began to think at a rapid speed, and then he felt extremely confused. Could this be a rebirth? Is Marx's coffin plate still sealed? Your Majesty, are you awake? This maidservant will help you change clothes. The door of the bedchamber was gently pushed open and a beautiful, young woman walked in. In her hands, she was holding a basin with water to help him wash his face. She was dressed in a plain cyan robe and her hair was tied up in a bun, decorated with a bronze ancient hairpin. Your Majesty! Xiao Yuan felt a little bit sad, it wasn't easy to be reborn to begin with and this setting turned out to be a realistic one. He wouldn't be able to experience the pleasure of a cultivation world. Although Marx will cry on his grave, Newton can rest at ease. Are there any monsters or immortals, or anything of the sort in this world? Xiao Yuan asked. The young woman was stunned, Your Majesty. Are you planning to go to the temple to worship? Oh, so it's not a fantasy setting either. Xiao Yuan showed an expression of disappointment. Your Majesty, the late emperor has entered the western paradise too for so many days now, don't be sad you should be careful to not damage your body health. The maidservant, who was closely observing Xiao Yuan's movements, tried to comfort him with a gentle voice. Oh. So his soul is inside a new emperor's body, that just recently inherited the throne. Is there a mirror? Xiao Yuan asked the maidservant. The maidservant immediately brought a bronze mirror, bowed and knelt in front of the bed, handing it over to Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan took the bronze mirror and studied his face features. Ah, he's really good looking, clear and handsome. His eyebrows and eyes were well defined, his skin was very pale and beautiful, his lips were naturally red and his eyes were bright. This was the face of a young and beautiful teenager. Xiao Yuan quietly sighed, and silently defined himself inside his heart. A young emperor. This kind of monarch, either the military power is not in his hand, and he ended up as his mother or uncle's puppet. Or he's a hot-minded youth, who doesn't know how to rule a country, and is determined to spend his days in luxury and corruption. Either way, I already know that this kind of road, at the beginning, is not an easy path to walk on. However, rebirth is a strange opportunity, one that I got among a thousand people even if I'm not the protagonist, I won't be a simple cannon fodder that appears on one page. Xiao Yuan was suddenly in high spirits. What's your name? Xiao Yuan asked the maidservant. The maidservant was clearly confused for a brief moment, but she still replied in a respectful way regardless, this maidservant's name is Hong Xiao. Hong. Wait a minute, this name, why does it sound so familiar? Young Emperor. The late Emperor died. Xiao Yuan hesitated several times, but in the end, he managed to ask, what has Princess Yongning been busy with lately? 
answering to his majesty. Hong Xiao knelt on the ground and bowed her head. This maid servant heard that the princess has been learning to play the guqin recently. Xiao Yuan, who just a moment ago was very satisfied with his current situation, after listening to what the maidservant said, flopped on the bed stiff as a corpse. Your Majesty. What happened, Your Majesty? Are you feeling sick? Your Majesty. Hong Xiao was extremely shocked at his reaction, asking him in a flustered voice. Life grabbed me by the throat and then gave me a loud slap in the face. Ah. I know that only true warriors would dare to face the painful reality of life, even if blood is dropped. You're your majesty. Now my fate is sealed. In this world where the human hearts are not the same as they used to be in ancient times three, and where everything they care about is materialistic desires, only this quilt has a little warmth left. Your majesty. What's wrong? They'll summon the imperial physician right away. Hong Xiao stumbled a few frightened steps and hurried to call someone for help, but Xiao Yuan quickly stopped her. Everything is fine, I was just running away from reality. Xiao Yuan waved his hand weakly. Xiao Yuan has fully understood that he wasn't reborn at all. He had transmigrated four into a book. He got transmigrated into the stallion novel The History of the Four Kingdoms that he read before dying. In the original book, Hong Xiao was the personal maidservant of the young emperor of the Northern Kingdom. Now, he's also that same young emperor that gets tortured alive at the hands of the male lead. Xiao Yuan, in the midst of Hong Xiao's panicked questioning expression, rolled over on the bed facing the wall with a miserable look adorning his face. Ah, it would have been better to have the role of a cannon fodder after all. As a president at my prime of youth five, I wasn't even able to meet my soulmate when I suddenly got diagnosed with a terminal illness. This alone is enough to complain for a lifetime, but now I also had to transmigrate into such a complicated supporting role ah, my life is really miserable, and sorrowful. After finishing organizing his thoughts and feeling dispirited, Xiao Yuan got up and asked Hong Xiao, who was already feeling very disoriented, where's Yan He Qing? Your Majesty, this maidservant is ignorant and doesn't know what his majesty is asking about. Hong Xiao was at a loss for words and fell to her knees to count out six. Xiao Yuan quickly pulled her up, it's the male lead, wait no, it's the captured prince of the southern Yan kingdom, MMH. You still don't understand. I'm talking about the prince that was captured alive by my father, oh right, by the late emperor of the northern kingdom who conquered his country. Hong Xiao's face was still showing a very confused expression. Xiao Yuan bowed his head in thought for a few seconds after finally saying, The prince that I want to take as a male concubine. Hong Xiao suddenly realized, Oh, this maidservant knows. Xiao Yuan. So I just had to say that for you to finally understand. Why do I feel like I'm getting closer and closer to being tortured to death? Chapter 6 he was very bold but not very astute one. This was the impression that Xiao Yuan had of the late emperor of the Northern Kingdom in the original book. In the original book, the accomplishments of the late emperor of the Northern Kingdom were probably all due to good luck. At that time, the Northern Kingdom had a good harvest year after year, the country was rich and the common people were prosperous. Therefore, the late emperor of the Northern Kingdom had the ambition of conquering the Southern Yan Kingdom. It also coincided with the fact that the Southern Yen Kingdom had suffered from successive years of famine, and also, the monarch of the Southern Yen had just passed away. This was a terrible amount of bad luck for them. Because of this, the late Emperor of the Northern Kingdom took advantage of this rare weakness and invaded the Southern Yen Kingdom in one single stroke, capturing the last prince alive, seized its property, and divided the land. However, the late Emperor, who was good at fighting and very brave in the battlefield, was also quite negligent in government affairs. After the war ended, he just clapped his ass and went back home. He went back home. Dage 2, Armstrong traveled 380,000 kilometers to the moon and even he knew that he must leave behind a flag. So you just worked so hard fighting for this land, but you can't even be bothered to leave your flag behind? Do you only know about the essence of how to bend a bow that can shoot down a big eagle 3? 
Later, the southern Yan kingdom was partly seized by the eastern Wu kingdom by setting the house on fire for. The remaining land was barely managed by the uncle of the male lead. After winning the war, the late emperor of the northern kingdom lived day and night in leisurely, absurdity and in obscenity squandering the treasury obtained from the southern Yan kingdom. In the end, it wasn't a surprise for anybody when the emperor drank himself to death. The crown prince soon succeeded the throne, and this youthful monarch who had grown up hearing about the late emperor's immoral and ruthless way of ruling the country, also became inept, a truly hopeless case. It could be said that when the northern kingdom was destroyed by the male lead later on, in such a short period of time, it wasn't an event that occurred out of nothing. The root of this misfortune had already been deeply buried between the last two generations of northern kingdom's rulers. Xiao Yuan hurriedly went to the dungeon inside the imperial palace, and when he entered through the iron gate, a dense rotting smell slapped him in the face. The jailer obviously didn't expect for the emperor to come to such a place. Trembling with fear, he fell on his knees to Kaudao, feeling how his heart was beating at a rapid speed. Your Majesty, you're the Golden Dragon's noble body, how can His Majesty enter such a filthy place? If there's anything His Majesty needs, he can just command Wei Chen Five to do it. Xiao Yuan's imperial bodyguard shouted while kneeling on the ground. We're all pieces of meat formed by cells with 23 pairs of chromosomes, there's no need to differentiate yourself from me. Xiao Yuan said with a serious tone of voice to the imperial bodyguard. Imperial bodyguards, ah. Uh, knowledge is a good thing. What? That's why we should fight against blind fate in favor of science. Huh. Never mind, I was just teasing you. Xiao Yuan smiled at the bewildered-looking jailer and stepped through the iron gate. Three seconds later, Xiao Yuan covered his nose and jumped out. It's so the smell is way too unpleasant, he needs to slow down a bit. Under the torture of the unpleasant smell, and by following the theory of survival of the fittest, Xiao Yuan gradually got used to the fishy smell, and entered again. Inside the dungeon, there weren't many prisoners and the cells on both sides were empty. Xiao Yuan followed the imperial bodyguards through a dark tunnel, which led all the way to the deepest part of the dungeon, and then they stood in front of the door of an ordinary cell. One of the imperial bodyguards took the key and opened the door. Immediately afterwards, he quickly laid a layer of clean straw on the ground, fearing that Xiao Yuan's boots would get dirty. It's really good to have reliable people around him. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but look at this imperial bodyguard a few more times. When he advanced forward, a strong bloody smell slapped him right in the face. The flickering candles inside the cell trembled due to the faint breeze brought in by Xiao Yuan's walking. In a corner of the cell, sitting on the dirty ground, there was a man. His white tunic had long been stained with blood and filth, resulting in the original color could no longer be seen. The thick iron chains were almost embedded in the wounds on his wrists and ankles, making it impossible for him to move a single bit. In the dark cell, Xiao Yuan could see that he was injured. There was blood and flesh out in the open and his long black hair was loose, covering his face, and hiding his facial features. Even when the man heard some noise around him, he still didn't move. However, behind an opening in the thick curtain of black hair, a single eye could be seen. Xiao Yuan looked at this eye inside the pupil was a cold feeling, very indifferent, but absolutely determined. There's people who live in the land of wealth and glory, but their eyes can't hide the fact that they're dead inside. Meanwhile, there's some people who, even in prison, the filth can't cover up their eyes that shine like stars, and that are strong and sharp like swords. With a simple glance, Xiao Yuan understood that if he didn't kill him this day, the next day he would be the one being killed. Without uttering a single word, Xiao Yuan suddenly pulled out a sword from the waist of an imperial bodyguard beside him, the sharp blade came out with a clunk sound shocking everyone inside the cell. Because of this sudden action, the man sitting on the ground finally moved his body. However, because of the pain from his injuries, and with his eyebrows turning into a frown, he was only able to make very little movements. He looked extremely miserable. Xiao Yuan then thought to himself, the description of the male lead in the original book were just words after all. Right now, after seeing with his own eyes the tragic situation that the male lead was in, the only thing he wanted to say was. Author. 
You. Are. Big. Evil. Parent. This is your own son. You're way too heartless. Xiao Yuan clenched the hilt of the sword, his heart was inexplicably swelling with a dense, painful emotion. This emotion was called heartache. Saying that you wanted to kill someone was very easy, and Xiao Yuan didn't even need to do it by himself. Right now he's the emperor of the northern kingdom, the person in front of him was as weak as an insect, and he was surrounded by loyal servants he just needed to snap his fingers and then there would be no more Yan He Qing in this world. However, Xiao Yuan in the end couldn't do it. Never mind, I already know how the plot will develop anyways. If I don't follow the path of the young emperor towards his death, then maybe the country won't be destroyed in the end. If he can't kill Yan He Qing, then he will have to observe how things will develop from now on and while the male lead is still a captive of the northern kingdom. Xiao Yuan will make the effort to be extra nice to him, spoil him to the skies, and maybe he'll think of a good strategy. Finally, he will be able to make it to the end with a full body, right? Xiao Yuan, who already died once, right now the only thing he wanted to do was to survive. With a sigh, he silently returned the sword to the imperial bodyguard. However, Xiao Yuan didn't have the intention of leaving with empty hands. In the original book the male lead's face was described as being stunningly beautiful, so blindingly handsome that it could be really hard to find another face like his in a lifetime. Xiao Yuan was curious enough to take a few steps ahead, kneel beside the man, and reach out to lift his disheveled hair. As soon as Xiao Yuan extended his hand, Yan He Qing suddenly turned his head and bit Xiao Yuan's hand fiercely. After getting bitten for no reason whatsoever, Xiao Yuan became speechless out of astonishment. The man in front of him had no strength at all, and although the bit brought a little pain to Xiao Yuan, it wasn't strong enough to draw out blood. Because of the position Xiao Yuan was in, the jailer and the imperial bodyguards behind him could only see Xiao Yuan's back, so they weren't able to see him being bitten. Xiao Yuan waited for a while, and when he found that Yan He Qing hadn't let him go yet, he said in a helpless voice, Has your anger not been relieved yet? Xiao Yuan guessed that Yan He Qing was irritated from the killing intent of the hand that held the sword he borrowed a few minutes ago, so that's why he reacted the way he did. It hurts, you know. Xiao Yuan murmured in a low and gentle voice. Loosen up, the imperial bodyguards will get suspicious if I stay like this after such a long time. Yan He Qing was very confused by Xiao Yuan's good natured attitude towards himself and froze in place, his mouth loosened open. Xiao Yuan rubbed the tooth marks on the back of his hand and hid it on his sleeve. After standing up, he said to the jailer and imperial bodyguards, release him from prison, and then send him to the imperial physician to get his wounds properly treated. After giving his orders, Xiao Yuan turned around and walked out of the cell. And after tossing and turning inside the imperial palace for a while, the day became a starry night when Xiao Yuan finally returned to the imperial bedchamber. When Hong Xiao saw that Xiao Yuan's body had stirred up a bloody smell from his trip to the imperial dungeons, she quickly took him to take a bath. Xiao Yuan used the bath as if it was a hot spring, soaking up with dizziness. After a while, Xiao Yuan vaguely heard that Hong Xiao asked him something, but because he was in a daze, he couldn't understand her at all. Xiao Yuan didn't care about what she said to him, so he just casually hummed and soaked in the water for nearly an hour. When Xiao Yuan finally finished his bath, Hong Xiao was carefully waiting for him to get dressed. Xiao Yuan remembered that in the original book, Hong Xiao was very clever and smart, she knew how to read the young emperor's mood with just a glance and help him fulfill his deepest desires. However, at the same time, she could also be a very ruthless woman. She was responsible for the discipline of the young emperor's male concubines. For these male lovers, Hong Xiao was never a merciless type of person. If she thought that someone didn't serve the young emperor well, it was very likely that she would punish them by lacerating their flesh. Xiao Yuan looked at the tranquil young woman, who was helping him get dressed with a serious and concentrated face, and he couldn't help but feel like it was very difficult to place that description of her from the original book with her physical body. What was the ending of Hong Xiao in the original book? Xiao Yuan bowed his head in contemplation, but before he could remember something about it, Hong Xiao called out to him, Your Majesty, it's time to go to bed. Um, alright. 
Xiao Yuan came back to his senses and put that question behind his head. After walking back to the imperial bedchamber, Hong Xiao didn't follow him in. Instead, she gently closed the door. There wasn't a single candlelight inside the bedchamber, so Xiao Yuan waited for his eyes to get adapted to the darkness around him, and then groped for his bed with the help of the moonlight that fell in through the hollowed-out wooden window casket. Inside the bedchamber it was very calm and quiet, the smoke from the burning incense curled up in the air, extremely silent. However, what Xiao Yuan never expected, was that there was another person inside his bed. Chapter 7 In the tyrannical president rule book, when you're faced with the embrace of a young woman, of course the tyrannical president must hold her tightly, and with an evil smile say, beauty, you asked for this. However, when Xiao Yuan, a former president, felt that someone got into his arms and started to undress him. He. He rolled over, and with a standard defense move, he grabbed the person's arm by the wrist and twisted it over, pressing down the person's head with his other hand, holding them down. Holding them down. Xiao Yuan's first reaction after restraining that person was. My path as a tyrannical president is completely hopeless. That person, who was being held down by him, was also extremely stunned. With a trembling voice laced with hidden fear and tears, they said, Your Majesty, Your Majesty, could you be a little bit more gentle? Ha, huh, this voice was very soft, sweet and cute. But it's a male's voice. Xiao Yuan quickly released him, Sorry sorry sorry, you scared me, that's all. The young man slightly curled up, This slave, this slave didn't mean it, your majesty. Please don't be angry. Xiao Yuan touched his forehead. Suddenly, he remembered two important things. Firstly, this young emperor, he's a fucking cut sleeve one. Secondly, while he was taking a bath earlier, Hong Xiao must have asked him if he needed someone to sleep with at night. When the young man saw that Xiao Yuan had been silent for such a long time, he thought that Xiao Yuan was angry with him. Panicked, he took out a rope from beside the bedside and said, Your Majesty, don't get angry, you can tie up this slave didn't his Majesty say that he wanted to whip this slave with a ruler last time? This servant has the ruler ready, Your Majesty. Xiao Yuan's head started to hurt even more. I already knew that the young emperor was a cut sleeve, however, I didn't know that he was an S2. Not only that, he was also born with the beautiful body of a show, but his heart was the one of a gong three. He really dared to challenge fate like that. So thoughtful. So innovative. Xiao Yuan's strange attitude suddenly made the young man panic, he ripped off his own clothes, and then wrapped his hands and feet around Xiao Yuan's body, hugging him tight. His clothes fell down to his wrists, and his smooth chest and shoulders were all exposed. Then, the young man's voice trembled, Your Majesty, this slave wants you so bad, please, give it to this slave. Xiao Yuan held the young man's trembling hand and smiled slightly, I won't give anything to you, I will definitely not allow it. The young man became speechless out of astonishment, his panicked expression was somewhat broken and pale. Well then? Have you finally calmed down? Xiao Yuan patted the young man's head as gently as an elder brother would, and then reached out his hand to help him fix his clothes. The young man couldn't say anything, he was so scared by Xiao Yuan's unusual behavior, that he froze in place. Hong Xiao, Hong Xiao. Xiao Yuan called twice in a loud voice. Suddenly, a candlelight outside the imperial bedchamber's door flickered, and Hong Xiao pushed the door open. Hong Xiao quickly lit the candles around the bedchamber, illuminating everything around them. After that she knelt down in front of the bed, and with a respectful voice, she asked, Your Majesty, what's wrong? Did this slave not serve you well? Xiao Yuan felt that the young man behind him suddenly shrunk, he was obviously shivering, no, he's very good. I'm the one that lost interest. Take him back and don't forget to give him a reward. Hong Xiao nodded and waited for Xiao Yuan to lie down again. Then she blew out all the candlelights, and led the young man away. Surrounded by silence, Xiao Yuan closed his eyes, but then opened them again. He subconsciously reached out to take his phone beside the pillow, but after halfway stretching out his hand, he silently withdrew it. Xiao Yuan had a problem. 
when he sleeps, he must be surrounded by the sound of other people's breathing. In modern times, Xiao Yuan could use his phone to record and then play it when he needed it. However, the current situation made Xiao Yuan feel really helpless. After unsuccessfully trying to fall asleep, Xiao Yuan sighed heavily. He sat up, rubbed his temples for a while, and then decided to go out for a walk. The entrance to the emperor's bedchamber was heavily guarded, so after Xiao Yuan pondered for a while, he finally decided to go out from the window. The two imperial bodyguards on the night watch were stunned when they saw that a man jumped out of the emperor's bedchamber, rolled around on the grass, and then stabilized himself. The two imperial bodyguards drew out their swords and then pointed them at the strange man's neck. Xiao Yuan raised his head and looked straight at the two imperial bodyguards. The swords in the imperial bodyguard's hands clattered to the ground. Xiao Yuan stood up and calmly removed the weeds from his head, then he patted the imperial bodyguards on their shoulders, Comrades, you've worked hard. It turns out that the windows are also heavily guarded. The imperial bodyguards felt their knees going soft, and quickly knelt on the ground. Xiao Yuan helped one of them to get up and then asked, which road is less guarded? The imperial bodyguard, while shivering all over, pointed his finger towards a stone path in the south. Xiao Yuan nodded with satisfaction, and with his hands behind his back, he was about to walk towards the stone path. The imperial bodyguards quickly shouted out to him, Your Majesty, the night is too dark, if you go alone. I'm happy to be alone, like the fluttering colorful wings of a phoenix four. But. I pity the cold food of Qingming five. Can you talk less? Just let the Dragon City commander fly away six. If you say another word, he'll beat you up. After seeing that the Imperial bodyguards were really afraid to say another word, Xiao Yuan couldn't help but sigh with lament, the 300 Tang poems, really are the crystallization of wisdom. With those last words, Xiao Yuan hummed a small tune and left, leaving behind the two Imperial bodyguards, who were at a loss for words, what are the 300 Tang poems? The Imperial bodyguard didn't deceive Xiao Yuan, the south side of the Imperial Palace was uninhabited. The moonlight was barely lost behind the clouds, and from time to time, it will spread a soft light, gently brushing on Xiao Yuan's body. It was the beginning of winter in the Northern Kingdom, and the wind was particularly cold so Xiao Yuan, who was dressed in thin clothing, felt that he couldn't bear it any longer. In the end, he decided to go back to his bedchamber. Just as he turned around to walk back from the same path, the dazzling sound of a guqin was suddenly heard. Chapter, 8 That person wasn't sleeping at night, instead, they ran out to play the guqin. Either they have the same illness as himself, or they're the male lead, or female lead. Anyways, it didn't matter who they are, they're very likely to be an enigmatic character. The sound of the guqin was endless, and as Xiao Yuan looked up at the star-filled sky, he followed the sound of the guqin while deep in thought. The male lead, Yan Heqing, doesn't know how to play the guqin. So this must be the female lead, Princess Yongning. Could it be that Yan Heqing, who's injured and might be unable to fall asleep due to the pain, felt too lonely so he came out for a walk, and accidentally met Princess Yongning while she was playing the guqin at night? And when their eyes meet each other, they decide to spend the rest of their lives together? No, in the original book, the way these two meet doesn't happen like this. Xiao Yuan was extremely curious, but when he saw that the pavilion was close by, he accidentally stepped on a wooden branch, making a slight noise. The sound of the guqin suddenly stopped, and Xiao Yuan, with an oops inside his mind, took a few steps over. Just then a man hurriedly came over, inevitably colluding with Xiao Yuan. The man first shouted out a hu, and after seeing Xiao Yuan's face, he suddenly knelt down, Your Majesty. Why are you here? Xiao Yuan took a closer look at him, and then he immersed himself deep in thought once again. This person was neither Yan Heqing nor Princess Yongning. However, Xiao Yuan recognized him. He was the reliable imperial bodyguard who has been guarding Xiao Yuan earlier today, and he was also the one that spread clean straw for him in the cell. Were you the one playing the guqin? Xiao Yuan asked. It wasn't me. The imperial bodyguard panicked. I also heard the sound of the guqin and came looking for the source, but I couldn't see any suspicious figure. 
The imperial bodyguard's voice trembled, his hands were clenched into fists, and his eyes were looking around. Xiao Yuan knew that the imperial bodyguard was lying, however, he was too lazy to delve deeper into it. Compared to the mysterious sound of a guqin, Xiao Yuan was more curious about what character the imperial bodyguard was, what's your name? Judging by the name, he will know if he's good or bad. After all, Xiao Yuan already knows the plot. My name? Your Majesty, didn't you know the imperial bodyguard looked confused and suspicious, but he stopped his words in time. He cleared his throat, and said, answering to his majesty, this servant's surname is Yang, name Liuan. Xiao Yuan whispered, Yang Liuan. It was like a round pearl rolled down Xiao Yuan's throat, until finally, it reached his heart and pressed down hard on it. This sudden reaction made Xiao Yuan shiver. Xiao Yuan could only remember a few of the canon fodder characters from the original book, however, Yang Liuan was a special one. Because in the original book the young emperor was an homosexual, it wasn't rare that there were some girls with all kind of dirty fantasies one about him therefore, all sorts of ships were flying around the BL zone. Xiao Yuan never navigated the BL section, filled with these kinds of fans. However, later on, a fire related to Yang Liuan burned at the bottom of the comments section. Because Yang Liuan died. The imperial bodyguard was an upright and resolute man. He was one of the young emperor's few followers that couldn't be regarded as a villain by the readers. However, when the young emperor's tyranny aroused the common people's anger, he suffered from an assassination attempt one day he went out of the imperial palace to play. Yang Liuan tried to protect his ruler, but in the end, he miserably died under the sharp blade his body was cut into pieces. Although Xiao Yuan didn't know whether the original plot would change because of himself or not, there was no doubt that Yang Liuan's loyalty to the young emperor was beyond doubt. Xiao Yuan looked at Yang Liuan with a complicated mood, as he reached out to help him get up, don't kneel. Yang Liuan thanked his monarch for his kindness, and as he stood up, he said, Your Majesty, where were you going? Wei Chen will accompany you. I wasn't going anywhere, it's too cold already, let's go back. Xiao Yuan said. Yang Liuan was about to take off his coat without a second thought. Xiao Yuan quickly stopped him, it's just a short walk, he'll get warm after walking for a while. Yang Liuan was very hesitant, but he didn't insist. After a while, they arrived at the back of the imperial bedchamber. Xiao Yuan suddenly remembered something, he facepalmed and then said to Yang Liuan, by the way, tomorrow, could you take me to where the prince of the southern Yan kingdom is being treated? Ill obey his majesty's command. Yang Liuan cupped his fists too. Xiao Yuan nodded his head and then walked towards the window of the bedchamber. The two imperial bodyguards from before were still frozen in place, guarding. When they saw that Xiao Yuan came back, they were relieved. Comrades, you worked hard. Go get some rest. Xiao Yuan waved his sleeve and climbed into the window in front of the shocked imperial bodyguards. Chapter, 9 The next morning, Hong Xiu came to help Xiao Yuan wash and change clothes only to find him sitting on the bed, stiff as wood, with tired eyes and heavy black circles under them. Your Majesty! Hong Xiu was so scared by the shock that she almost dropped the pot of water in her hands. Xiao Yuan suddenly came back to reality, huh? What happened, your majesty? You couldn't sleep well. Hong Xiu asked, very worried. It wasn't just that Xiao Yuan hadn't slept well, he hadn't slept at all. There was no way Xiao Yuan could fall asleep without the sound of breathing beside him. Staying up all night was harmful to his body. Xiao Yuan rubbed his temples and got up to let Hong Xiu help him change his clothes. Xiao Yuan was a person that was good at adjusting his mood. Staying up all night made his heart feel flustered, so he decided to find something to distract himself from anxiety. For example, going to look at the male lead, and then the female lead, to feel what it's like to bathe in the protagonist's halo. Yen He Ching, the male lead, was getting his wounds treated by the imperial physician. After eating his breakfast, Xiao Yuan happily rushed towards the imperial physician. It was just after dawn, so it was still very early in the morning, and in winter, the wind at this hour was extremely cold. Inside the imperial physician hall, 
a very pleasant medicinal smell was in the air and in the middle of the hall under a row of cabinets filled with all kinds of medicine, was an old physician wrapped in a thick robe, he was nodding and dozing. After hearing some noise, the old imperial physician raised his head. When he saw it was Xiao Yuan, he knelt down showing respect and shouted Your Majesty. As soon as the old physician knelt down, his old arms and legs began to creak, scaring Xiao Yuan so much that he quickly helped him up, where's the man that was sent from the prison yesterday? Answering to his majesty, he's resting in the inner room. He just took an anesthetic so he must be sleeping right now. The old physician replied. Take me to him. The old physician glanced at the group of imperial bodyguards and maidservants following Xiao Yuan, and his face became embarrassed. Your Majesty, am afraid that the inner room is too small for so many people to go in. Xiao Yuan picked out Hong Xiu and Yang Liuan, they'll take these two with me. The old physician didn't dare to neglect anymore, and hurriedly led the three of them towards the inner room. As expected, the inner room was really small, a single bed occupied almost the entire room. On the bed, there was a man sleeping on it, and Xiao Yuan, who was really hard to suppress his inner excitement, slowly walked over. That man was the male lead himself, Yan He Ching, the one that can take ten girls in one single night. He either already got a new girl, or he was on his way to get her. He's the kind of man that always gets all the girls he wants, while also conquering the world. The male. Lead. However, when he looked at his face, Xiao Yuan froze in place. The man in front of him was no longer the mess he was when he was in prison. His clothes were also changed into a clean set of clothes, his hands were wrapped with white cloth to stop the bleeding, and his whole body looked fresh and clean. But somehow, his face was covered with black charcoal, so it was completely impossible for him to see his original appearance. Seeing the puzzled expression on Xiao Yuan's face, the old physician hurriedly explained to him, this thing on his face, it was something that this man said that he would rather die than wipe clean. Xiao Yuan thought of something from the original book, and suddenly realized what this was about. In the original book, the young emperor, just like Xiao Yuan did, released Yan Heqing from prison. Because Yan Heqing could guess the real intentions of the young emperor, he insisted on covering his face with black charcoal. One day, when the young emperor remembered about Yan Heqing, he got curious and went to see him. However, what he saw was a ghost-like face and became disgusted with him. In the end, he stopped asking for Yan Heqing from that point on. Therefore, Yan Heqing escaped from the possibility of being forced into becoming a male concubine. Hong Xiu, as clever as she was, after seeing the depressed expression on Xiao Yuan's face, asked, Your Majesty, should I go get a basin of water and wash his face? No need, it's fine like this. Xiao Yuan waved his hand. Anyway, I'm not in a hurry to see his face. I can always see what Yan Heqing's face looks like on another occasion. Although the man sleeping on the bed was slightly frowning, his breathing was long, steady and calm. Xiao Yuan was very clear in the fact that perhaps, a year and a half later, this man who was peacefully sleeping in front of him, would certainly torture him to death. He couldn't help but feel overwhelmed with complicated emotions, and after having that thought, a sudden dissatisfaction arose inside his heart. Why is he able to sleep so soundly? When I couldn't sleep for the whole night. Xiao Yuan didn't care about this unequal treatment one. He didn't care about it at all, and yet, he still sighs regretfully, thinking that if there's no breathing sounds around him. Wait a minute, breathing sounds. Xiao Yuan took a look at the sleeping Yan Heqing, compared the size of the bed, and after nodding his face with satisfaction, he pushed Yan Heqing to the side of the bed, and then he laid down. He laid down. The other three people present froze in place for a few seconds. The old physician was so frightened, that he knelt down to Xiao Yuan, Your Majesty. Don't be so surprised, have you never seen anyone who's so sleepy that they drop to the floor to sleep? Xiao Yuan was kind enough to appease the old physician. The old physician's heart was roaring and shouting, I've never seen it. I've really never seen it. Your Majesty, this this this. Yang Liuan was also at a loss for words. Fortunately, the reasonable Hong Xiu was still present. 
She helped the old physician to get up and said to Yang Liuan, bodyguard Yang, his majesty couldn't sleep well last night. Right now, he's feeling very sleepy so he wants to take a nap. You go out first and guard the inner room's door. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but lament inside his mind, this maidservant is really worthy of being the young emperor's favorite. She understands him so well. Yang Liuan looked at Xiao Yuan, saw him nodding his head, and then went out of the inner room to guard the door. Hong Xiao and the old physician remained behind, and while undressing and fixing the bedding for Xiao Yuan, she advised him, Your Majesty, this bed is small and cramped. If you really want this person, then why don't you let someone bring him back to the imperial bedchamber? Xiao Yuan. Girl. I was wrong about you after all, and I definitely took back what I said about you understanding everything about me. I'm just trying to sleep, please don't bring up the issue about a male concubine. He's the male lead. I'm afraid that I won't have enough flesh left behind after being cut into a human stick. Xiao Yuan was really tired, and he was tired because he was sleepy, so he simply didn't bother explaining to her. He laid down on the bed and closed his eyes. Finally falling asleep. Hong Xiu probably didn't expect for Xiao Yuan to actually fall asleep. After feeling a little bit dumbfounded, she quickly wrapped the quilt around the both of them, and quietly left the room. Chapter, 10 When Xiao Yuan finally woke up, he realized that it was already afternoon. He sat up and lazily stretched himself, rubbing his neck and looking to the side. Yan Heqing's posture changed from lying on his back to lying on his side, with his hand under the pillow. Although his face was covered with black charcoal, Xiao Yuan could still faintly see the beauty of his facial features. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but lament, the male lead looks so harmless when he sleeps. If it weren't because Xiao Yuan already knew the plot of the original book, he wouldn't believe that this person in front of him would later on conquer the northern kingdom in one fell swoop, washing the imperial palace with royal blood. Like if he was in a nightmare, Yan Heqing's hands suddenly clenched into fists, his brows deeply frowned, and his lips began to tremble. Xiao Yuan quickly reached out and patted him, Hey, is everything okay? Where's your protagonist's halo? Where's your strength? This was serious. Xiao Yuan discovered that Yan Heqing was having a fever, his extremities were boiling hot. Water Yan Heqing murmured deliriously in a low voice. Xiao Yuan got up in a hurry. After searching through the inner room, he found a porcelain pot and a small bowl. Xiao Yuan filled the small porcelain bowl with water and then carried it to the bedside. He reached out for Yan Heqing and asked him to lean on himself to feed him the water. After hearing some noise, there was a soft knock coming from the door, it was the old physician, Your Majesty, it's time to change the patient's bandages and apply new medicine. Xiao Yuan said, Come in. The door of the inner room was gently pushed open, and when the old physician saw the scene in front of him, he was so frightened that the medicine in his hands clattered to the ground. Hong Xiu followed close behind and at a first glance, she became extremely anxious, taking a few steps over, Your Majesty, how can you do this kind of labor, let this maidservant do it instead? Everything's fine, I've already done it. Xiao Yuan put down the porcelain bowl and helped Yan Heqing to lie back on bed, then he turned around and asked the old physician, he has a fever, what should be done? The old physician was shaking as he knelt to the ground to pick up the fallen medicine. When he heard Xiao Yuan's questions, he quickly stood up, answering his majesty, he'll be okay, the fever will soon subside. After that, the patient's condition will naturally get better. That's really good. Xiao Yuan nodded his head. Then he'll trouble you to take good care of him. The old physician was terribly trembling with fear, as he nodded his head like a pestle. Having slept for such a long time while also being beside the male lead made Xiao Yuan be in a very good mood, so he happily prepared to get back to the imperial bedchamber. Hong Xiu, who was extremely careful, asked Xiao Yuan in a low voice, Your Majesty, when this man recovers, should this maidservant arrange him to go to Jingyang Palace? The Jingyang Palace was where the young emperor's male concubines lived, and Hong Xiu was in charge of it. Xiao Yuan helplessly touched his forehead, no, 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 no. Girl, please quickly erase those dangerous ideas. Hong Xiu froze in place, then, 
where does his majesty want him to go? Xiao Yuan pounded his fingertips on his head with annoyance, wondering to himself as to where the male lead lived before meeting the female lead, send him to two. Oh, right, let him go to the House of Internal Affairs. House of Internal Affair. Hong Xiao, who had always known how to control her emotions, couldn't help but blurt out her thoughts. After all, no matter how you looked at it, the emperor clearly cared a lot about this man very much. However, instead of taking him as a male concubine, the emperor decided to make him do chores like a normal slave this was too strange. Emenhem, yes, the house of internal affairs. Eunuch Xiao is the one in charge of it, right? Xiao Yuan asked. Answering to his majesty, yes, he is. Hong Xiu recovered her composure and replied. Perfect, send him to the House of Internal Affairs. Xiao Yuan finished giving orders and then turned to look at Yan Heqing, who was still quietly sleeping. Yang Heqing, Eunuch Xiao is a great villain, and you may have to suffer for a little bit from now on but all of this is for the sake of you meeting with Princess Yongning after all, so you will have to bear with it. Chapter, 11 Xiao Yuan didn't expect that there would be a day, after transmigrating here, in which he wouldn't feel bored without TV, struggle without Wi-Fi, or feel anxious without air conditioning. Instead, he was worried about not being able to sleep. Not. Falling. Asleep. After Xiao Yuan laid on the bed for a long time, unable to fall asleep, he simply turned over and climbed up to harass Yang Liuan, who was on the night shift, standing guard outside the palace hall. Imperial bodyguard Yang was scared to death, but despite that, he still accompanied Xiao Yuan to talk about life. Xiao Yuan, if the sea is full of water, and the horse has four legs, heaven, why won't you let me sleep? Yang Liuan's mouth was twitching, and his mind was confused, but as the emperor's bodyguard, this was his duty. However, listening attentively to Xiao Yuan's ramblings could be quite overwhelming for the imperial bodyguard. By the way, Liuan, do you have a wife and kids? After Xiao Yuan recited incomprehensible words for a while, he asked all of a sudden. Answering to his majesty, no, I don't. How about your parents? Yang Liuan hesitated for a while, but in the end, he answered honestly, Wei Chen Wan was born from a maidservant, and I don't know who my father is. Wei Chen grew up in the palace and received the favor of the late emperor, for which I was given the position of imperial bodyguard. Now Wei Chen serves his majesty, and am willing to wholeheartedly devote myself for his majesty until I die. Inexplicably remembering the fact that Yang Liuan's body was pierced to death in the original book, Xiao Yuan frowned, feeling uneasy, and changed the topic. After chatting blindly for a while, Xiao Yuan remembered that the young emperor had the attribute of being a cut sleeve. Xiao Yuan was then afraid that if he kept talking privately with Yang Liuan like this, Yang Liuan's innocence couldn't be protected from gossip. In the end, Xiao Yuan went back to bed, stayed up late and laid stiff as a corpse. After staying like that for a while, he saw the candlelight flickering outside the palace hall. It was Hong Xiu, Your Majesty, are you asleep? Hmm. I'm not sleeping, what's wrong? Xiao Yuan wondered. Hong Xiu held a lantern in one hand and a porcelain bowl in the other, this maidservant heard from Imperial Bodyguard Yang that His Majesty couldn't sleep at night, so I boiled a calming soup to calm His Majesty's mind. Xiao Yuan felt warm in his heart, in this story, where all the considerate girls will be collected by the male lead, you're definitely a stream of fresh air Hong Xiu. Besides, Hong Xiu already knows the young emperor only likes men, so her behavior couldn't be mistaken with the intention of searching for some kind of intimacy. Hong Xiu understands his temperament the best, so. All of a sudden, Xiao Yuan came up with an idea and asked Hong Xiu, It's okay, I won't drink the soup. But, Hong Xiu, could you stay with me at the bedside? Just wait for me to fall asleep. Hong Xiu was stunned, does his majesty feel that the long night is boring? Your majesty, should this maidservant call a male concubine to accompany you? Stop calling those little devils to come here. I really can't walk the road of the tyrannical president. As soon as they arrive, they'll stick to my body as if I was a delicious meal. I can't shake them off. Xiao Yuan had no choice, but to say, no need. 
I recently have decided to advocate by the principle of heaven and destroy all human desire too. De destroy all human desire. Hong Xiu was so shocked that she almost bit her tongue off. Your Majesty, why do you want to become modest all of a sudden? As soon as she said those words, Hong Xiu felt that what she said was inappropriate. In fright, she fell to her knees, this humble maidservant was imprudent. I beg His Majesty to punish this lowly slave. Xiao Yuan, who felt like he wouldn't be able to sleep from now on, wanted to cry without tears, it's all right, just get up and don't kneel anymore. Hong Xiu sighed in relief. Since the verbal communication had failed, Xiao Yuan was about to give up. But all of a sudden, Hong Xiu stopped talking nonsense, took the initiative to blow out the candlelight, and then stood beside the imperial couch. Xiao Yuan was moved to tears. As he turned over, he went to meet the good of dreams three in peace. Now that his top priority sleeping at night was resolved, Xiao Yuan thought that he could finally relax for a couple of days. But the main plot of the original book had to slap him hard on the face. The general of Beiping came to complain. Xiao Yuan chewed the sweet-scented Asmanthus cake and blankly asked Yang Liuan, who came to report the news, who? Your Majesty. It's General Sun. Yang Liuan felt like crying. Xiao Yuan choked on a mouthful of the Osmanthus cake and coughed for a long time. Yang Liuan quickly brought some water for him, Your Majesty, are you alright? Don't worry, eat slowly. Eat slowly my ass. Xiao Yuan drank the water in a hurry. When he was done, he gave Yang Liuan the porcelain cup back, as well as the plate of Osmanthus cakes, you can have all of them. Where's General Sun? Yang Liuan, seeing his arms inexplicably filled with stuff, replied, The general is waiting for his majesty in the main hall. Xiao Yuan didn't dare to neglect the general, so he got up and rushed towards the main hall, with an uneasy expression on his face. Unexpectedly, this is the original plot. Old General Sun was a very important character. He was over sixty years old, and by following three generations of northern monarchs, he conquered the world, obtaining outstanding war achievements. Due to this, he was respected by thousands of people. After following the late emperor's crusade against the southern Yan kingdom, he was appointed as the great general four of Beiping, holding half of the military power of the northern kingdom. Listen, it's the great general of Beiping. So cool. So powerful. Besides this, the monarch and his ministers were always in-laws. This old general was also the maternal grandfather of the female lead, Princess Yongning. However, in the original book, this old general was almost beheaded by the young emperor. He was almost killed by that fool. Killed. Since ancient times, the most loyal way for a minister to die was probably by remonstrating, or fighting a war. This old general, who had been fighting for more than forty years on the battlefield, wasn't able to die for his country in war, but he nearly died by quarreling with the emperor. The plot of the original book went like this, the old general came over and scolded the young emperor, why are you so foolish? The treasury has been wasted by you, yet you still have the time to sing and dance every day. To eat, drink and have fun. You're going to destroy the country. How did you become so incompetent, young brat? They'll have to take care of you in regards to your father, the late emperor. Even though the old general scolded him like this, the young emperor had to put up with it because of his status. However, this old general had a bad temper, and he ended up scolding the young emperor for, at least, half an hour. The young emperor was so angry at this, that he sent the general to prison. The highly respected old general's son was put on death row. At that moment, the imperial court was in chaos, and there was turbulence for a while. In the end, the young emperor wasn't that stupid, and when he calmed down, he realized he was wrong. After letting the old general go, he put the matter behind, but kept throwing the same banquets every day, living his promiscuous and absurd life like usual. The old general was really angry as he said, Ah, fuck it. Do whatever you want, I don't care anymore. Then, he walked away, resigned from his post, and went back to his hometown in the countryside to farm and feed fish. Just like that, 
the Northern Kingdom lost an old general who not only possessed the ability to stabilize the army, but also had extremely high skills in military arts. When Xiao Yuan read this part for the first time, he couldn't help but feel, after this, it wouldn't make any sense if this country wasn't fucking destroyed. Chapter 12 When Xiao Yuan arrived at the main hall, the old general was there dressed in armor and a blood-stained robe. At first glance, he seemed to come with a decisive decision. Seeing Xiao Yuan, the old general with silver hair knelt down, lifted his cape and held his fist in one knee. Your Majesty! He shouted. How could Xiao Yuan withstand such worship? He knelt in front of the old general with a plop, right. General, you're right. I'll listen to you. Old general, your majesty, I haven't said anything. Ha! Huh. Haven't said anything yet. I cried out with tears just now, I thought I was starting to persuade him after the complaint began. Xiao Yuan knelt down and reached out to help the old general, speak, speak. The old general didn't get up and bowed again, your majesty. The late emperor fought for several years in exchange for this land's peace, you should beg for your ancestor's mercy. Xiao Yuan hurriedly said, yes. You're right. I'm going to beg for their forgiveness. The old general bowed again, now the treasury is nearing empty, but you're still holding banquets feasts every day, indulge in eating, drinking, and playing. You don't even ask about the state's affairs. This is a clear sign of the destruction of the country. Xiao Yuan once again paid his respects, yes. You're right. Old general, you're absolutely right. It'll change. It'll change everything. Old general. What happened? Why is his majesty so obedient? Am I too old to be this confused? Xiao Yuan picked up the old general with a silly face and sat down with him, General Sun, don't kneel, sit here, ill stand and listen to your scolding. Old general. Despite being caught off guard by Xiao Yuan's attitude, the old general calmed down and started to scold him. Even if he really scolded him for half an hour, Xiao Yuan responded with just three sentences, you're right. What you said makes sense. I'll listen to you. Although these three sentences seemed extremely perfunctory, Xiao Yuan's attitude was very meticulous. Not only did he accept the advice of the old general of withdrawing all the banquets, but also started to deal with the government affairs every day. The old general was moved to tears, the late emperor appeared. Xiao Yuan, pull it down. Don't show me that spirit. Wasn't the adultery that the young monarch inherited from the late emperor. With Xiao Yuan acting like this, the old general naturally didn't want to leave after a period of turmoil, Xiao Yuan would no longer waste his time anymore, and the national treasure will gradually turn from loss to full. But not everyone was happy. With Xiao Yuan being in power all day long, there were some people with a gloomy aura inside the palace. That was in the Jingyang Palace, where the young monarch's male lovers lived. Although the young monarch couldn't help but to like men, he never had a concubine even if his male lovers were his concubines, they were inferior in status and couldn't be compared with female concubines. If the young monarch ignored them and didn't give them rewards and love, their status would be the same as the lowest slave. In Jing Yang Palace, people mourned inside everywhere, but there was also the common people. Although it was the beginning of winter, the northern kingdom froze for thousands and thousands of miles, and the snow could be seen everywhere. The cold inevitably spread it through every corner of the imperial palace. Xiao Fengyue got up early, he wrapped himself with a thick coat and outer robe, then he swept the snow outside the door of his room. Although Xiao Fengyue was born in the southern Yan kingdom, since childhood he had never witnessed such a snowy scene. However, the fascination had already disappeared, replaced by the fear of cold. Xiao Fengyue was originally a Qin player one in the southern Yan kingdom. After the fall of the state, he was captured by the Northern Kingdom, and because of his good temperament and handsome appearance, he was selected by Hong Xiao and appointed in the Jingyang Palace. Fortunately, the young monarch likes the soft and flirtatious ones, so he never showed interest in him. Xiao Fengyue's life in Jingyang Palace could be described as monotonous. Xiao Fengyue swept away the snow in front of the door, and while entering his room with red hands, he felt someone suddenly covered his eyes behind him. 
Xiao Fengyue smiled and reached out to touch the hand that was covering his eyes, Liuan. Ah, you recognized me again. Young Liuan withdrew his hand and scratched his head embarrassedly. Come in, don't let anyone see you. Xiao Fengyue quickly pulled Yang Liuan inside the room, closing the door behind him. Your hands are so cold. Yang Liuan held Xiao Fengyue's cold red hands and rubbed them until they got warm. It doesn't matter. Xiao Fengyue looked down, but in his tone he couldn't hide his smile. Anyway, His Majesty gave me some osmanthus cake a while ago. I bought them for you to have a taste. Yang Liuan drew out an oil paper bag from his arms, carefully opened it and picking up a small piece, he fed it to Xiao Fengyue's mouth, is it delicious? Xiao Fengyue nodded and smiled gently, it's delicious, by the way, I played the guqin in the pavilion for you before, but I was heard. Oh, it was His Majesty. Seeing Xiao Fengyue's face turning white, Yang Liuan quickly waved his hand. Don't panic, His Majesty hasn't inquired about it. Xiao Fengyue whispered with fear, that's good. But, how can you come here while you're on duty? I can accompany you all day, because His Majesty doesn't want the Imperial Guards and maidservants following him today. Yang Liuan replied. Xiao Fengyue was puzzled, huh? Why's that? His Majesty said it to me, but I couldn't understand it. Yang Liuan sighed. The Emperor has become more and more amiable recently, but his words became stranger day by day. Why? What did His Majesty say? He said he was going to peek at the meeting between the male lead and the goddess. Chapter, 13 Xiao Yuan was hiding behind the bushes in the imperial garden. In winter, the wind was icy cold and the bushes were covered in thick snow. Although it was very cold outside, Xiao Yuan was actually quite excited. Because half a month after the old general's remonstration, Yan Heqing and Princess Yongning, in the original book, meet each other for the first time at the Jin Feng Yulu Pavilion, now in front of Xiao Yuan. Fiction becomes reality, and Xiao Yuan was looking forward to it rubbing his hands in anticipation. But it was now the evening, and the male lead Yan Heqing hadn't appeared yet. The snow was constantly falling from the sky, and Xiao Yuan was so cold that he wasn't able to speak, but he was reluctant to leave he could only wrap his clothes tightly and keep breathing. After a while, he heard the sound of footsteps. Xiao Yuan lowered his body, and quietly looked to where the sound came from. Yan Heqing was still covered with black charcoal, which made Xiao Yuan disappointed. After the disappointment, Xiao Yuan's heart was filled with surprise. Obviously, it was the eighth day of the twelfth lunar month, the days when water still dripped from ice, but Yan Heqing was wearing thin linen clothes, and he didn't even have a windbreak robe. Yan Heqing's hands were also frozen and cracked because of the cold, some blood had solidified and dried up. With complicated eyes, he took the broom to sweep the snow. Xiao Yuan estimated that this job was assigned to him by eunuch Xiao. Yan Heqing went to the Jin Feng Yulu Pavilion, but didn't immediately start to sweep the snow. Instead, he showed pain in his face, and covering his abdomen with one hand, he pressed it hard. Then he grabbed the snow from the floor and stuffed it right into his mouth. Oh my god, this is horrible. Xiao Yuan's heart was filled with sadness, how could an stallion protagonist be disgraced to this degree? He so starved to point of eating snow. Forget it, he will soon meet Princess Yongming, and someone will be punished because of this. Xiao Yuan sighed and continued to observe quietly. However, although Yan Heqing was embarrassed to look like this, when he picked up the broom, his posture was very tall and straight, his temperament was extraordinary, and he had an imposing aura. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but shout in his heart, Look! The male lead makes a broom look like a sword. If you really dare to bully Yan Heqing, you clearly can't see his emperor's spirit and protagonist halo. While bullying him, did you not feel the cold running through your spine, did your neck not hurt? However, these people obviously didn't, because just after Xiao Yuan finished shouting in his heart, a slave came from nowhere and kicked Yan Heqing's knee. Xiao Yuan A cannon fodder villain. Do you know what you're doing? You're kicking the male lead. This is the peak of your life. You must remember it well. Yan Heqing was caught off guard, 
he stumbled but he steadied himself in time, he didn't kneel down. Unexpectedly, the slave mended his foot and scolded him viciously, Oh, you have the courage. Won't you even kneel? Yen Heqing's knees fell to the snow, but his back was straight. You see, look. The servant pointed at the snow around them with a strange voice. Didn't Eunuch Zhao ask you to sweep the snow before you sure one hour? Yen Heqing was neither humble nor overactive, Xu Shu too. The servant slapped Yen Heqing and scolded him, you don't work hard, and yet you're quick to talk back. Hiding behind the bushes, Xiao Yuan felt that he was a great man and couldn't stand it anymore, he began to feel sorry for Yen Heqing. After all, the original work was just a textual description, but now it was real in his eyes, his feelings were totally different. The slave scolded him for a while, and then said a sentence to punish him by having him kneel there for the whole night. If he dared to run, tomorrow he will break his leg. Then, the slave snorted and turned away. This cannon fodder villain style was too classic, which made Xiao Yuan can't help but applaud with conviction. But let the male lead kneel for an entire night. Cannon fodder, aren't you afraid of becoming a joke, in half an hour, Princess Yongming will come to grace us with her presence. 2. Save. The. Protagonist. Xiao Yuan secretly comforted Yan Heqing in his heart. Yan Heqing, it doesn't matter how impatient you are, your true goddess, your white rose, your moonlight will soon come to save you. Then half an hour later. Princess Yongming, wasn't here. In another half an hour. Princess Yongming still hasn't come. Half an hour later. Princess Yongming still didn't come. As the night got darker, the wind and snow mixed. Yan Heqing knelt in front of the Jinfeng Yulu Pavilion, his hands were tightly clenched into fists, his lips turned white and his whole body was trembling. After waiting for another half an hour, Xiao Yuan began to roar inside his heart, Princess Yongming. Are you waiting for your hair to turn white? Where are you? What are you doing? If you don't come, your husband will freeze to death. Don't you know? The temperature suddenly dropped, Xiao Yuan felt that he couldn't bear the cold anymore even if he was wrapped in a fur coat, not to mention Yan Heqing who was starving and was dressed in thin clothes. If he went on like this, he would definitely freeze to death. But Princess Yongming didn't even appear. There must be something wrong. Xiao Yuan started to think fast, it was after half a month from the remonstration, General Sun's appearance was not wrong, nor was Jin Feng Yulu Pavilion. Even the story of Yan Heqing's being bullied was not different from the original. But why did the key figure, Princess Yongming, not show up? In the original book, Princess Yongming sent General Sun back to his hometown. When she passed by the palace, she ran into Yan Heqing being punished. She couldn't bear such a thing. Wait. What the fuck? Wait. In the original book, Princess Yongming was sent to beg for the old general's life, so she passed by this place. But now, because of Xiao Yuan's modest attitude, the old general didn't plan to go back to the countryside to farm. Therefore, Princess Yongming naturally didn't need to send back her grandfather. How could she pass by this place? How could she come to save Yan Heqing? What the fuck? Xiao Yuan was trying to understand what happened, while taking off his robe, he ran towards Yan Heqing. Chapter, 14 Xiao Yuan rushed to Yan Heqing and wrapped his body tightly with his robe, Are you alright? Are you okay? Yan Heqing struggled with his last strength, looked up at Xiao Yuan, and then fell face down to the ground. Xiao Yuan threw him into his back and nearly fell to the snow. He stabilized his body and hugged Yan Heqing, who was already frozen, don't sleep. Brother, wake up and hold on for a while. Your harem of beauties are waiting for you. As Yan Heqing wouldn't wake up even after being called a few times, Xiao Yuan was also feeling a little anxious. In a panic strike he took off his coat, wrapped Yan Heqing tightly, and ran towards Tai Yuan Palace. The old imperial physician that stayed on the night watch in the Taiyi Palace, who in over half a year had never encountered a major event, was almost scared to death by Xiao Yuan. He whispered, Your Majesty. What are you doing? Why are you alone? Why are you wearing so little on such a cold day? 
Who's the one you're carrying? How can you carry someone with your own body? The imperial physician had too many questions, he didn't know where to start in asking them. Xiao Yuan yelled in his heart, the fuck you're asking too. You should just save people. In inner room. The imperial physician was so frightened that he could barely speak. Xiao Yuan carried Yan Heqing inside the inner room. He picked up his clothes which had become wet by the snow, and put him inside the quilt of the bed, then, he rubbed his hands to get them warmer and covered Yan Heqing's chest. The imperial physician quickly boiled a bucket of water before putting Yan Heqing inside. When they saw that Yan Heqing's breathing and body temperature was gradually returning to normal, Xiao Yuan could finally breathe relieved. The imperial physician asked anxiously, Your Majesty, how are you feeling? Xiao Yuan felt a cold sweat and panted slightly, Me? What's the matter? The imperial physician, But Your Majesty, your face is flushed and you're breathless. How about you let me exam? Xiao Yuan didn't hear what the imperial physician was saying to him before he suddenly fainted. When he woke up again, he was in the imperial bedchamber. There were a lot of people kneeling down, including the imperial physician, the maid servants and slaves. When they saw that Xiao Yuan was awake, they all shouted, His Majesty is awake. He woke up. Xiao Yuan's head was buzzing, there was too much noise, so he simply covered himself with the quilt. Noticing this, Hong Xiu started to dismiss the crowd. Wait, is the imperial physician still here? Xiao Yuan took a slack and asked while lifting the quilt in a single move. Yes, yes I am. The imperial physician was a yes man. How is Yan He Ching? Xiao Yuan asked. Answering to his majesty, he's no longer in danger. The imperial physician replied. He's worthy of being the male lead. He wrapped himself with three layers of clothes inside and three layers outside, but still he managed to get a fever. Yan Heqing froze for such a long time, but nothing happened to him. Xiao Yuan said, take good care of him. After the imperial physician finished his duty, he withdrew from the imperial bedchamber. Hong Xiu covered her mouth and chuckled, I have never seen his majesty caring so much about someone. If I don't care about him, he will eviscerate me alive. Unexpectedly, what I did changed the original plot entirely. What should I do next? Xiao Yuan laughed bitterly and propped up from the bed with one hand, trying to sit up. Hong Xiu quickly stepped forward and gently supported Xiao Yuan, does his majesty want to drink some water? Seeing that Xiao Yuan nodded, Hong Xiu quickly brought the clear water to feed Xiao Yuan. At the same time, Yang Liuan came to report, Your Majesty, Princess Yongming is here. Xiao Yuan choked with a mouthful of saliva and gulped down in the air, Who? Who are you talking about? Yong, Princess Yongming. Yang Liuan hadn't answered yet when a voice that sounded like jade beads falling came from the door of the bedroom, Imperial Brother. Xiao Yuan looked up. In the original book, a poem was quoted to describe Princess Yongming. There's a beauty in the Northern Kingdom, whose appearance is unparalleled in the world. Her refined nature is superior to that of common people. If she looks at the soldiers who guard the city, she can make the city wall fall. If she looks at the monarch, the country will be defeated. Three. And now, Xiao Yuan's head is full of that sentence, independent from the rest of the world. So this is the beautiful face of the legendary female lead? Yeah. The danger is huge. Chapter, 15 Princess Yongning was dressed in pure silver and gold phoenix robes. She wore bracelets made of silver bells on her lotus-like wrists and her long silk-like hair was tied up by a white jade hairpin. When she saw Xiao Yuan was sitting on the bed powerless, Princess Yongning rushed forward with her deer-like eyes full of worries, Imperial Brother One, why are you suddenly ill? Because you never went to save your husband. So he spent the whole day and night getting himself frozen. Xiao Yuan knew that this matter couldn't be blamed on Princess Yongning, and he can only blame himself. While thinking about the possibility of binding Yan Heqing and throwing him directly at Princess Yongning's arms, he waved his hand and said, It's nothing serious, if you're not careful enough cough. Princess Yongning reached out and patted Xiao Yuan's back, The weather is getting colder by the day, you should pay more attention to your body. 
I made some soup for you, here try it. With that said, Princess Yongming took the food box from the hands of a maid behind her. Hong Xiu seeing this, respectfully approached her, Princess, let this handmaid do it for you. Okay. Princess Yongming handed the food box to Hong Xiu. Hong Xiu opened the lid of the food box and went to take the soup bowl with her bare hands. Princess Yongming saw this and shouted in panic, Be careful, it was just taken off the fire, it's hot. Obviously, this warning was too late. Hong Xiu expressed a soft a sound and the bowl slipped from her hands hitting the ground, the porcelain broke and the soup splashed all over Princess Yongming. Suddenly, there was a whole second of silence inside the bedroom. Hong Xiu suddenly knelt down to the ground, kowtowing with an ashamed expression, This servant is too stupid. I ask for the princess to punish me. It was this servant's fault. Xiao Yuan was just about to call for Hong Xiu when Princess Yongning took the first step, leaning over and helping Hong Xiu to rise with a smile, Don't be afraid, it doesn't matter. I didn't tell you beforehand that the soup was boiling hot, so it was my fault. His Majesty won't blame you, right, Imperial Brother? Oh, my God! Mistress, you're glowing! Is this the pure light of great compassion from the Goddess of Mercy, Hallelujah! Yes, I won't blame you Xiao Yen nodded. Unexpectedly, the Emperor who had always doted on the Princess didn't get angry, yet Hong Xiu was still full of fear. Imperial Brother, I'll go to cook another pot for you. Princess Yongming stood up with a smile. Hong Xiu said with a flustered tone, But Princess, your clothes. Ah! Princess Yongming glanced down at the dress stained with soup. It doesn't matter, I'll change into my imperial brother's clothes. Speaking of which, Princess Yongming found the clothes in the young monarch's imperial bedchamber and walked into the inner room to change her clothes. When she reappeared, Princess Yongming was dressed in neat men's clothing. She carefully tied up a wide area, looking 100% handsome. Then in going to the imperial kitchen, take a good rest imperial brother Princess Yongming mischievously gave Xiao Yuan a courtier's gift. Looking at the figure of Princess Yongming leaving, Xiao Yuan felt very sad. There's a big reason why the history of the Four Kingdoms was so popular, and that was because the image of the female lead in the first half of the story was extremely successful. As the female lead, Princess Yongming doesn't hold back, she's not stupid nor does she cry or haw, she's not delicate and weak, and she doesn't flirt with any man. Because the image of Princess Yongming doesn't have the spirit of a white lotus too, and also she gives a kind of frank and lovely feeling to people, she has become the favorite of many geek male readers. That's why no one expected the story to develop into a stallion novel. So when the author wrote The Death of Princess Yongning, everyone was dumbfounded. It was madness. Just when everyone thought that this was part of the author's plot and Princess Yongning was pretending to be dead. The author gave a determined sentence, she's really dead, cold. The comment section immediately fired. Howling and crying in distress. It was full of hate comments complaining about this evil mother. While Xiao Yuan was still sobbing, Princess Yongning had already cooked the soup again and went back to the imperial palace, imperial brother, please try it. Because the soup was warm, Xiao Yuan felt the cold gradually dissipating. Is it delicious? Princess Yongning curved her eyes. Very delicious. Xiao Yuan nodded and thought, how can I let the two protagonists meet again and make a spark? Xiao Yuan was thinking about Yan Heqing, and at the same time, there was someone else that was thinking about Yan Heqing. That was eunuch Zhao of the House of Internal Affairs. You're telling me that last night His Majesty took Yan Heqing, the prince of the southern Yan Kingdom, away from the snow. Eunuch Zhao was sitting on a chair, with his index finger pointing at someone. The slave who bullied Yan Heqing last time knelt at his feet, only to promise him, him telling the truth. Well. Eunuch Zhao thought for a while, his eyes were sinister and his tone was not good, where's Yan Heqing now? Answering to Eunuch Zhao, he's still at the Taiyi Pavilion. Well, in a few days, when Yan Heqing returns to the House of Internal Affairs, you will find some people and show him a lesson in my regards. Chapter, 16 The sky was cold and grey. It was early winter, and the weather was becoming colder day by day. 
In the early morning light, the sound of a rooster screaming three times could be heard, most of the servants and maids in the palace haven't yet woken up. Meanwhile, Yen Heqing had picked up the broom and was ready to start his work of sweeping the snow at the courtyard. In the yard, the thick snow covered the tree branches and railings. At a first glance, there was a vast expanse of white mixing up with the sky except for a red plum in the corner of the courtyard, which was very bright and eye-catching. Seeing no one around, Yen Heqing took the broom as a sword and danced a beautiful sword formation technique. Yen Heqing calmed his emotions and swept the floor diligently. After half an hour, the snow in the courtyard had been swept away. Just when he was about to return to his room, a snowfall suddenly hit him on the head. Inside the snowfall was a hidden stone. The pain exploded on Yen Heqing's forehead, and when he reached out to touch it, sure enough, he saw blood on his fingers. Ha ha ha. Two lowly slaves pointed at Yen Heqing and started laughing. Hello, surnamed Yen, I heard that His Majesty saved you not long ago, so why don't you go to Jingyang Palace? The little fatty said while laughing, with extreme mockery. You see how he looks with a charcoal face all day long, can His Majesty even look at him? Another sneered. Yen Heqing's face was extremely cold, he didn't say a word and turned away, intending to enter inside his room. Hey, don't go. The fatty slave quickly stopped him. We just want to talk to you. Yen Heqing bowed his head and wanted to bypass him. Another slave reached out and grabbed Yen Heqing's back collar pulling him back, oh, embarrassed, right? Have you seen His Majesty's temper? You can't even talk about it. That's right. The fat servant wasn't happy with this and brutally pushed Yen Heqing. However, even if he was insulted like this, Yen Heqing wasn't angry at all and endured everything silently. In a darker hidden place, Eunuch Zhao, who was seeing everything, frowned. Eunuch Zhao, I think this man is such a coward, he won't even avoid suffering. Steward Wen Feng, the one that made Yen Heqing kneel on that snowy night, whispered to Eunuch Zhao. Humph, fool. Eunuch Zhao glanced coldly at him. Steward Feng was being a flatterer. Trying to steal a chicken only to end up losing the rice used to lure it too, he didn't want to become like that. He immediately blushed and tightened his neck. Eunuch Xiao held his hands behind his back, the ones that can tolerate pain are the most terrifying. Take a good look at his eyes. Steward Feng quickly extended his neck and looked over. Because Yan Heqing kept his head down, it was difficult to see his eyes but occasionally when he did looked up, his eyes were full of perseverance and fearlessness, like the sharp blade of a sword. Like the burning fire, like the running rivers and the sea, more like the peak of the mountains that hadn't break for hundreds of millions of years. At one glance, though, one couldn't help but shiver with fear. This steward phone was stunned. You understand now? This man is a caged beast. If one day he's able to escape from this prison, he will tear and crush anyone that had herded him into pieces. He will swallow it down, no residue will be left. Eunuch Xiao's eyes narrowed slightly, his tone dangerous, this person must never stay. Eunuch Xiao, what are you suggesting? Steward Feng made a decapitating gesture. Eunuch Xiao shook his head, although the inner court doesn't lack servants, his majesty won't pursue anything, and after all, he's the prince of the southern Yan kingdom. Nonetheless, he was saved by his majesty several days ago, so we can't touch him. The best way to deal with a beast is not to kill them. Steward Feng bowed respectfully, Eunuch Zhao, please enlighten me. Eunuch Zhao said slowly, for such a wolf-like man, only by grinding off his claws, pulling out his fangs, breaking off his spine, make him become a servile servant bit by bit. Make him kneel on the ground for his entire life, so that he could no longer stand, only like this we will be able to rest assured. Steward Feng, do you understand? This servant understands. Steward Feng leaned down again. Go ahead if you understand. Eunuch Xiao waved his sleeve and turned away. Chapter, 17 In there, the fat and thin servants were debating whether they were done with the instructions given by Eunuch Xiao and if they should let Yan Heqing go. In the end, as soon as they looked up, they saw Eunuch Xiao's lackey, Steward Feng, walking over. 
Steward Foam. The two servants hurriedly nodded and bowed to him, showing their respect. Hmm. Steward Fong waved his hand arrogantly as he looked at Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing lowered his head without saying a word. Steward Fong wasn't annoyed with this, he simply raised his foot and kicked Yan Heqing as hard as he could, kneel. Yan Heqing stumbled over, hitting his knees heavily against the ground. What? Weren't you happy to talk back last time? Why aren't you talking this time? Steward Fong circled Yan Heqing, reached out, and fiercely pinched Yan Heqing's cheeks, forcing him to look up. Steward Fong originally intended to intimidate and insult Yan Heqing, but who would have thought that by looking at Yan Heqing's eyes, he would feel so agitated? Yan Heqing's eyes showed contempt and disgust, looking nothing like a humble man. This, of course, sent a shiver down Steward Fong's back. You, you, how dare you stare at me? Steward Fong slapped Yan Heqing, and then pulled the fat servant. You come here. Punch him on the mouth. All right. The fat servant smiled heatedly, walked forward, swung his arm, and hit Yan Heqing twice. Steward Fong looked at him coldly, but then he was greatly alarmed. In cases like this, ordinary people would be afraid of making the bullies burst into anger. However, not only did Yan Heqing endure the humiliation, but he also never bent his back. This man isn't a coward at all. Eunuch Xiao, that old fox, he knows how to judge people. Steward Fong felt that Yan Heqing's straight back was too unpleasant to see, so he walked forward to kick him in the waist. After being kicked, Yan Heqing fell face first to the ground. At that moment, an object rolled out his sleeve. The eyes of the thin servant were sharp. As he picked up the fallen object, he noticed that it was a finely crafted jade hairpin. Steward Fong, look at this. At that instant, Yan Heqing hurried to touch his sleeve, with an alarming expression of panic adorning his face. Steward Fong took the hairpin and said with disdain, Heh, what a piece of cheap garbage. Give it back. Yan Heqing suddenly got up intending to fight for the hairpin. However, he was blocked by the fat and thin servants. After seeing Yan Heqing reacting like this, Steward Fong raised a sly smile, although it looks like garbage, it should still be worth a few coins. Since you don't need it, you can honor me with this gift one. What gift? I want to be honored too. Xiao Yuan whispered close to Steward Fong's ear. Steward Fong shouted with fright and turned around to scold the man behind him, Are you stupid or? Your Majesty! The three servants were frightened to death by the sudden appearance of Xiao Yuan. Their faces turned ashen, and their bodies trembled uncontrollably as they cowed out incessantly, Why oh your Emma Majesty, Whyi is H his Emma Majesty H here? Naturally, Xiao Yuan came to see Yan Heqing. But who would have thought that he would run into Yan Heqing being humiliated? How long has it been since he got punished to kneel on the snow? Why are these cannon fodder making trouble again? Are all these villains so dedicated to their work nowadays? Don't they ever take a break? Is this task that important? Xiao Yuan stretched out his hand in front of Steward Fong, what item were you talking about? Steward Fong hurriedly presented the jade hairpin with both hands. When Xiao Yuan saw it, he became so frightened that he almost dropped it by accident. Oh, for my third aunt, sixth aunt, and seventh uncle's sake too. Do you even know what this is? Show honor to you. You should honor your coffin plate, you dumb fuck. This jade hairpin is a relic of the male lead's mother. Not only that, but it's also a token of love that Yan Heqing will give to Princess Yongning in the near future. How dare you want this? How are you even still alive? Did get tired of living? Do you want to die a horrible death? Xiao Yuan was so scared of damaging the jade hairpin by accident that he turned around to shove it into Hong Xiao's hands, Hong Xiao, hold this carefully for me. Don't break it. Hong Xiao nodded. Then, Xiao Yuan patted his chest and looked at Yan Heqing. When Xiao Yuan saw Yan Heqing dressed in thin clothes, he couldn't help but sigh helplessly. In his early stage, the male lead was really miserable. Xiao Yuan walked over, took off his robe, and wrapped it around Yan Heqing. 
Yen Heqin's body stiffened and his brow furrowed. He showed resistance, but in the end, he said nothing. You're already so miserable, can you stop hating for the time being? Xiao Yuan asked, can you get up? Yan Heqing nodded, but when he attempted to rise, he staggered with an unsteady posture. Xiao Yuan turned his head and said, Liuan, take him inside. Yang Liuan clasped his fist in a salute and followed the order, assisting Yan Heqing into the room. Only then did Xiao Yuan look back at the three servants kneeling on the ground. When they felt Xiao Yuan's gaze upon them, the three servants shook with fear. What are you so afraid of? Why weren't you all scared to die when you bullied the male lead not long ago? Come on, get up. Xiao Yuan raised his hand. The three servants scrambled to their feet in a panic. Xiao Yuan, stand in a row, stand at ease, and look to the left. The three servants, ha. Huh. Ha huh what? Stand still. Xiao Yuan squatted down, rolled three snowballs, and then stuffed them inside the three servants' clothes. The three servants immediately gritted their teeth, while their faces twisted due to the cold. Come on, repeat after me. Xiao Yuan patted the snow on his hands and said, If he doesn't suffer, I won't die. Villains must rely on their brains. The three servants, ha. Huh. Again with ha. Huh. Xiao Yuan smashed their heads one by one. Repeat. The three servants, if he doesn't suffer, I won't die. Villains must rely on their brains. Xiao Yuan, if him not smart enough, he'll die. Only a fool would mess with the male lead. The three servants. If him not smart enough, he'll die. Only a fool would mess with the male lead. All right. Go back and recite it out loud. Remember it well, this will be on the final exam. Xiao Yuan nodded with satisfaction and said, Well, what should I do now? It seems that the three servants didn't expect that Xiao Yuan would let them go so easily, so after looking at each other, they shouted their thanks to the emperor and hurried to run away. Xiao Yuan was about to enter Yan Heqing's room to see him, but he suddenly felt Hong Xiao staring at him, so he asked, What's wrong? Um. Hong Xiao fell back into a trance, hesitating for a long time until finally asking, Since His Majesty is so concerned with the Prince of the Southern Yan Kingdom, why didn't His Majesty vent his anger on his behalf just now? Hmm. What do you mean? Xiao Yuan was confused. Hong Xiao said, Naturally, His Majesty should have punished those three servants in front of the Prince of the Southern Yan Kingdom. Like digging out the servants' eyes, cutting off their tongues and hands. Xiao Yuan. Hong Xiao. Why have you become so sinister all of a sudden? Or is this your true essence, and am just finding out? Xiao Yuan pondered for a moment and said, The house of internal affairs has always been disciplined. When bullying takes place, do you think eunuch Xiao won't interfere? Hong Xiao suddenly realized, Your Majesty, you mean. Xiao Yuan smiled faintly, Yes, they were acting according to orders. Hong Xiao's face showed doubt, but why would eunuch Xiao want to humiliate the prince of the southern Yan kingdom? Xiao Yuan sighed, because of the northern kingdom. Because of me. This sentence, on the contrary, made Hong Xiao more puzzled, your majesty. Xiao Yuan looked at Hong Xiao, who was twinkling her eyes confused, and said, Hong Xiao, you have to promise me one thing. No matter what, you won't do anything to Yan Heqin. All right? Hong Xiao hurriedly saluted, His Majesty can rest assured, this maidservant will keep it in mind. Hmm. Xiao Yuan nodded reassuringly and stepped into the room. Chapter, 18 What do you mean that the bedside room is leaking and there's no dry place? Where does it originate, the rain leak and why is it not being fixed? Where's the cloth quilt that has been cold for many years? Xiao Yuan felt that he had seen everything today. The place where Yan Heqing lived, which couldn't be called a house, was clearly a firewood room. There wasn't even a single table and chair, let alone a bed and at a glance, except for the broken wall, only the corner was pitifully filled up with firewood. Xiao Yuan was afraid that as soon as he raised his head, he will see the bitterness hanging on the hanging beam. It's so miserable. Xiao Yuan's robe was given to Yan Heqing. 
The room was leaking and the cold wind was blowing, making everyone tremble. Yang Luoan said, concerned, Your Majesty, this place is too cold, you. Xiao Yuan said, It's a bit cold indeed. Luoan, go back to the palace and bring me a robe. After Yang Luoan complied, he walked out of the room in a hurry. Xiao Yuan turned his head to look at Yan Heqing, who was standing at the side of the pestle, with blood dripping off his forehead. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but take a deep breath of cold air. Who did it? What should I do if you damage his face? That face will be used to conquer the world. Hong Xiao, go get some hot water and some medicine to cure his wound. Xiao Yuan ordered Hong Xiao. Hong Xiao nodded, walking out of the room. Suddenly, the silence broke inside the room, Xiao Yuan and Yan Heqing were left alone. Xiao Yuan turned around twice in the room and found no place to sit. He simply sat on the firewood stack, saw that Yan Heqing was still standing there, and patted the firewood around him, come, sit. Yan Heqing didn't move a single muscle. Didn't you bite me last time in prison? Come on, and give it another bite. Xiao Yuan stood up and handed his hand towards Yan Heqing's mouth. Yan Heqing pursed his lips, but his expression didn't change. Relax, I don't have that kind of intention towards you. If I had it, I would have already done something. Xiao Yuan pulled back his hand and went back to sit on the woodpile again. After that, Yan Heqing's eyes finally moved, he raised his head slightly and looked at Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan gave him a small smile, and calmly looked at Yan Heqing. After a while, Yan Heqing finally opened his mouth, and in a hoarse voice he asked, Then why did you do this? Xiao Yuan answered in a serious tone, because in the investment that you need to recharge into your account. Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan, cough actually, because of love, I don't easily feel sorrow, so everything should be happiness. Xiao Yuan sang out loud. Yan Heqing's expression was somewhat broken. Xiao Yuan held back his smile and waved his hands again and again, im joking, joking, don't get angry. In short, you can rest assured that I don't harbor any ill intentions towards you. As for why, I may tell you if there's a chance in the future, now you can choose whether to believe me or not. Yan Heqing's eyes were a little heavy, but when I was in prison. Can you stop being so vengeful, male hero? Am I pulling my sword in front of you right now? After pulling it out that time, I didn't do anything to you. How can you still remember that now? That's because I'm afraid of you. Xiao Yuan told him the truth. Yan Heqing's eyes cleared and mysteriously flashed, afraid of me? Xiao Yuan didn't explain himself yet when Hong Xiao suddenly walked in, with a basin of hot water on her hands. She handed the healing medicine to Xiao Yuan, Your Majesty, the water is ready. Xiao Yuan took the medicine, you've worked hard. By the way, give me the hairpin. Hong Xiao took the hairpin carefully from her sleeve and gave it to him. As soon as Xiao Yuan turned around, he saw Yan Heqing staring intensely at the hairpin in his hands. Xiao Yuan smiled and walked in front of him, handing out the hairpin, here, take it. Yan Heqing stared at Xiao Yuan for a long while, finally reaching out to take it back. Unexpectedly, Xiao Yuan suddenly turned his hands and smiled. His smile didn't change, wait, I have a condition. Yan Heqing received an empty space, he was neither anxious nor annoyed, he silently looked at Xiao Yuan again. Xiao Yuan said, if you wash your face and apply the medicine, I will give you back the hairpin. Knowing that it was meaningless to cover his face with black charcoal, Yan Heqing went to the basin filled with water and started to wash his face. Xiao Yuan looked at him instantly. The water in the basin gradually became dirty. Yan Heqing washed his cheeks and hands, and raised his head. There were thousands of mountains and rivers inside his eyes, and the water was shining between his lips and tongue, look at the bright moonlight, and the ten thousand lights. It's all about the beauty of his face look at that mountain again, look at the overlapping mountains again, it's all about the straightness of his nose. Xiao Yuan sighed with emotion, ah. These eyes. Ah. These eyebrows. Ah. These lips. Ah. The beauty. No. 
I have to look at it again. Ah. These eyes. Ah. These eyebrows. Ah. These lips. Ah. The beauty. Yen Heqin wiped his face clean, and set his eyes on the jade hairpin in Xiao Yuan hands. What are you looking at? I didn't say no to you. Don't look at me with that burning eyes of yours. I know you're going to use this to beg for a wife. Xiao Yuan handed the jade hairpin to Yen Heqing with a smile, take it, after all, it's a relic from you mother. Yan Heqin stiffened and looked at Xiao Yuan, his face showing a shocking expression. This hairpin, he had never talked about it with no one from the Northern Kingdom. Ignoring Yan Heqing's surprise, Xiao Yuan turned to Hong Xiu and said, Hong Xiu, wait outside first, and don't let anyone get inside here for a while. Chapter, 19 After finishing her duties, Hong Xiu turned around and walked out of the imperial bedchamber, closing the door behind her. Xiao Yuan sat back on the firewood stack and pointed to his side. Come here, I have something to discuss with you. Yan Heqin put away the hairpin, and took a seat in a tight position. Xiao Yuan's eyes were very different than before. Why do I know about the hairpin origin? I will tell you if I have a chance in the future. Xiao Yuan casually patted his clothes. I just had an idea, I want you to move to Jingyang Palace. Before Yan Heqin could say anything, Xiao Yuan hurriedly said, I know that Jingyang Palace is that kind of place, but I really don't mean that to you. Besides, you should also be aware of this, there's someone in the House of Internal Affairs that regards you as an eyesore. Eunuch Xiao is the head of the House of Internal Affairs. He won't care even if I say a few words to him, so you can't stay here. It's better for you to go to the Jingyang Palace, there's no one there that wishes to harm you. Yan Heqing gently lowered his eyelashes, not knowing what to think about it. Xiao Yuan was afraid that he wouldn't agree. After all, staying here will get him either killed by eunuch Xiao or freeze to death. He earnestly advises again, Look, I sent Liuan and Hong Xiu away, wanting to discuss this matter with you alone, because I don't want to embarrass you. Yan Heqing was still silent. Xiao Yuan began to feel uneasy in his stomach, concerned with petty interests. Him. A president who has been given high hopes. And although on the road to becoming a tyrannical president, he ended up walking a normal path. However. Yeah, he also walked on that road. As a tyrannical president, you must work hard, be action-oriented, and act arrogantly. Therefore, Xiao Yuan decided to tie up Yan Heqing and take him directly to Jingyang Palace. Xiao Yuan encouraged himself. He stood up aggressively. He rolled up his sleeves with bad intentions. Then the cold wind of the broken room blew. He. He shuddered steadily. In the cold room, Yan Heqing looked at Xiao Yuan's sleeves, as if looking at a fool. Why is he so cold? His aura is so cold that it could kill you. Xiao Yuan quietly put down the sleeve that he had just rolled up, and thought that he really didn't have the talent to be a tyrannical president. Then he raised his eyes and saw that Yan Heqing had taken off the robe he put on him before and was handing it over. It's okay, I don't a cold wind blew, and the rest of Xiao Yuan's words were frozen in his throat. Yan Heqing wasn't allowed to put the robe around him, so he handled it into Xiao Yuan's hands, put it on. Xiao Yuan handed it back to Yan Heqing, no, no. You shouldn't inadvertently exude a flirtatious aura. I was scared. Yan Heqing said, I promise you, they'll go to Jingyang Palace. Xiao Yuan's eyes got bright, really. Yan Heqing, false. Xiao Yuan. Yan Heqing, I have a condition. Why is this sentence so familiar? What are the conditions? Xiao Yuan asked. Yan Heqing said indifferently, if you put on your robe, I will go to Jingyang Palace. So for the flirtatious aura you inadvertently exude, you do have B.1 in your heart. To fight or not fight over it, convinced, in being obligated to accept. Xiao Yuan obediently put on his outer robe, but only felt a headache, stomachache and toothache, satisfied. Yan Heqing nodded approvingly, yes. After finally reaching a consensus, Xiao Yuan breathed a sigh of relief, 
got up and walked out of the firewood room. Hong Xiu stood at the door waiting, when she saw Xiao Yuan coming out, she greeted him, Your Majesty. Xiao Yuan said, Hong Xiu, please arrange for Yan Heqing to go to Jingyang Palace. Hong Xiu seemed to have been expecting this for a long time, and with an ambiguous smile she said, At your Imperial Majesty's command. Xiao Yuan pretended not to see the smile on Hong Xiu, by the way, arrange a place for Yan Heqing to live that is near Princess Yang Ming's bedroom. Hong Xiu's face showed doubt, but still nodded nonetheless. Chapter 20 Yan Heqing was about to leave the House of Internal Affairs, but it came to Eunuch Zhao's knowledge half a day later. Steward Feng finished reporting to Eunuch Zhao in a ruthless manner. He thought that Eunuch Zhao would be dissatisfied. Who would have known that he would just nod, and say in a disapproving tone, it was a matter of time. Steward Feng scratched his head and said with embarrassment, Eunuch Zhao, in case Yan Heqing becomes the next favorite of his majesty, he will whisper sweet nothings to his ears. The life of this lowly servant, I'm afraid ha, I'm afraid it's hard to protect. Eunuch Zhao sneered, what are you afraid of? Your head, even if he mentions a word about it to his majesty, he would look petty. Yes, yes. Steward Foam nodded and bowed his waist. This servant will be relying on Eunuch Zhao. Eunuch Zhao leisurely sipped his tea, you must get ready and prepare beforehand. After two days, I will go and talk to the maidservant Hong Xiu. The maidservant Hong Xiu. Steward Feng's heart jumped, the headmaster of Jing Yang Palace. Eunuch Zhao glanced at Steward Feng and said, What's the matter? Aren't you free? Would you refuse, even when you said you're relying on me? I'm not busy, not busy at all. Steward Feng was a spirited man, then he quickly retreated. Hong Xiu never imagined that Eunuch Xiao would actually come to find her. Although they were both in charge of the same job, there was no interaction between them. One doesn't visit a temple without a cause one. Hong Xiu could probably guess who Eunuch Xiao was coming for. She thought of what Xiao Yuan had said to her before, and became alert at once. Eunuch Xiao saw the look on Hong Xiu's face and smiled, Maidservant Hong Xiu, won't you invite me to take a seat? Hong Xiu quickly asked Eunuch Xiao to sit down and hurried the slaves to pour tea, this maidservant was disrespectful, neglecting Eunuch Xiao. I ask Eunuch Xiao to forgive me. Hong Xiu must be joking. It seems that my old face is still useful in other places besides the House of Internal Affairs. Eunuch Xiao teased, lifting the lid of tea and blue on it, I've heard that the favorite maidservant of His Majesty, Hong Xiu, will be coming here today. In fact, I want to become acquaintances with the maidservant Hong Xiu. It was a little unclear what Eunuch Xiao wanted to say. He was an old slave that served for three dynasties. He bathed in favor from generation to generation and took care of the House of Internal Affairs for more than ten years not to mention, the late emperor regarded him like a relative. Hong Xiu said, Eunuch Xiao must be joking, this maidservant was just doing her job. Eunuch Xiao meaningfully said, Yes, just doing things within your capabilities. Hong Xiu continued, Eunuch Zhao, you're also a very experienced person in the palace. We servants, what we should do and what we shouldn't do, I believe, you should understand. Hong Xiu wanted to remind Eunuch Zhao that Yan Heqing was already in Jingyang Palace, and he should stop any persecution plan. However, Eunuch Zhao wasn't annoyed when he heard this. He smiled and said, Maidservant Hong Xiu truly deserves the favoritism of His Majesty. After all, this matter of doing things, oh yeah, it's not good enough. What you're afraid of, Hong Xiu, is not what you should do, but if you don't do what you're supposed to do. Aren't we, the slaves, the biggest negligence? Hong Xiu was stunned, what does Eunuch Zhao mean? Eunuch Zhao took a sip of tea, and then continued, I heard that the male concubines in Jing Yang Palace must go through the guidance of maidservant Hong Xiu before they can serve His Majesty. Hong Xiu said, That is natural, but the two of us, you and me, have it very clear in our hearts, that some of these people, and not us the slaves, can move as they please. Eunuch Xiao suddenly sneered, Can't I move? Maidservant Hong Xiu, there's some people here, in the House of Internal Affairs, that are my slaves. All I need to do is to make them my slaves. 
what do I care? Maidservant Hong Xiu, you need to understand that the concubines at the Jingyang Palace are going to be sent to His Majesty's bedside. If you send a wolf, it will hurt His Majesty. Eunuch Xiao paused just right in time, and Hong Xiu was startled. Maidservant Hong Xiu, you don't need to hurt his life. You just need to make those that should be forbidden to be forbidden. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Yeah, we're all slaves isn't the biggest part of our duties to worry about His Majesty's business. Eunuch Xiao finished his speech slowly, got up, said goodbye, and then left. Leaving Hong Xiu at a loss. Chapter, 21 Hong Xiu, Hong Xiu After a few calls, Hong Xiu finally came back to reality. She suddenly fixed her gaze and found that the cup in front of her was also full, but she was still pouring. Ah! Hong Xiu shouted, and hurriedly took a cloth to clean it, Your Majesty, forgive me. What's wrong with you? Falling in trance, are you sick? Xiao Yuan asked worriedly. I'm not sick, Your Majesty. Thank you for your concern. Hong Xiu bowed her head. Xiao Yuan took a closer look at her and saw that there were indeed no signs of illness, so he didn't pursue it, I will go to Jing Yang Palace later. Hong Xiu wiped her hands, Your Majesty, are you going to see Yan Heqing? Xiao Yuan said, Yes, I will go by myself. Don't do anything unnecessary. Hong Xiu advised, His Majesty should bring an imperial bodyguard. Xiao Yuan thought about it, strolled to the door of the dormitory, and brought Yang Liuan in, Comrade Yang, they'll go on a trip to investigate the leader, will you accompany me? Yang Liuan was stunned, forgive Wei Chen Wan, I'm stupid and didn't understand what His Majesty meant. Xiao Yuan smiled, you don't need to understand, let's go. Well bathe in the glory of the male lead. The two came to Jing Yang Palace and went directly to Yan Heqing's wing room. Yang Liuan was about to push the door open but was stopped by Xiao Yuan. Yang Liuan was puzzled and saw Xiao Yuan stepping forward, tapping the door lightly three times. Yang Liuan was shocked and speechless. Who is this Yan Heqing, and why His Majesty should be so sincere and fearful? Seeing Yang Liuan's shocked face, Xiao Yuan asked doubtfully, What's the matter? Your Majesty. Yang Liuan struggled to utter his words, Well, what exactly does this man mean to you? Why should you call him leader? Xiao Yuan thought for a while, Male lead, he. The focal point of the world's contradictions. The embodiment of the central idea. Everything rotates around him and we're all bound to jump with our eyes closed. Yang Liuan was stunned. The door was opened with a squeak, and Yan Heqing, dressed in white, appeared in front of them. Yang Liuan turned to look at Yan Heqing in shock. Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan saw that Yan Heqing had put cakes in the center of the clear house, went inside to take a plate, stuffed it into Yang Liuan's arms and said, Liuan, you can go and eat cakes elsewhere. Yang Liuan was caught off guard, Your Majesty, but. It's okay. Go ahead. Seeing that Xiao Yuan had a tough attitude, Yang Liuan had to obey the order. He gave Yan Heqing a complicated look and turned away with the cakes. Unlike from the previous embarrassment, Yan Heqing was clean and fresh this time with his black long hair tied up in a high ponytail, beautiful and handsome emerging to the world, it's really a face rarely seen on earth. Seeing Yan Heqing blocking the door while looking at him, Xiao Yuan smiled and asked, Won't you invite me to take a seat? Yan Heqing stared at him for a while, and turned sideways. Xiao Yuan walked leisurely into the house from his side and sat down next to the round yellow wooden table at the middle of the wing room. Yan Heqing reached out to close the door, and Xiao Yuan shouted violently, Don't close the door. Yan Heqing's action made him look at Xiao Yuan and his voice was cold, Why? Xiao Yuan said, I'm afraid you will cut me into pieces. There's no place where I can escape to if you close the door. Yan Heqing was silent for a second and slammed the door shut. Xiao Yuan jumped three feet high and subconsciously ran towards the window. Yan Heqing turned around and gave him a look, since you're so scared of me, why did you persuade the imperial bodyguard to leave just now? For your innocence. If there's an imperial bodyguard at the door, the people in this Jingyang palace will know that I came to see you. 
And although these concubines are men, there must be some of them that will get jealous. You don't worry about being the target, but am worried about you. Xiao Yuan grabbed the window and was ready to turn it over at any time. Yan Heqin was stunned and said, I don't have a knife. Xiao Yuan asked, What about a dagger? No. Sword. And what about a hammer? Yan Heqin, what's a hammer? Xiao Yuan, then here I am, deceiving a puppy. With that in mind, Xiao Yuan sat back at the table while remaining vigilant. He coughed twice to cover up the gate, and then pretended to be deep, comrade Xiao Tu Yen. Yen He Qing. Xiao Yuan continued, did you get accustomed in living here? Are you cold sleeping at night? Do you usually like to go out for a walk? Princess Yangning's palace is on the east side of your wing room. Do you understand what I mean? Xiao Yuan's smile is very amiable. Very meaningful. Very thought-provoking. Yan Heqin calmly replied, Yes, I understand. Boo. You're really worthy of being the protagonist. Look at this realization. Look at this ability to distinguish between primary and secondary conflicts. Look at this consciousness of grasping the main contradiction. I admire you. Yan Heqin continued, I will not go to the east. Xiao Yuan almost fell off the stool. You must go. You must go for me. Please. If you don't go, you will miss your first wife. You don't understand anything. Xiao Yuan swallowed, I didn't mean this. Yan Heqing said, I understand. You don't. You don't understand. Forget it. It's better to ask Princess Yongming if she needs a bodyguard. Xiao Yuan shuffled a few more words, and then got up and left. Yan Heqing said nothing, and watched silently. When Xiao Yuan left, those seemingly indifferent eyes were instantly cold and calculating. Chapter 22 Walking out of the wing room, Xiao Yuan wandered around looking for Yang Liuan, but he didn't got to take a few more steps when he heard a surprise call behind him, Your Majesty. Xiao Yuan turned around confused, he saw a man dressed in red looking at him with delight. He was a man, but he had extremely charming and beautiful facial features. His posture was twisted, and even his voice was deliberately pinched into a thin tone. He rushed onto him to hug him, the fragrance between his sleeves almost made Xiao Yuan faint. Xiao Yuan quickly stepped back, avoiding the man's intended hugging attack. The man fell on an empty space, feeling grieved, throwing a tantrum almost bursting into tears, I haven't seen you in days, your majesty, don't you want a you anymore? You, you, you talk properly. No way. Don't cry. Wait. Don't come any closer. Xiao Yuan dodged again, trying to buy time while he tried to remember who this person was in the original book. This man was briefly mentioned in the original book, but Xiao Yuan feels that he can still remember him. He also thanked the female fans who pestered the comments section with this topic. His full name is Qin Yu. He's the most favored one among the male concubines and the only one that was mentioned in the original book. When the Northern Kingdom was about to be defeated by Yan He Qin, the young monarch poisoned all his male concubines, but left Qin Yu alive. He even wanted Qin Yu to escape with him to the north, it seemed that he really felt deep love for Qin Yu. However, in order to survive, Qin Yu betrayed the young monarch and he was caught by Yan He Qin at the entrance of the palace. This plot twist, in the original book, was described in a few paragraphs, but it touched many fangirls' nerves. For a while, the book reviews were full of him being described as a scum show, sadomasochistic, with deep emotions and so on. At that time, Xiao Yuan wanted to ask these girls, how do you know that Qin Yu is a show? The original book doesn't mention it at all. Now Xiao Yuan just wanted to say, do y'all have a unique talent to recognize who's a gong and who's a show? When Qin Yu saw that Xiao Yuan kept avoiding him, he bit his lower lip tightly, and his eyes glistened with tears, Your Majesty? Why? What did I do wrong? Did I make His Majesty unhappy? I heard that His Majesty has been very busy day and night. This time, you finally came to Jingyang Palace, but you didn't come to see this servant? Xiao Yuan answered decisively, No. Qin Yu. 
As soon as Qin Ye's eyes closed, he burst into tears. When he opened them again he looked very pitiful and beautiful with his tears falling like rain, it seems that his majesty has found another love recently, then, A Yu will leave now. He won't be offending his majesty anymore. Xiao Yuan nodded, okay, goodbye, 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 goodbye. Qin Yu was instantly immersed in shock because of Xiao Yuan's sudden singing voice. He then found that the tears that had been successful before, were useless this time. Xiao Yuan really turned away and left. Fearing that the entanglement with Qin Yu would cause him troubles, Xiao Yuan hurriedly left to continue searching for Yang Liuan. Just when he was puzzled as to where to go to find him, the familiar sound of a Guqin suddenly came. It was on that day when Xiao Yuan couldn't fall asleep, when he went out for a walk, he heard the sound of the Guqin before running into Yang Liuan near the pavilion. Xiao Yuan was puzzled, he followed the Guqin sound towards a small yard where willows were planted. Unexpectedly, at the moment he stepped into the yard, the Guqin sound was quietly silenced until it disappeared completely. It was quiet all around. Xiao Yuan raised his head in doubt and happened to see Yang Liuan hurriedly approaching. Seeing Xiao Yuan, Yang Liuan was surprised, and then kneeled down on one knee to salute, How did you come here, your majesty? Regardless of why I came, why is there a theme song every time you appear? Xiao Yuan looked at the man with his own theme song, Don't kneel, get up. Have you finished all the pastries? Yang Liuan got up and said, answering to his majesty, Yes I did. Seeing Yang Liuan empty-handed, Xiao Yuan asked, Well, what about the plate? Yang Liuan suddenly supported himself, his voice was stuttering, PLA plate, W. E. Chen lost it. Xiao Yuan said, It's okay, it's not a valuable thing. Let's go back to the palace. Yang Liuan took a long breath and saluted again, Yes. Chapter 23 In the dead of the night, Hong Xiao was still serving Xiao Yuan as usual she then waited for him to rest before leaving. Xiao Yuan was just lying on his bed when he suddenly asked, Hong Xiao, is there a famous Qin player in Jingyang Palace? After thinking for a while, Hong Xiao replied, answering to his majesty, there is. Seeing Xiao Yuan nodding his head, Hong Xiao asked with sincerity, does his majesty want to? No. I was just asking. No other meaning. Don't overinterpret. Xiao Yuan interrupted her quickly. Hong Xiao bowed her head to salute and said, This maidservant was too stupid. Xiao Fengyue has been in the palace for a year, but His Majesty has never seen him. Why is His Majesty suddenly asking about him today? After all, I heard the sound of the Guqin twice by accident and I've always wondered who was the one playing it. So his name was Xiao Fengyue. Xiao Yuan searched the name back and forth twice in his mind, but he didn't have any recollection of it. It seemed to be a character not mentioned in the original book. Xiao Yuan said, I was just curious, don't worry. Hong Xiao nodded and extinguished the candlelight beside the bed. Xiao Yuan, who had breathing sounds next to him, soon fell asleep. Seeing Xiao Yuan sleeping, Hong Xiao leaves quietly. Outside the palace, the moon was bright in the sky, but the night was really dark and Hong Xiao, wrapping the clothes, was full of worries. Eunuch Xiao's words were still lingering inside Hong Xiao's heart. In the past, she would go back to rest by now, but this time she couldn't help but walk out towards the Jingyang Palace. Yang Heqing's wing room is on the far east side of Jingyang Palace. Because of the curfew, at this time, Jingyang Palace is quieter at night. Hong Xiao was only thinking about things when unconsciously she got there. When she was about to leave, she saw a figure in the east part of the courtyard. Hong Xiao's heart was shocked. Holding her breath she saw Yan Heqing standing in the middle of the courtyard, facing south, staring at the moon. The night was as cold as water, and the bright moonlight was falling on the cool snow, on the dry tree branches and in the eyes of Yan Heqing, for quite a while. The vast land ten thousand miles away from this place was his hometown, and the white bones buried under it were his ancestors. Yan Heqing held the jade hairpin tightly in his right hand. There was unwillingness, remorse and determination in his eyes. When he raised his eyes again, they were flowing with murderous intent. 
Hong Xiao was horrified, and her head was filled with eunuch Zhao's advice, the people in Jin Yang Palace are going to be sent to His Majesty's bedside. If you send a wolf, you will hurt His Majesty. At this time, eunuch Zhao sat on a chair drinking tea. While steward Feng was massaging his legs for him, he asked, eunuch Zhao, you said that this Hong Xiao is just a maidservant after listening to your words, what else can she do? I'm afraid that Yan Heqing's days at Jin Yang Palace will be very comfortable. After hearing this, eunuch Zhao sneered and shook his head, the only thing I'm worried about is that she didn't listen to my advice. Ha! Huh. Did eunuch Zhao make some arrangements in Jin Yang Palace? Steward Fong was surprised. Eunuch Zhao looked at Steward Fong with disgust, You, why don't you just ask directly? Steward Fong was a yes man, instruct me eunuch Zhao. Eunuch Zhao said, Do you know how many years has Hong Xiu been in the palace? Steward Fong wiped the cold sweat, This slave is stupid, I don't know. Humph. Eunuch Zhao sneered. She, ah, uh, she entered the palace at the age of 18 and she has been in charge of the Jingyang Palace for more than five years. Do you know why it took her only three years to become the headmaster of the Jingyang Palace? Steward Feng stuttered, this s slave. Eunuch Zhao continued, I will tell you something, one of these male concubines was once found to be an assassin. This assassin should have been executed immediately, but his appearance was extremely pleasing for his majesty. His majesty's heart was very itchy and impatient, but he was also afraid of the beautiful man's force, so he handed the man over to Hong Xiu. Later, the next day, the assassin's tendons were cut and his teeth were broken. Then, he was sent to his majesty's bedside. After finishing his speech, eunuch Zhao disregarded the fright in steward Feng's face and stood up from the chair. He knocked on his old leg with the back of his hand and said, There's some things that can't be changed. Chapter 24 Xiao Yuan has been going to Yongning Palace recently. On the first day, Princess Yongning was learning to play the Guqin. When she saw Xiao Yuan, she was very happy and played a piece of music for him. Her slender jade fingers were flying, and the scenery was beautiful. Xiao Yuan was amazed, and then, went right to the point, Ninger, do you want a personal imperial bodyguard? Princess Yongning hooked the strings and looked up doubtfully, no, thank you for your concern, imperial brother. Why don't you want? How can this be? Why are you both, young couple, so frustrating? Why? Xiao Yuan smiled kindly, why not? Princess Yongning did not understand, why should I? Because he can develop into your husband. Xiao Yuan said, he can serve you. Princess Yongning said, Yongning is very happy with her personal servants and doesn't need one more person. He can protect you. The palace is safe day and night. Yongning doesn't need to be protected. He can talk with you. Princess Yongning smiled, if Yongning feels lonely, why can't I talk with imperial brother? Instead, I have to deal with someone I don't know. Xiao Yuan said with difficulty, in case I'm busy with politics, he'll have no time to accompany you. Princess Yongning blinked mischievously, then Yongning is willing to wait for Imperial Brother to find me when he's free. At that time, Imperial Brother will certainly talk with Yongning, right? Xiao Yuan breaks down and caresses his forehead, yes yes. For fuck's sake. Princess Yongning sweetly smiled and said, you are so nice, Imperial Brother. Nice my ass. The next day, Xiao Yuan said firmly to Princess Yongning, I still think you need a bodyguard. Princess Yongning's face showed grievance, why? Because Imperial Brother doesn't want to talk to Yongning anymore. Don't twist my words. You believe that just because you look sad, I will be soft-hearted and I want to arrange a bodyguard for you. Then Xiao Yuan became soft-hearted, and didn't mention the matter of the bodyguard for the whole day. On the third day, Xiao Yuan made psychological preparations beforehand and went straight to Yongning Palace. Princess Yongning was also very happy to see Xiao Yuan, Imperial Brother, I found a bodyguard. Xiao Yuan stared at her with wide eyes. What? So I don't need to know when you two ran into each other, so I'm not necessary for the plot to develop? They're genuinely worthy of being the male and female protagonists. 
Xiao Yuan felt that he was worrying for nothing. If you found him, then that's good. Xiao Yuan smiled like a father and nodded. But she's not a guard yet. Yongning wants to ask Imperial Brother to give her a position. Princess Yongning shook Xiao Yuan's hand. Xiao Yuan said kindly, I understand, I understand. Great, he'll let her see Imperial Brother. Princess Yongning said happily, and quickly sent her maid to bring someone. Xiao Yuan took a long breath. Ah, this seems like a strange illusion of marrying a daughter. As soon as Xiao Yuan finished this feeling, Princess Yongming brought a tiger with a wide back and a big waist. They were like two Xiao Yuan's wide bodies. A woman. This woman, who resembled Lu Zhishan Wan, was so embarrassed that she gave Xiao Yuan a polite gesture, this maidservant salutes his majesty. Xiao Yuan stumbled and asked Princess Yongming, this, this is the bodyguard you are looking for. Princess Yongming smiled, yes. Do you feel at ease? Yes. Can't refute. Yes, yes Xiao Yuan hesitated, she gives people the feeling that no, it's not like she would be able to protect you. Hearing Xiao Yuan's words, the woman suddenly exhorted, covered her face and began to cry, Your Majesty, this maidservant, this maidservant will do everything to protect the princess. I swear. Woo woo. Princess Yongming quickly patted her on the back, It's okay, Chuei'er don't cry, don't be aggrieved, Imperial brother just doesn't understand you. I don't understand. I really don't understand. Princess Yongming said, just show Imperial Brother that you can protect me, okay? Chuei wiped away her tears, nodded carefully, then reached for the porcelain cup on the table and easily crushed it with her bare hands. Crushed with her bare hands. Xiao Yuan was still immersed in shock. When Chuei ran out of the Yongming Palace, after finding a tree with thick branches, she embraced it with both arms. She then roared and suddenly uprooted it. Then she took another small step and shook it two or three times, weak willow's leaves were falling down. Princess Yongming, look imperial brother. She can serve me, right? Xiao Yuan, yes. And protect me. But. And talk to me. This. Princess Yongming finalized, okay, it's decided that she's the one. Xiao Yuan was very tired he put his head on the table and his hands fell on his sides. A lifeless look on his face, he couldn't even drink the delicate porridge in front of him. Hong Xiu asked anxiously, Your Majesty, what's wrong with you? Xiao Yuan replied weakly, The cold leaves are floating all over my face, and my daughter's rebellion hurts my heart. Hong Xiu was used to Xiao Yuan's amazing words for a while now. She bowed her head and asked, Is His Majesty's internal fire attacking him? is his heart burning? Should this servant arrange a little slave for his majesty to extinguish the fire? Xiao Yuan held his head with both hands, ah, poof. Hong Xiu advised, I know that his majesty is worried about the country and the people, and is now very obsessed with the government. But if this internal fire doesn't go away, it will also hurt your body. Xiao Yuan tried to change the topic, by the way, how has Yan Heqing been recently? Tomorrow I will forget it, you can call him over now. Xiao Yuan decided to forcibly follow the plot moving on its own, and let Yan Heqing and Princess Yongming meet by chance. If the two of them don't spark this time, he doesn't care. It doesn't matter. Suddenly, Hong Xiu screamed, Your Majesty, but, this maidservant thinks he's not ready yet. Xiao Yuan was puzzled, ah. Uh, what are you going to prepare him for? Hong Xiu froze, then saluted, this maidservant understands. After saying that, Hong Xiu immediately left. After Xiao Yuan finished the porridge, he waited at the left side of the imperial palace then he waited at the right, he waited until it was time to sleep. Suddenly, Hong Xiu reappeared, Your Majesty, it has been arranged properly. Xiao Yuan nodded and went back to the bedchamber with Hong Xiu. She didn't get inside and instead closed the door gently. Xiao Yuan didn't care too much, thinking that she wanted to give him and Yan Heqing some privacy. Anyway, he didn't expect the room to be without lighting, he couldn't see anything clearly. On top of that, the fragrant incense burner was sending out a sweet smell, which made Xiao Yuan feel kind of dizzy. 
Xiao Yuan felt strange and was about to call for Hong Xiu. But suddenly, he was struck by lightning and understood what was going on, quickly approaching the bed. After seeing the person lying on top of the bed, Xiao Yuan's back went cold and his knees trembled in fear, almost kneeling down. Chapter 25 Xiao Yuan first stumbled and backed away a few steps, but then he realized that he was mistaken. So he went back, glanced at the situation at the bed, took a deep breath of cold air, and backed away ten or so meters, turning around intending to escape. It was so silent around that even the sound of a needle dropping would be heard. Suddenly, a painfully sob came from the bed right toward Xiao Yuan's ears. Xiao Yuan abruptly stopped, meditated three times in his heart that escape would be shameful, then took a deep breath and ran back towards the bed. Yan Heqing was blindfolded by a black cloth, and his mouth was covered with cloth strips, his white clothes were open and his body was bound by hemp ropes. He struggled too hard and his naked skin was already crimson because of the ropes, even a little bit of blood could be seen. Xiao Yuan took off the cloth on Yan Heqing's eyes and mouth. Under it, Yan Heqing's eyes were bloodshot, but his lips were pale. Xiao Yuan was ready to be scolded and bitten. Unexpectedly, Yan Heqing didn't say a word, curled up and breathed heavily. Xiao Yuan reached out to untie Yan Heqing's robe on his body, but suddenly, he felt something was wrong. Yan Heqing's consciousness was extremely unclear, and he was left blank except for his empty eyes. His whole person was lying on the bed in a daze, without a trace of movement. Even when Xiao Yuan kept talking to him, it was like talking to a puppet, without any response. Yen, G1, why are you so stupid? The world will be depending on you to be saved. The rope was extremely fancy, and it could be described as bondage, but it was more like a preference. Xiao Yuan had never been exposed to these kinds of knots before. In a hurry, he was very confused, and for a while he wasn't untying anything instead he was making the knots more complicated. In a rage, Xiao Yuan pulled out a small part of the rope that was finally untied. Then after that, tied a bow knot. Xiao Yuan abandoned himself and cried out with a trembling voice, Hong Xiu. After several shouts, the candlelight flickered at the entrance of the bedroom, and Hong Xiu hurried in, kneeling beside the bed, Your Majesty, what happened? Xiao Yuan's brain was a mess. He didn't know where to start, he could only say, You, you, you first untie this rope for me. Suddenly, Hong Xiu seemed to realize what she had done wrong. Her face went pale, and she quickly got up to untie Yan Heqing's rope. Is he stupid? Xiao Yuan looked at Yan Heqing, who all this time didn't give any reaction, he suddenly felt that his internal organs were all mixed together. Hong Xiu untied the rope, and then knelt back to the ground again, answering to his majesty, for fear that he will rebel and hurt his majesty, this maidservant gave him the overpowering drug, he is not really stupid. As long as he takes the antidote, nothing will happen to him and he will only need to rest for one night. Xiao Yuan patted his chest and let out a long breath, where's the antidote? Hong Xiu took out a small porcelain bottle containing the antidote and handed it over. Xiao Yuan took over the white porcelain bottle, sat down beside the bed, reached for Yan Heqing, and fed him the antidote carefully. After drinking the antidote, Yan Heqing quickly fell into a deep sleep. Xiao Yuan pulled his clothes on and covered him with the quilt. After a long time of work, he turned around and found that Hong Xiu was still kneeling there. Xiao Yuan said, Don't kneel, get up. Hong Xiu doesn't obey, lowering her head, this maidservant begs his majesty to punish her. Xiao Yuan stretched out his hand and pulled up Hong Xiu. He said with a wry smile, Why the punishment? Hong Xiu knows that His Majesty dotes on this man ordered Hong Xiu to not touch him before, but this man is too dangerous. Hong Xiu couldn't help but send him to His Majesty's bedside. But now that His Majesty saw his injury, he can't bear to go any further. Wait. Xiao Yuan grabbed the keywords, injury, what injury? Hong Xiu answered stupefyingly, the whip wound on his back. Xiao Yuan inhaled and exhaled, then inhaled and exhaled again, and then turned over the cabinets. Hong Xiu was puzzled, what are you looking for, your majesty? Gold and silver, jewelry, 
expensive clothing and other valuable things. Why are you looking for these? Run away. No. No, we are not running away, we are going to, what is called, strategic shifting. Chapter, 26. Why your Ma Majesty, what's wrong with you? Why are you running away? Where are you going? Hong Xiu panicked and pulled Xiao Yuan who was running around. Xiao Yuan stopped and looked quietly at her soft hand. Yeah, where can he go? Xiao Yuan calmed his mind, stood up, and asked Hong Xiu, what have you done to him? Hong Xiu bites her lower lip and her hands were twisting in front of her belly, finally she bowed her head to answer, answering to his majesty. This maidservant wanted to teach him how to serve his majesty, but I haven't had the time to do so so I had to use the drug first. What about the whiplash? During the curfew, he wandered in Jingyang Palace without permission, so he was punished. Besides that? Nothing more. The situation seems to be saved. The main issue is how to solve the problem that Hong Xiu keeps wanting to send Yan Heqing to his bed every day. Xiao Yuan put his hand on his chin, walked back and forth, and after two rounds, stopped. He stood in front of Hong Xiu, pointed to Yan Heqing on the bed and with a serious tone, he said, Hong Xiu, do you think that I like him? Hong Xiu did not hesitate, you like him because he's handsome. Xiao Yuan turned and lifted the cabinet, then he put it down, then lifted it again, then put it down. When he calmed down, he turned around and shouted to Hong Xiu, I don't like him. Hong Xiu didn't understand, but his majesty thinks about him day and night. Xiao Yuan asked, think about it, do I like this type of appearance? Hong Xiu was stunned, silently thinking about it. His majesty really only likes the seductive, gorgeous type. Although Yan Heqing is so handsome to astonish nature, he's not what his majesty prefers. Hong Xiu asked in a small voice, then why is his majesty? Xiao Yuan pretends to be deep, winning hearts is better than violence one. In preparing for another southern expedition in the future. Hong Xiu was shocked, and enlightened, his majesty is wise. Xiao Yuan said, when you see me favor him, it's actually an illusion. I'm just spying on the enemy, so I'm not interested in him at all, and you don't have to bother to teach him anything. Hong Xiu salutes, this maidservant understands, this maidservant will take him away. Xiao Yuan glanced at Yan Heqing, who was sleeping on his bed, and couldn't bear it, so he blurted out, it's so late, forget it, let him sleep here tonight. Hong Xiu, your majesty you really don't. Xiao Yuan interrupts her firmly, really? No. Xiao Yuan talked a lot with Hong Xiu, he pointed towards the sky and the land around them, he vigorously shouted to observe the moon's reflection. This ability to talk made Hong Xiu turn from someone skeptical to firmly believing without a doubt. Xiao Yuan, who persuaded Hong Xiu to leave the palace and suffered various attacks and tortures in one night, could finally rest. Ah! Xiao Yuan sighed, sat beside the bed, leaned against the bedpost, and closed his eyes trying to sort out his thoughts quietly. After a long time, Xiao Yuan opened his eyes, rubbed his temples and turned his head to look at Yan Heqing. Suddenly, he felt a chill passing through his chest and his blood began to boil. Yan Heqing didn't know when he woke up, and his eyes were still bloodshot. At that moment, he glanced at Xiao Yuan with a fierce glare, cruel like a ghost. She said that you'll wake up after a good sleep. Fake medicine does harm to you. As a president as a president who was once asked to memorize tyrannical quotes, Xiao Yuan's mind thought of various sentences in an instant. Say, do you want cash or a check? Anyway, love, I definitely can't be without you. Don't worry, I will be responsible. One million is enough. Since you have caught my breath, you will be my man all your life, and you will never escape. Man, did you feel my deep love last night? President Xiao quickly searched through these golden sentences, and immediately made a final decision. He reached out his hand and pointed out at the window, his expression and his tone were calm, look. It's flying, cough, an airplane. That's right, Xiao Yuan was scared. While Yan Heqing was still in a daze, Xiao Yuan got up, took a step and exerted force. Just at the moment of his escape, his wrist was grabbed fiercely, 
making Xiao Yuan fall onto the bed in a mess. The next second, Xiao Yuan's neck was tightly held, and he could only scream four big words inside his head. My life is over. Chapter 27 Xiao Yuan was struggling to hold Yan Heqing's tight grip with one hand, until finally he was able to raise his hand tremblingly between the two of them. He gasped briefly and held out a finger, I want to say that I didn't touch you last night. Yan Heqing turned his hands and grabbed Xiao Yuan fiercely, his strength wasn't weak, I know that, although my consciousness was chaotic, I have memories. Xiao Yuan felt relieved and began to struggle, cough if you cough have something to say, let's talk about it first. Yan Heqing. You're strangling me now, have you thought about how you will escape after this? Yan Heqing's eyes were shining with cold light, and his black hair covered his face. With a sad smile he said, escape. Where can I escape? To my destroyed country, to my dead family. Succumbed by the abuse of authority, I was taken away home, and now we will die, jade and stone burn together one. Even if my body is torn apart, limb for limb by five horses too. I will not regret it. Xiao Yuan understood that Yan Heqing hadn't listened to what he said to him before in Jingyang Palace. I said that I will not harm you. But you want to die with me, give me a break. Yan Heqing, you're too ruthless, you're cruel, and you make trouble for no reason. Xiao Yuan could already feel suffocation and pain, and even his eyes began to see black. He was trying his best to get Yan Heqing's hands away from his neck. Until in the gap between panting, Xiao Yuan shouted, Yan Heqing, I will not harm you. Yan Heqing sneered, You and I are enemies, why would you? Xiao Yuan roared and interrupted him, Because I'm not the emperor of the northern kingdom. The fierce strength on his neck relaxed. Xiao Yuan, relying on his desire for survival and in his experience in self defense, turned over and lifted Yan Heqing away from his body, he quickly pulled back Yan Heqing's hands put his knees against his waist, and tried to clamp him down. Xiao Yuan instinctively restrained Yan Heqing, but the emperor's body was weak so Xiao Yuan failed to grasp Yan Heqing's hands, allowing him to break free. Yan Heqing was naturally not willing to let him go, so he turned around and twisted Xiao Yuan's arms to his back. Seeing that they were entangled together, Xiao Yuan hurriedly shouted, Stop stop stop! Right at that time, they both relaxed their strength, each occupying a corner of the bed. Xiao Yuan covered his neck, panting, there were only ten. Zero 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 MMP three sentences left in his heart. He eased his mind and repeated, I'm really not the emperor of the northern kingdom. Yan Heqing's eyes were dark and gloomy, finding it hard to believe in him. Because he was strangled, Xiao Yuan's voice was hoarse and his words were intermittent, I know that the jade hairpin is your mother's relic and I can testify. Yan Heqing asked in a deep voice, Who are you then? Xiao Yuan thought for a while, I'm your daddy's friend. Your father is equal to the author. This is what Xiao Yuan came with at the end. Yan Heqing frowned, Daddy? Xiao Yuan, yes. I was almost strangled to death, why can't I take advantage of this? Yan Heqing asked, What is a daddy for? Xiao Yuan was powerless, the mysterious power from the modern civilization. Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan rubbed his neck, I know what else you want to ask me, how did you pretend to be the emperor of the northern kingdom? You may think I'm crazy or I'm being stupid, playing the devil, but I'm telling you the truth. I died in my last life, and then I became the emperor as soon as I opened my eyes. I can't help it, but I'm not really him. Yan Heqing stared at Xiao Yuan's face as if he wanted to see right through him. Both of them looked at each other for a long time, Yan Heqing's eyes showed a hard-to-detect flash of coldness, like sharp ice, a sharp blade, under this cold light, you could feel a terrifying murderous intent. Xiao Yuan felt like his heart was being strangled. Every bone in his body was trembling with fear, chills was running through his spine, swimming amongst his four limbs. Yan Heqing doesn't believe him. I think that, in this case, how can a weak excuse be convincing? Looks like I have to think of another strategy. Almost at the same time, the two acted together. Xiao Yuan jumped out of the bed but was instantly grabbed. He was pulled back, 
with huge force from top to bottom, Xiao Yuan's shoulder was held down and his back hit heavily on the bed. The bed board made a deafening noise. Xiao Yuan took a deep breath and his eyes were full of pain. Yan Heqin went again for Xiao Yuan's throat mercilessly. Xiao Yuan's eyes twitched quickly, he held Yan Heqin's wrist and twisted with force. Yan Heqin frowned with pain, his hands went loose and his knee hit Xiao Yuan's lower abdomen. The lower abdomen wasn't protected by bones and was the most vulnerable part of the human body, so Yan Heqin used all his strength. Xiao Yuan's neck was tender and weak, and the corner of his mouth was bleeding, shaking with pain, he suddenly realized something. Yan Heqin really wants to kill me. If I don't think of a way out, I will die here. Chapter 28 Inside his heart, Xiao Yuan shouted the nationwide cursed words commonly used one back and forth, repeatedly shouting them a hundred times, then he went to protect his abdomen with one hand and punched Yan Heqin with his other hand clenched into a fist. Yan Heqin was able to avoid this punch, and when he turned around to suppress Xiao Yuan one more time, a knock came from outside the bedchamber. Yang Liuan's voice immediately sounded, What's wrong, your majesty? Wei Chen heard a loud noise. Yan Heqing's eyes shrank, feeling panicked inside his heart. He quickly reached out and tried to cover Xiao Yuan's mouth. I don't. Xiao Yuan just shouted a word, and the rest of them were silenced by the palm of Yan Heqing. Your majesty. Emperor. Are you okay? The knocking sounds and Yan Heqing's breath started to get hurried. Yan Heqing knew that if the Imperial Guards came here at this time, not only he wouldn't be able to kill the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom, but he would also die without a burial place. Yan Heqing covered Xiao Yuan's mouth tightly with one hand, and stuck his other hand on Xiao Yuan's throat once more. Naturally, Xiao Yuan will not let himself be slaughtered. Taking advantage of Yan Heqing's panic, he fiercely bit down trying to break free from the hand covering his mouth. Outside the bedroom, there was constant knocking at the door. Yang Liuan said anxiously, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, if you don't reply, Wei Chen will come in. Yan Heqing's hand was bitten by Xiao Yuan and blood started to flow. He couldn't take any actions under pain and the whole situation seemed settled. Yan Heqing closed his eyes in despair. A squeaking noise came from outside the door, and right at the same time, Xiao Yuan yanked away Yan Heqing's hand, unable to even catch his breath, and shouted loudly, Don't come in. For a moment the world went silent, and the door that was being opened, closed again. Yang Liuan's uneasy voice came from outside the bedchamber, What happened to your voice, your majesty? Are you really fine? Yan Heqing was speechless, staring blankly at Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan coughed a few times, and then shouted with all his strength, I'm fine, nothing serious happened, you can go and keep guarding the door. And no matter what you hear, don't come in. Yes, he'll obey his majesty's order when the door was closed, everything went silent once more. After those few words, Xiao Yuan had lost all his strength. He covered his lower abdomen and curled up on the bed like an useless man. Yan Heqin was no longer in danger. He mumbled for a long time and finally asked with disbelief, why? Xiao Yuan opened his eyes and wanted to look at Yan Heqing, but his eyes were dazzled, unable to focus, I said, I'm not the emperor of the northern kingdom. If I really wanted you to die, then I would have given the order the first time I met you in the prison, and you would already be dead by now. Since I didn't do it that time, then I won't have that idea anymore. Yan Heqing lowered his eyelashes gently, not knowing what to think. Xiao Yuan made a swear gesture, his eyes were serious and his expression was solemn, Yan Heqing, I'm swearing an oath to the heavens and the earth's conscience that I didn't lie to you just now, and I will not hurt you in the future, no matter what. Yan Heqing raised his head to look at Xiao Yuan, his whole being was still on alert. They both looked at each other for a few seconds, but Yan Heqing didn't mean to relax at all. Xiao Yuan feeling discouraged, pulled up the quilt, covered himself and laid down closing his eyes. Yan Heqing asked incredulously, What are you doing? Sleeping. Xiao Yuan wrapped tightly inside the quilt felt pain all over his body, his throat seemed to have been burned by fire, it was hoarse, dry, it felt painful and inflamed, 
I believe I said everything that needed to be said, even if you believe me or not. And if you want to strangle me, you should do it now. Anyways, I already died once, what's so scary about dying a second time? After that, there was no sound behind him. Xiao Yuan was really exhausted, and now he could finally rest and sleep. After what felt like a century, Xiao Yuan was finally falling asleep, but then he felt that the person behind him was lying down slowly. Xiao Yuan gave him half of the quilt by instinct. A long awkward silence followed, but in the end, Yan Hikyuenji took the quilt and wrapped his body. Xiao Yuan woke up a little bit and muttered in a low voice, I know you can't fully believe in what I said. It doesn't matter. I will be by your side for a long time, anyways, I'm yours. After a pause, the wording felt wrong, so Xiao Yuan added, I'm the one that will help you, by the way, are you still willing to stay in Jingyang Palace? Yan Heqing mocked himself and asked, Where else can I go? Xiao Yuan chuckled, I also have nowhere to go, why not stay by each other's side? Then, after a night without sound, they slept till dawn. Chapter 29 When Xiao Yuan woke up the next day, immediately he wanted to die. Not to mention that the muscles all over his body were sore, just the pain in his abdomen, back and throat was enough for Xiao Yuan to feel that way. Xiao Yuan rubbed his neck and groaned. His voice was like a board of wood dragging on the sand, it was hoarse and unpleasant. He stretched out his hands and opened his clothes. His abdomen was bruised, there were black and purple spots all over, it was truly a shocking sight. Hearing noise, Yan Heqing gradually woke up, and after seeing Xiao Yuan's appearance, his eyes flashed with a trace of feeling at a loss. We both fought each other, aren't you hurt too? Xiao Yuan felt indignant. Do I have a strangled bruise on my neck? Yan Heqing nodded his head. Xiao Yuan sighed, what can I do? If him seen like this, they will definitely wonder what happened, they will blame you. Even though Xiao Yuan was harmed by Yan Heqing, he still thought about his safety. Yan Heqing was surprised. Well, it's winter, so it's normal to wear a lot of clothing. It should be fine to just cover it. Xiao Yuan muttered to himself, and he didn't realize that Yan Heqing's eyes had changed. Right. Xiao Yuan propped himself up and looked at Yan Heqing, is your hand all right? Yan Heqing didn't understand, hand? Xiao Yuan held Yan Heqing's wrist and pulled it closer to his eyes. The place he bit yesterday was no longer bleeding, only the deep tooth marks were left behind. Don't leave any scars on these hands. He must be in harmony with Princess Yongning. And he must be praised for his good looks by his wives. Ouch, to be honest, his hands are really beautiful. They're slender, white and have a clear bone structure. Xiao Yuan was watching it attentively. Yan Heqing suddenly withdrew his hand, frowning slightly, his expression was awkward. Ah Xiao Yuan went stunned for an instant, then he rubbed his neck and smiled, don't worry, I'm not an homosexual like the emperor. Probably, maybe, I shouldn't be, I don't know. Yan Heqing opened his lips slightly, glanced at Xiao Yuan, and seemed like he wanted to explain something, but at the end he didn't say anything. The sky was faintly light with the dawn, and a knock sounded at the imperial bedchamber door. It was Hong Xiao, Your Majesty, this maidservant is waiting to help you wash, and get ready for the day. Xiao Yuan quickly pulled up the quilt and wrapped it in a circle to cover up his neck and the rest of his body. Hong Xiao walked in with a red basin, when she saw Xiao Yuan's appearance, she instantly looked at the messy bed, and could not help but be dumbfounded. Fearing that she might suspect something inappropriate, Xiao Yuan said, Hong Xiao, take Yan Heqing back to Jingyang Palace first. Hong Xiao put down the basin, stuttering, Il O obey His Majesty's order. Seeing that the two of them had left, Xiao Yuan breathed cold air to ease the pain. While looking for a piece of clothing that could cover his neck, he washed himself and got dressed. When Hong Xiao came back, she helped Xiao Yuan put on his robe, and seemed like she wanted to say something but stopped herself. Xiao Yuan felt nervous, what's wrong? Hong Xiao tied his belt for him, her lips were pressed in a tight line, suddenly she raised her eyes and said, Your Majesty. I know everything. What do you know? I don't understand. 
speak clearly. Hong Xiao was angered to heart, since you don't have that kind of feelings for him, he forced himself onto you. Xiao Yuan patted his chest and eased his breath, feeling that yesterday's internal injury was now instantly attacking him. Forget it, it's better to be misunderstood about such things rather than explain them. I was afraid that Yan Heqing's attempt of assassination was found out. Xiao Yuan clenched his fist against his lips and coughed softly, cough, it wasn't forced. It's just that last night, the moonlight was very bright, and we both slept in the same bed. I wasn't careful enough it was an accident, and is only part of my plan. I'm really not interested in him. Hong Xiao was sad and indignant, Your Majesty, you've never been on the receiving side. In order to attack the southern Yan kingdom, Your Majesty, you had to sacrifice a lot, this, this, this is disgraceful. Xiao Yuan was twitching the corner of his eyes with that sad cry of hers. Hong Xiao was still softly crying in despair, Your Majesty, this maidservant will go get you some ointment. Xiao Yuan was puzzled, why the ointment? Hong Xiao bowed her head, it's applied there. Xiao Yuan still didn't understand, what? Where? Hong Xiao stomped anxiously, that place. Xiao Yuan suddenly realized what she meant and asked for the heaven's help without words, the ointment is no longer needed, is there any throat medicine emmy throat really hurts. Seeing that Hong Xiao got up and was going towards the Tai Palace, Xiao Yuan added, and then take some ointment for wounds healing and scar removal to Yan Heqing. Hong Xiao felt uncertainty, ointment for wound healing and scar removal. Well, I accidentally bit him yesterday. Your Majesty, Yo. I really don't like him, don't look at me like that. In the fifth year of serving the young monarch, Hong Xiao suddenly discovered that the emperor's mouth was saying no, but in his heart he meant yes one. Chapter, 30 Xiao Yuan's wounds lasted for several days, and only after the strangled bruises faded away, did he dare to go outside. On the second day, he dealt with the affairs of the state and because he was worried that someone would make things difficult for Yan Hichin, Xiao Yuan got distracted while looking at the palace memorials one. He simply piled the memorials and went straight to Jing Yang Palace. Hong Xiao wanted to stop him, but Xiao Yuan ignored her. The year was going to dawn, and the time is fainting. The wind was cold and the clouds were heavy. The snowflakes fell one after another, floating amicably, covering the white ground. The snow in the northern kingdom seemed to be falling forever. Xiao Yuan tightened his robe, patted the snow off his shoulders, and reached to knock on Yan Heqing's door. Following Xiao Yuan with diligence, Yang Liuan clenched his fists and said, Your Majesty, Wei Chen will wait for you outside the door. Xiao Yuan refused, it's too cold, go back. Yang Liuan insisted, Wei Chen doesn't feel cold. Xiao Yuan grabbed a snowball and stuffed it into Yang Liuan's clothes, is it cold or not? Yang Liuan shivered, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not cold. You're shivering and yet you say you're not cold. Xiao Yuan didn't know wherever to laugh or cry, go find a warm place to dry your clothes, and then, come back in an hour. Although Yang Liuan was still hesitant, he had to obey his majesty's order under Xiao Yuan's insistence. The north wind was howling, and his clothes were wet because of the snow. Yang Liuan stealthily found a small courtyard where willow's trees were planted inside the Jing Yang Palace. When he saw no one around, he knocked gently at the door. Who is it? A doubtful voice came from behind the door, not long after, the door was slightly opened. Yang Liuan looked at Xiao Fengyue, who was extremely joyful, and sweetly smiled, it's me. You. You're all wet, come in quickly. Xiao Fengyue hurriedly pulled him inside the room, heated the charcoal basin, put it in front of Yang Liuan, and went to find some dry clothes. Quick, remove your wet clothes first, and put these on. Yes. Yang Liuan took off his robe and handed it to Xiao Fengyue. Let's change your inner garments too, it's all wet. Be careful with the wind and the cold. Xiao Fengyue said worriedly, his eyes full of distress. Yang Liuan's face showed a blush that was hard to see, the inner garments, I it doesn't matter, don't worry. Xiao Fengyue suddenly realized what was going on. He lowered his head to make his expression unclear, but
but his earlobes were already painted red. Xiao Fengyue stammered and said, Why you go change your clothes? They'll go to the yard to sweep the snow, go change. Don't, don't go outside, it's too cold. Yang Liuan reached out and held Xiao Fengyue's hand. Xiao Fengyue's tone was worried, No, if you stay in your wet clothes you will get cold. Yang Liuan holds his hand tighter, Bill change, Bill go change my clothes. Just don't go outside. With that said, Yang Liuan quickly untied his undergarments and hurriedly changed into a set of dry clothes. Xiao Fengyue took the wet clothes and put them to dry by the charcoal fire, What happened today? Don't you have to guard His Majesty? Yang Liuan replied, His Majesty came to Jingyang Palace, looking for Yan Heqin. Hearing this, Xiao Fengyue suddenly sighed. Yang Liuan was curious, what's wrong? Xiao Fengyue explained, earlier, I heard some rumors about chasing the wind and clutching its shadows too, saying that His Majesty was favoring only one person recently, but I didn't expect it to be the prince of the southern Yan kingdom. Yang Liuan nervously covered Xiao Fengyue's hand and held it carefully, are you feeling homesick? Xiao Fengyue felt like a spring breeze inside his heart, and he smiled gently at Yang Liuan, although the southern Yan kingdom is my hometown, I was alone in the world. I don't have much to miss from there, but now. These days, feeling lovesick, exquisite red beans, it can't be a home without you. Xiao Fengyue stopped for a while, and looked down at the charcoal pot with little sparks coming out from the fire. Yang Liuan didn't notice the difference, and asked reluctantly, Why are you sighing? Xiao Fengyue sorted out his thoughts and raised his head to answer, I'm afraid that the prince of the southern Yan kingdom will become the target of everyone here. Yang Liuan didn't understand, huh? For what reason? Xiao Fengyue carefully spread out Yang Liuan's wet clothes so it would dry better, and then replied, it's never a happy event to be the only one to have His Imperial Majesty's favor. In this Jingyang Palace, there are too many people doing painstaking efforts to obtain accomplishments. It's also full of clever people. Xiao Yuan was also worried about this issue, did anyone try to harm you recently? Yan Heqing shook his head. How about Hong Xiu, did she do something? And the House of Internal Affairs? What about Eunuch Xiao? Yan Heqing still denied with his head. Xiao Yuan patted his chest and let out a long breath. It seems that the skills of the villains are cooling down. Seeing Xiao Yuan carefree attitude, Yan Heqing frowned, Why do you want to help me? Although you're not the emperor, you can still use this identity to call the wind and summon the rain three, and cover the sky with one hand four, right? Xiao Yuan raised an eyebrow. Does Yan Heqing believe him? But how can I dare to call the wind and the rain? You're the male lead, you should be the one making the call. You can claim the northern kingdom, and make it disappear. Call it. Xiao Yuan chuckled, there's no reason, I just want to be friends with you. Yan Heqing said, friend? Xiao Yuan said, when a true man conducts himself in a society, he should become the hero of the whole world. Yan Heqing's eyes went on alert, but remained silent. Xiao Yuan was too lazy to explain it to him, so he moved the stool near the charcoal basin, looked out the window at the howling snow, and rubbed his hands turning his palms to warm himself. Yan Heqing looked at his actions and said, Are you afraid of the cold? Xiao Yuan was stunned at first, and then replied, Ah. Ah ha. I was a southerner in my past life, so I'm indeed afraid of the cold. Yan Heqing asked again, What was your name during your past life? Xiao Yuan filled a porcelain cup with water and with it, wrote his name on top of the round yellow table. Yan Heqing murmured out, Xiao, Yu, An. Yes, when there's no one around, you can just call me by my name. Xiao Yuan smiled slightly, and the red light of the charcoal basin illuminated his white porcelain face, his eyes were bright and shiny, very indistinct. Yan Heqing wasn't convinced, but after a long time watching him, he finally agreed, fine. An hour later, Yang Liuan's clothes were finally dried. After he changed into his inner clothes, Xiao Fengyue carefully helped him put on his robe, fastened his belt and tidied up his lapel. The two of them looked at each other for a long time, until Yang Liuan finally closed his eyes, in going back to pick up the emperor. 
Xiao Fengyue looked out of the window with anxiety, the snow is so heavy, would you like an umbrella? Yang Liuan shook his head, got up and walked out of the door, no, I'm worried that someone will get suspicious. Xiao Fengyue bit his lower lip and didn't insist. Yang Liuan just opened the door when the wind and snow suddenly blew inside. Xiao Fengyue then remembered something and he pulled back Yang Liuan, took out a sachet from his sleeve, and handed it to him. This is. Yang Liuan took the sachet with surprise. Xiao Fengyue said, you can't take the umbrella to protect you, but you can always take this sachet and hide it close to you, right? Yang Liuan rubbed his head and smiled happily and embarrassedly, yes, thank you. I will protect it well. Xiao Fengyue lowered his head and said, go ahead, don't let his majesty wait. Yang Liuan closed the door for Xiao Fengyue, carefully placed the sachet inside his inner clothing, and hurriedly walked away holding onto his robe tightly. The frozen wind was howling all around, the snow falling was so thick that it could cover the ears and make the eyes blind. The whole world seemed to be covered in white, and neither of them were able to see that behind the willow's trees planted in the courtyard, stood a person watching them secretly. Qin Yu observed the silhouette of Yan Liuan hurrying away, and then took a look at the closed door of Xiao Fengyue. He murmured strange words, and then smiled mischievously, a trace of cunning shining in his eyes. Chapter 31 Xiao Yuan, returning to the Imperial Palace from Jingyang Palace, felt anxious all over. He was worried that a cannon fodder villain would make a move, and because of that, he wanted to look after Yan Heqin. Therefore, he asked Guard Yang, an excellent and efficient bodyguard, to guard Jingyang Palace every day, fearing that accidents might happen. Less than a week later, something really did happen. Xiao Yuan was having a meal at that time, but upon hearing Yang Liuan's report, he instantly rushed to Jingyang Palace as soon as he put the bowl down. This matter wasn't big, but it wasn't a small issue either. A male concubine said that he saw Yan Heqing practicing the sword in the courtyard, and then went to the headmaster of Jingyang Palace, Hong Xiu, to report it. Jingyang Palace had many rules and regulations, and practicing sword and martial arts has always been a taboo subject. First of all, the emperor likes the soft and beautiful male concubines that know their place, which is to serve him in bed. Practicing the sword, with his identity being the prince of the southern Yan kingdom, Xiao Yuan is afraid that it will look like he wants to stab him to death. At this time, Yan Heqing and the male concubine that reported him were in the courtyard, kneeling in front of Jingyang Palace's headmaster. Hong Xiao was looking at them with complicated eyes and a hesitant expression. Several slaves were secretly exchanging glances, all of them wanting to watch the drama that will unfold. According to Hong Xiao's past temperament, if this matter resulted to be true, then what awaited Yang Heqing wasn't just physical pain, but a broken hand or a disabled foot. However, a few days ago, Xiao Yuan repeatedly told her about his plan on how winning Yan Heqing's heart was better than resorting to violence. In fact, Hong Xiao didn't want to be hard on Yan Heqing, even if she planned on punishing him with a whiplash. But things became complicated because the male concubine that made the report was known for having a loose tongue, since he's extremely fond of gossiping. Before Hong Xiao knew about the situation, the news of Yan Heqing secretly practicing the sword had spread throughout the whole Jingyang Palace. If the punishment consisted in a single whip lash, the authority of Hong Xiao will be questioned, it will look like she's protecting Yan Heqing so he can kill the emperor in the near future. Hong Xiao's eyes went back and forth between the two kneeling men on the ground. Finally, she stared at the male concubine, you said that Yan Heqing was secretly practicing the sword, but, do you have any evidence? The male concubine raised his head eagerly and said without hesitation, this slave couldn't sleep at night that day, so I got up early in the morning to enjoy the snow. Unexpectedly, I happened to see him practicing sword techniques. I'm aware that I shouldn't speak without evidence, so the next day I called Qin Yu and the others to go with me secretly. As expected, he was practicing the sword again. Hong Xiao had a headache, and his name was Qin Yu. At that moment, Qin Yu knelt on the ground, he softened his voice and smiled mischievously, Hong Xiao, Jiejie Wan, I can testify that everything that was said truly happened. Besides, what is his purpose of practicing the sword these days, if not to harm his majesty? 
Hong Xiao nodded and summoned the other male concubines involved, and as expected, every single one of them said the same thing. Public opinion is powerful enough to melt metal too, the defamation could destroy a man three. Yan Heqing was speechless. Hong Xiao then looked at Yan Heqing. When she saw the indifference and lack of fear in him, she asked, don't you have anything to say? Yan Heqing looked forward, his answer was complete silence. The several male concubines kneeling on the ground exchanged gazes, a hidden smile adorning the corner of their mouths. Well then. Hong Xiao nodded, someone sent him to. Before she could finish her command, a panicked slave ran inside the courtyard, His Majesty is coming. As soon as Xiao Yuan stepped into the courtyard, everyone present fell to their knees trembling. Xiao Yuan instantly looked at Yan Heqing, and breathed a sigh of relief. Why are you kneeling again? If you kneel one more time, you will take ten years away from his life. Get up, all of you get up. Xiao Yuan raised his hand. Hong Xiao stood up and saluted Xiao Yuan, Your Majesty, about this. Yang Liuan told me everything. Xiao Yuan nodded, turned around and walked towards Yan Heqing, smiling amicably he asked him, Are you really practicing the sword? Yan Heqing hadn't answered yet when he was interrupted by the male concubine who reported him, Your Majesty. It's true, if you don't believe me, you can ask. All of a sudden, the male concubine was slapped by Hong Xiao, silencing him immediately. Xiao Yuan waited patiently for Yan Heqing's answer. Yan Heqing looked at him with eyes as calm as a lake, and nodded slowly. Chapter 32 Seeing that Yan Heqing didn't hide and confessed, the courtyard suddenly buzzed in excitement everyone was surprised, amazed and secretly happy about it. Ah! Xiao Yuan was surprised, where do you practice the sword when your wing room is so small? Yan Heqing replied, in the courtyard. Xiao Yuan said, the courtyard is also quite small, did you cut down the trees so you will have more space? These two questions were really weird. The group of people around the courtyard couldn't understand what was going on. Yan Heqing was also stunned for a little bit before nodding affirmatively. Hong Xiao. Xiao Yuan waved at her. This maidservant is here. Hong Xiao immediately saluted him. This is too much. I can't bear it, I truly can't bear it. Xiao Yuan was bitter and gritted his teeth in anger. Your Majesty, calm your anger, this maidservant understands. Hong Xiao quickly appeased Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan took a deep breath and calmed down, before he continued, if he wants to practice the sword, then he will practice the sword, but how can he cut down a tree? The earth is my home, and the greening depends on everyone. The potable water and the green mountains are invaluable assets. You will change him into a bigger courtyard. So he can no longer cut down the trees. Hong Xiao was stupefied, ah. Uh. The rest of the people were confused as well, ah. Uh. Xiao Yuan, who was pretending to be as confused as everyone else, ah. Uh. Accompanying one's sovereign can be like accompanying a tiger one. As a maidservant that has been with him for five years, she understood the meaning behind Xiao Yuan's words in time, Your Majesty, you want me to change him into a bigger courtyard where he can peacefully practice the sword? Yes. Xiao Yuan nodded happily. Although this order was contradicting the past one, the emperor's commands were as high as the heavens, Hong Xiao suppressed her thoughts, and saluted in response, I will do as his majesty wishes. Ignoring the group of people inside the courtyard that were speechless and dumbfounded, Xiao Yuan believing the problem has been solved, returned to continue his meal. After all, he came here in such a rush, he didn't have the time to fill his stomach. Xiao Yuan raised his foot and took a few steps, but suddenly turned around after remembering something, walked back to Yan Heqing's side and asked him strangely, What kind of sword do you have? Yan Heqing replied, A long wooden stick. Xiao Yuan bowed his head and thought for a few moments, whispering to Yan Heqing, I will come to see you tomorrow morning. There's something important I need to show you. Yan Heqing nodded, expressing that he heard him. Xiao Yuan exchanged glances with Hong Xiao, and left feeling at ease. Seeing the emperor leaving, Hong Xiao exhaled a slow breath, and then glanced at the audience, all of you, go back to your duties. 
the male concubine that spread the gossip was reluctant and wanted to argue against it. Qin Yu grabbed his sleeve and pulled him back, he laughed in anger and lowered his voice, didn't you hear his majesty? What else do you want to say? Have you lost your mind? The male concubine was dissatisfied, but... Qin Yu looked at him coldly, I'm kind enough to save you, restrain yourself. After talking, Qin Yu went away indifferently. Huh, you still believe you're his majesty's favorite? Sooner or later you will be killed by someone that holds a grudge against you. The male concubine muttered in a low voice. In this grand palace, rumors spread like wildfire. And just like that, half a day later, one person whispered to another ten, then ten people passed the news to a hundred. Before long, everyone knew about how the prince of the southern Yen kingdom had the unique favor of the emperor. When steward Fong heard about this, he immediately went to inform eunuch Zhao. Eunuch Zhao made a meaningful sound, and said no more. Steward Fong wondered, eunuch Zhao, aren't you worried? Don't worry, since he's willing to become a male concubine, he's now a dog that broke his spine too. There's nothing to be afraid of. I told you that the maidservant Hong Xiao had her ways. Eunuch Xiao replied leisurely. At this time, Hong Xiao was worried, Your Majesty, although I know that you're working in the strategy of winning his heart, I'm still worried that if you continue to indulge Yan Heqin with practicing the sword, he will hurt his Majesty sooner or later. In case he has any murderous intention, what should I do? Xiao Yuan, who was almost strangled to death by Yan Heqin, said, Don't worry about it. I have everything in control. By the way, this morning I'll go to Jing Yang Palace. So don't send any imperial guards to follow me. Hong Xiao doesn't need to ask who Xiao Yuan was looking for, is bodyguard Yang not going with you? Xiao Yuan, no, I'll go by myself. Hong Xiao tried to persuade him, but your majesty. In case. Everything will be alright. Xiao Yuan soothes Hong Xiao with a soft voice. Xiao Yuan's perseverance made Hong Xiao speechless. After breakfast, Xiao Yuan went to Jing Yang Palace alone. Hong Xiao was always very hardworking after what happened just the day before, Yan Heqin was moved to his new wing room today. In the early winter morning, the warm sun melts the snow. Probably because it was too early in the morning, the Jing Yang Palace was really quiet. Xiao Yuan, worrying about whether it was too early, knocked on Yan Heqin's door regardless. After a short moment, the door was opened. From top to bottom, he was covered in a white warm light. Yan Heqin's eyebrows were sharp like swords, and his eyes were calm as the water, his black clothes were neatly tied making him look extremely handsome. Xiao Yuan smiled at him lightly, put on a robe, I will take you somewhere. Chapter 33 they weren't followed, and they didn't take the imperial carriage with them. They both walked slowly from the east to the west of the palace, from the early morning to noon, until finally, Xiao Yuan stopped. Yan Heqin raised his head and moved forward. There was smoke and fire, and the delicious smell of food was flowing all over the place. Outside this place, adorning the plaque, there were two words, Imperial Kitchen. Yan Heqin was confused and asked, This is the place. Xiao Yuan had a harmless smile on his face, to tell you the truth, I'm lost. Don't look at me like that, I'm not familiar with the palace. Yesterday I asked about the route, but in the end, the palace is too big and the courtyard corridors are too similar. I lost my way while walking. Xiao Yuan lifted his hands innocently. Yan Heqin stared at him and started to feel a headache, then why did you stop walking? Xiao Yuan rubbed his stomach and let out a long sigh, I'm hungry. I remembered that the imperial kitchen was near here, so I came over. Yan Heqin's eyes flickered with helplessness, then go and take something to eat, wait, what are you doing? Xiao Yuan took a piece of silk cloth out of nowhere, covered half of his face, and tied a knot at the back of his head, it'll camouflage my identity, to avoid a ruckus, and then we'll find someplace and fill our stomachs. If the emperor goes and steals food from the imperial kitchen, won't that stir up a ruckus? Xiao Yuan handed a piece of silk cloth to Yan Heqin. Immediately after, he moved quickly, hiding himself against the foot of the wall. Although Yan Heqin was hesitant with this plan, finally, 
he covered half his face and followed Xiao Yuan to the edge of the wall in the backyard. At this moment, Xiao Yuan found himself in a complicated situation. After all, in the 21st century, he was the president of a company and had no chance to practice any of this. I can't climb up. Xiao Yuan turned towards Yan Heqing for help. Yan Heqing raised his head and looked at the edge of the wall. He backed away a few steps, then he ran at high speed and tapped the wall with his toes. He turned up with the help of his strength, moving the clouds and flowing the water one. Xiao Yuan sighed again and again inside his heart, he just can't help but applaud with excitement. He's really worthy of being the male lead, he looks so handsome while jumping over a wall. Yan Heqin grabbed the brim of the wall and wanted to pull Xiao Yuan over, but he saw that Xiao Yuan was walking forward silently, then he opened the small wooden door in the backyard and walked in leisurely. Yan Heqin asked, did you know the door was unlocked? Xiao Yuan replied, yes I knew. When I came by the wall, I saw that the wooden door was unlocked. Yan Heqin asked with complicated feelings, then why did you want to climb the wall? Xiao Yuan said with a gentle smile, because it gives kind of a sneaky feeling climbing over the wall, which is more in line with what we're about to do. Yan Heqing could not bear it, he grabbed the back of Xiao Yuan's neck and said with a cold voice, I'll see you on the road to the Yellow Springs too. Fight after eating your fill, fight after eating your fill. Xiao Yuan wailed a few times, broke free from his tight grip, and then shrank back. Yan Heqing glanced at him, and then turned around towards the kitchen. It was noon, and the imperial kitchen was extremely busy, there were people everywhere. The two of them made a quiet turn, and finally found a tranquil hut besides the firewood room. This hut was surely used by the slaves to have their meals, it was simple, small, clean and desolate. At this time, the servants were very busy, so it was completely empty. Xiao Yuan walked in and pulled out two white steamed buns from the pot, he held one for himself, and handed the other to Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing took the steamed bun silently and chewed it up without hesitation. It doesn't have meat Xiao Yuan mumbled and started to search through the cupboard. Yan Heqing stood aside and watched how Xiao Yuan was making a mess by tossing and turning around things looking for something. His ears were listening sharply, suddenly, he heard some movement outside. After Xiao Yuan searched through the cupboard, he searched in the furnace. Yan Heqing watched him become disheartened, and for a moment he was about to say something, but ended up staying silent. Ah, there's roasted sweet potatoes. Xiao Yuan, as if he had won the most valuable treasure, carried the sweet potato with ashes in his arms and turned his head to ask Yan Heqing for help. However, Yan Heqing's eyes suddenly became alert and rushed over, he grabbed Xiao Yuan's collar and threw him out of the window, quickly closing it after that. Xiao Yuan rolled on the ground twice, falling into a daze he saw the sky turning upside down. He then heard a girl screaming, Ah! Someone help! There's a thief! Yan Heqin landed lightly on the ground. He stepped forward, picked up Xiao Yuan who was still rubbing his head, and flew away with his light tiptoes. The speed was astonishing fast, and after a while, they easily escaped. After confirming that no one was following them, Yan Heqing put Xiao Yuan down. Xiao Yuan quickly looked down and let out a long breath. The sweet potatoes were still safe and secure in his arms, they were not lost. Xiao Yuan rubbed his sore arm and handed Yan Heqing a piece of roasted sweet potato, patiently discussing with him, actually, I'm very fast when I have to escape through a window. Seriously, can you inform me beforehand the next time? when we see ourselves facing the same situation? Stealing food from the imperial kitchen, there will be a next time. Yan Heqing smirked and took the sweet potato without answering him. After filling his stomach with sweet potatoes, Xiao Yuan looked around. There were no halls or dormitories around. The only thing he could see was gardens, no guards patrolling, it looked extremely lonely, unlike the inside of the palace. Xiao Yuan cleared his throat, turned his head to Yan Heqing and smiled, I seem to be. Ask for directions. Yan Heqing interrupted him in a terrifying manner. Xiao Yuan obediently turned around to find someone. This place was too wide, they walked around in circles until finally they met with an imperial guard. 
the Imperial Guard also came here to take a nap. When he saw them, he panicked and immediately tried to avoid their escape. The two of them thought something was wrong, he waved his sword and ran towards them shouting, Who are you? Where are you going? Xiao Yuan wiped his face, which was dirty with charcoal, revealing his features that could barely be seen before. As soon as the Imperial Guard saw his face, he fell on his knees in complete shock, Why your majesty? Don't kneel, get up. Xiao Yuan raised his hand, unable to bear seeing him kneel. The Imperial Guard stood up trembling all over, Your Majesty, why are you here? This place is outside the Imperial City. Xiao Yuan said, I want to ask you something, where's the altar of the Temple of Heaven? The Imperial Guard replied, answering to His Majesty, it's located in the south, for about 6 Li 3. Xiao Yuan thanked him with a smile, turned his head to see Yan Heqing and said, Let's go. Yes. Yan Heqing nodded. The Imperial Guard stared at the two men leaving side by side, suddenly, he remembered something and ran towards them in a few steps, Your Majesty, this place is outside the Imperial City and the road ahead is not easy to walk on, there's many forests and paths. Would you like to go back to the Imperial City first and take the Imperial Carriage? It's okay, don't worry about it. Xiao Yuan waved his hands, smiling warmly, the clear light of the daytime was illuminating his beautiful face and defined eyes and eyebrows. Suddenly, the guard couldn't see the so-called tyrant that everyone was talking about. They ended up walking from noon to dusk. Xiao Yuan wore a robe. Not only was he unable to open his legs, but also he always ended up hooking branches he had to move slowly, one step after another. And if it weren't for the cold, he really would have teared apart his hem. In the evening, the sky gradually darkened, and the altar of the Temple of Heaven finally appeared in front of them. Chapter, 34 The altar of the Temple of Heaven was located on the 99 step halfway up the mountain, the sunset was like the blood of the sun. This solemn altar was particularly awe-inspiring. Besides the steps, looking splendid in jade and gold, was the temple. It was filled with incense smoke, quiet and solemn. Yan Heqing frowned, is it here? This is the place where the ancestors are worshipped and where the relics are stored in the Northern Kingdom. You can wait for me here for a bit, it'll go. Xiao Yuan looked at Yan Heqing's face and said carefully. After all, the memorial plate of the late emperor was still in there. Yan Heqing nodded his head. Xiao Yuan brushed the ash off his body, fixed up his clothes, got up and walked into the temple. The place of worship was heavily guarded by soldiers. Although the guards were surprised by Xiao Yuan's sudden appearance, they didn't dare to stop him. Xiao Yuan walked into the hall smoothly and unhurried. Inside the main hall were placed the memorial plates of the ancestors, all of which were decorated delicately and engraved with golden characters. The incense was burning in the hall, and there were fruit plates with pork heads. Xiao Yuan thought for a while, and bowed down. In the original book, on the third day after Yan Heqing's attack on the Northern Kingdom, he burned this place to ashes. The memorial plates of the ancestors, including the one of the late emperor, were heavily smashed and then discarded at the gate of the city trampled by thousands of people like it was garbage. Xiao Yuan raised his head and looked at the solemnity in front of him. Thinking that now Yan Heqing was waiting for him outside, at this time, he felt like it was a dream. After sighing with emotion, Xiao Yuan remembered the purpose of this trip and started to look around. Yan Heqin waited patiently outside the temple, and after a quarter of an hour, Xiao Yuan's figure appeared before his eyes. Xiao Yuan went in empty-handed, and when he came out, he carried a sword in his hands. He walked towards Yan Heqin and handed it to him, Here, this is yours. Yan Heqin's eyes were round and surprised. He took the sword and rubbed the sheath carefully. On the hilt of the sword was carved a golden dragon, the body of the sword was thin, sharp and had a faint cold light surrounding it. Blowing away his hair, Yan Heqin lowered his eyes. After a while, he choked, this is. Yes. Xiao Yuan replied. This sword was once belonging to the emperor of the southern Yan kingdom, the father of Yan Heqin. 
After the southern Yan Kingdom was destroyed by the late emperor of the northern kingdom, Yan Heqing's father used this sword to commit suicide within the city wall, weeping with blood and mourning. However, the late emperor of the northern kingdom took it as a war trophy and used it as his sword. Eventually, it became the only relic that wasn't buried after his death. Instead, it was placed at the temple for the future generations to worship. This was the reason why Yan Heqing hated this place so much. Yan Heqing calmed down and raised his head to look up at Xiao Yuan, what does this mean? Xiao Yuan said with a smile, it's yours, take good care of it. It belongs to Yan Heqing anyways, sooner or later he would have obtained it. Yan Heqing stared closely at Xiao Yuan, his eyes were moving and had a light of complicated feelings after a while, he murmured, thank you. Xiao Yuan shrugged, it belongs to you, I was just returning it to its original owner. Yan Heqing glanced at him again, then turned his back to the temple. He put his sword on the ground with both hands, lifted the hem, and knelt down without hesitation. Facing his destroyed homeland, underneath the mountains and rivers, and above the blue sky. Xiao Yuan turned around, unwilling to see it, fearing that Yan Heqing would raise his head. His eyes were full of resentment against this country, and his anger would eventually develop into a sharp edge that would cut his own neck. After a while, Xiao Yuan suddenly heard Yan Heqing calling him, he turned around and saw that Yan Heqing had already stood up. He was holding the sword and there was no resentment and sadness in his eyes anymore, they were bright and calm as the water. Then, he said, let's go back. Xiao Yuan replied with a smile, yes, let's go back. It was said that it's easier to walk up the mountain than to walk down, but for Xiao Yuan, it was extremely difficult to walk up the mountain already and now, he just wanted to roll down like a ball. Seeing the bright moon in the starred sky, the mountain path wasn't clear enough, and every step had to be taken carefully, which required a lot of time. Xiao Yuan was holding on to his inconvenient long clothes and mocked himself, I don't want to keep going, I want to just lie here and wait for someone to collect my corpse. Yan Heqing pointed to a clean and flat stone on the side of the road, sit down and rest for a while. Xiao Yuan sat down on the stone and rubbed his ankles while smiling, don't you get anxious if I walk so slowly. Without Xiao Yuan holding him back, Yan Heqing would have returned to the imperial city in about an hour. Yan Heqing looked at him quietly, and replied with a light tone, you also gave up traveling in the imperial carriage because of me. Xiao Yuan didn't expect Yan Heqing to notice this. He was stunned for a little bit, and didn't know how to answer. The two of them were silent for a while. Around them the mountain was quiet. Xiao Yuan coughed lightly trying to break the silence when Yan Heqing suddenly narrowed his eyes and rushed to his person, be careful, behind you. Xiao Yuan suddenly turned his head and saw a green snake with red spots on his head. Yan Heqing hit the seven-inch green snake with a tiny stone and then strangled it in front of Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan, was too frightened to stand and yet he took a few steps back, fell to the ground, and rolled down the stairs. After a while, Xiao Yuan was lying on the ground with his arms folded, staring at the stars in the sky. A handsome face appeared looking down on him, blocking the sky. Xiao Yuan asked, Are you here to collect my corpse? Yan Heqing said, No. Xiao Yuan waved his hand and asked him to move his head away, Then let me count the stars, I just found a constellation. Yan Heqing kindly reached out his hand to Xiao Yuan, who estimated that he had injured himself can you stand up? Xiao Yuan took Yan Heqing's hand and started to stand up, but he felt extreme pain in his ankle. Xiao Yuan frowned, it hurts, I don't know if it's twisted or dislocated. It was indeed very slippery. Xiao Yuan covered himself in fallen leaves, he wasn't angry or sad. Instead, he joked to Yan Heqing, anyway, you can just leave me here, after all we're already outside the imperial city. With your skills, escaping should be easy. Yan Heqing stared at his mischievously smiling eyes, stood up without flinching and walked without turning back, hurrying away. Xiao Yuan was stupefied. Hey! I was just joking. You can't really go away. Yan Xiao Yuan came to himself and wanted to call out for him, but found that Yan Heqing's figure had disappeared into the vast night. You're too heartless. 
On behalf of the socialist core values, I strongly condemn your unfriendly behavior. All of a sudden, he was abandoned just like that on a remote path. Even if he says to himself that it's impossible for him to not feel wronged, Xiao Yuan sighed and felt sad. He laid on his back and continued to count stars, completely abandoned, Dubhi, Merak, Fekta 1. While counting on Fekta, Xiao Yuan's ears suddenly heard the sound of a wooden stick being cut. Xiao Yuan was so frightened that he abruptly sat up and saw Yan Heqing, which he didn't know at that moment had come back. He was cutting some branches with his sword, Xiao Yuan didn't know why he was doing that. Wow, this splendid sword was being used to cut wooden sticks. Can't you hear its cry? No, I'm wrong, that's not the point at all. Xiao Yuan said, You, you didn't leave. Yan Heqing didn't understand why Xiao Yuan thought so unjustly of him, he was simply too lazy to take care of others. He cut two wooden sticks, tore off a piece of his clothing, wrapped Xiao Yuan's injured ankle, and then squatted down to carry Xiao Yuan up on his back. Chapter 35 Was he being carried by the male lead? In the original book, this was a privilege that only Princess Yongning had. Seeing himself in the role of the female lead made Xiao Yuan feel uncomfortable. He put his hands on his chest and didn't dare to hug Yan Heqing's neck, instead he turned his head around pretending to look at the scenery. His awkward posture wasn't stable and his body was slightly moving. Yan Heqing said, don't move, or else you'll fall to the ground, hold me tight. You're the male lead, so he'll listen to you. With his permission, Xiao Yuan didn't feel awkward anymore. He hugged Yan Heqing's neck and smiled softly, thank you, I owe you a favor. Yan Heqing walked steadily and said, you also carried me like this last time. On that day, when he was punished to kneel in the snow, Xiao Yuan carried him all the way to the Taiyi Palace. Xiao Yuan was surprised, so you knew. Yan Heqing replied, yes, but at that time I thought you were. His voice faded away, but the two of them understood the meaning behind those words inside their hearts. Xiao Yuan sighed, we are now considered a revolutionary friendship. Revolutionary friendship. Yes, revolutionary. Friendship. Revolutionary friendship. It's beyond life and death. It doesn't matter the distance. It's wordless. It's like an immortal flame, burning on the vast land. Xiao Yuan turned his head to look at Yan Heqing's speechless expression, leaned over smirking, and said, The night sky is so beautiful, I suddenly want to sing. What type of song? A song about friendship. Xiao Yuan cleared his throat and began to sing, The big river flows eastward the stars in the sky go to the great bear, hey hey, go to the great bear, a bowl of wine for a friendship of life and death 1-0. Oh. Extreme joy becomes sorrow too, Yan Heqing was irritated by Xiao Yuan's voice, and made Xiao Yuan hit his face on a tree branch. Yan Heqing steadied his steps and tried to ignore what he just did, Song of Friendship. Xiao Yuan breathed and excitedly rubbed his head, the song is about the revolutionary friendship of 108 big men, are you listening to me? I'm not listening, we reached the imperial city. Xiao Yuan raised his head and looked up at the vermilion imperial city wall. It was brightly lit and the carvings were made out of jade. This winter was really snowy, painting everything in white. At one glance, it seemed like seeing another world. Prosperity Today it was flowing in prosperity, but what about tomorrow? Xiao Yuan said, wait, stop, don't go in. Yan Heqing stopped and heard Xiao Yuan murmuring, Yan Heqing, can you call me by my name? Yan Heqing paused, and earnestly and seriously said, Xiao Yuan. Yes, it's me, let's go. Xiao Yuan smiled. At this moment, the imperial city was hysterical. The emperor didn't come back. The emperor didn't come back ever since he went out early in the morning. And now it was midnight. He didn't bring any imperial guards with him. No imperial guards. It was said that the emperor finally appeared at the Temple of Heaven, but the temple was at most one and a half hour away from the imperial city. But it's been three hours since then. Three hours. At such a young life. The emperor had gone missing. 
a group of imperial guards were hysterically running around with torches and lanterns looking for the emperor and the prince, and then, they suddenly appeared in front of the crowd. Yang Liuan burst into tears and directed his sword towards Yan Heqing's throat, release the emperor. Put away the sword, put away the sword. Xiao Yuan quickly jumped down on one foot and reached to lower Yang Liuan's sword. Looking at Xiao Yuan's messy clothes, with bruised wrists and his hair mixed with leaves, Yang Liuan was horrified, Your Majesty, how are you, why are you like this? Ah! Xiao Yuan explained, It's nothing, just a night tour. Night tour. The group of imperial guards' eyes wandered back and forth between Yan Heqing and Xiao Yuan. Bodyguard Yang asked, A night tour surely CA can't, become like this? Xiao Yuan waved his hand casually, I wasn't careful while having fun and getting along with each other. Not careful, in having fun, and getting along with each other. Having fun, and getting along with each other. Getting along with each other. The group of imperial guards looked at Yan Heqing, and then began to cough one after the other. After coughing they looked up at the sky, the moon and the stars. As the saying goes, gossip is the main way of spreading information in human history, an important channel for human communication, a fast bridge for human communication, and an interesting life for a boring soul. So that night, the night tour between the emperor and the prince of the southern Yan kingdom was like a hurricane, sweeping around the palace. Inside Jingyang Palace, Qin Yu heard the news and smashed the porcelain cup in his hand. Chapter 36 The next day, Xiao Fengjie's door was knocked on. Xiao Fengyue has always been someone lonely, and the only visitor he had was Yang Liuan but this time, when he opened the door with joy, he saw the last person he wanted to see. Qin Yu smiled and said, Can I come in and have a chat? Out of courtesy, Xiao Fengyue kindly invited him into the room, this poor room is simple, Gongzi one can sit at will. Qin Yu stepped into the room and didn't sit down. He looked at the guqin placed on the table, his fingers played the strings frivolously, I've heard that Xiao Gongzi is good at playing stringed instruments, so I came here to learn from you. I don't dare, but I'll be glad to discuss it with you. Xiao Fengyue suppressed the uneasiness inside his heart, picked up the porcelain cup on the table and poured tea for Qin Yu. Qin Yu smirked and asked, Xiao Gongzi, have you ever played the guqin for His Majesty? Xiao Fengyue replied, Humble me is not talented. His Majesty feels that my music is too muddled, humbled me has never played for His Majesty. Qin Yu smiled even more, his eyes narrowed slightly, they were cunning and sinister, so, in such a large palace, only bodyguard Yang had heard the sound of Gongzi's guqin. Xiao Fengjie's hand trembled, the porcelain cup fell to the ground shattering in pieces. He suddenly raised his head, his face was ghostly pale, his eyes were round and his red lips were trembling, you, you, you. Qin Yu picked up a porcelain cup, filled it with clean water, took a sip, and then continued, Oh, even if His Majesty had never favored you, you're still not allowed to have sex with an imperial guard in private. You're guilty and you should die too. Xiao Fengyue calmed his mind and said with anger, Don't spit blood on people three, we're just strangers that happened to meet once. Stranger. Qin Yu suddenly started to laugh out loud. After laughing, he wiped his tears, smiled, and asked, Who would gift his personal sachet to a stranger? Xiao Fengyue finally lost all his strength. He almost fell to the ground. Supporting himself with one hand at the table, he asked hoarsely, what do you want? Xiao Gongzi is a wise man, I will go right to the point. Qin Yu took out a small white porcelain bottle from his sleeve and laid it on the table. Xiao Fengyue asked, What's this? Knockout drug. Knockout drug? Yes, I want you to drug Yan Heqing, pretend to have an affair with him, and then be discovered by His Majesty. Qin Yu's tone was indifferent, and his words were bloody. Xiao Fengjie's eyes widened incredulously, th this, this is a death sentence. It's a sin that can even bring the death penalty to the people being favored by the emperor. Yes, it is also a death sentence, but bodyguard Yang's name will be clean, doesn't he? Qin Yu raised an eyebrow. Xiao Fengyue lowered his eyes and lost all the blood from his face, but, how can I get his majesty to? You don't have to worry about it, I'll find a way myself. 
just tell me whether you'll do it or not. Qin Yu cut off his words and smiled. Please think about it, Xiao Gongzi, and give me your final answer at night. After that, Qin Yu didn't want to stay any longer, so he got up and left. Xiao Fengjia's voice sounded behind him, You're so vicious, aren't you afraid of the wrath of heaven? Qin Yu laughed instead of getting angry, and turned sideways to reply, The wrath of heaven. At that time, I was an imperial guard on my road to become an official, but I was forced into this palace by His Majesty's desires. I was forced to become a male concubine for him to play with. Isn't this condemnation? Because I had his favoritism alone, I almost died at the hands of a treacherous person because of my unique appearance, isn't that also condemnation? Xiao Gongzi, I, surnamed Qin, had lived in this Jingyang palace long enough, I can't hear the words the wrath of heaven. After his speech, Qin Yu turned away and left. The emperor was at the top of the sky, and he had to climb with a weak body to gain a place inside the imperial palace, but then. He was thrown at the front of the main hall, put into display as part of the imperial harem, for long nights that lasted forever, full of sorrow. Chapter 37 Xiao Yuan's foot was sprained and it wasn't dislocated. The imperial physician said that it would be fine to just rest for a few days. So Xiao Yuan was lazily eating and drinking, lying stiff like a corpse every day. On the third day, Princess Yongning came to visit the patient, and behind her was Chuei'er, the maid that looked like Lu Zhishan. Chuei'er was very shy, she twisted her head and walked a few steps without looking at the road, then accidentally hitting a guard that was at the door of the imperial bedchamber. With a cry, Chuei'er shyly entered the bedchamber. The guard sat on the ground feeling that his ribs were broken. Imperial brother, how is it possible that you've been sick and injured recently? Princess Yongning sat beside the bed with worried eyes. Xiao Yuan comforted her, I just sprained my ankle by accident, don't worry. Well, imperial brother, Yongning cooked some porridge for you. After saying that, Princess Yongning gave a signal to Chuei'er and she quickly brought an exquisite wooden food box. Upon seeing Hong Xiu, Princess Yongning took the food box personally and said with a smile, it's okay, it'll do it, the sugar hasn't been added yet. Hong Xiu nodded her head, and stepped aside. A sweet fragrance was coming from the inside of the food box. Xiao Yuan moved towards the bedside and leaned out, what kind of porridge is this? Princess Yongning smiled, snow pear lily porridge. Xiao Yuan fell directly out of his bed. There was a scream in the bedroom, and Princess Yongning was so scared that she quickly helped Xiao Yuan get back up on the bed, Imperial brother, be more careful. Xiao Yuan asked tremblingly, why you say it again, what porridge? Princess Yongning was puzzled, snow pear lily porridge. Cooked with the sun-dried lily flowers stored since last August. Eh. Princess Yongning was surprised. Imperial brother, what's wrong? Why do you look so frightened? How can Xiao Yuan not be frightened? Snow pear lily porridge. In the original book, this was Yan Heqing's first bloom of love for Princess Yongning, this item helped to push forward their hidden feelings. In the original book, Yan Heqing, who was an imperial bodyguard, was amazed after drinking the snow pear lily porridge made by the princess herself, bent her eyes and smiled, if you like it, then, can I cook the porridge again for you? Yan Heqing's heart got warmer. He thought of how Princess Yongning treated him with kindness, and how good her nature was for many days. Suddenly, faint love thoughts flooded. And the author also emphasizes that when this lily flower bloomed, only two or three could be saved, only enough to cook this porridge once. In the original book, only the male lead Yan He Ching had eaten this snow pear lily porridge. Xiao Yuan's heart was racing, so why did you cook it? Not only did you cook it, but you also brought it to me. Il Dai Young. This is the plot of the snow pear lily porridge, but the both of them haven't met yet. Haven't. Met. Yet. Xiao Yuan was feeling a little suffocated. Princess Yongming opened the wooden food box. Holding the wooden clip, she took some sugar and put it into the soft and sweet porridge, imperial brother likes sweets, so I put a little bit more of sugar into it. It doesn't matter what I like or what I don't like. What's important is whether Yan He Qing likes it. Princess Yongning picked up the wooden spoon, 
scooped out a small bowl, and fed it to Xiao Yuan's mouth, Imperial brother, please taste it. Xiao Yuan took the small bowl and took a sip of the porridge, his eyes lit up. Delicious. This is the porridge that only the male lead is allowed to drink. Xiao Yuan drank the porridge with extremely complicated feelings. He praised it and said, My lips and teeth retain the fragrance, the aftertaste is endless, it's delicious. Princess Yongning received the bowl and was delighted, it's great that Imperial Brother liked it so much. How about Yongning cooks the porridge again for Imperial Brother, would you like it? Xiao Yuan's face collapsed. Can someone please stop giving me all the main roles for the scenes destined to the female lead and the male lead? I can't stand it. But there's still so much left, does Imperial Brother want to drink some more? Princess Yongming asked, looking at the food box. Ill drink it. Xiao Yuan suddenly shouted. Leave it here, ill eat some more in a while. Wonderful. Princess Yongming smiled cheerfully. Princess Yongming talked with Xiao Yuan for a while, then she left the imperial bedchamber. Seeing Princess Yongming leaving, Xiao Yuan moved quickly. Putting away the food container, disregarding his ankle injury, and insisted on going to Jingyang Palace. Yan Heqin was surprised by the sudden appearance of Xiao Yuan. He put a food box on the table, lifted the lid, and filled a bowl, fearing that he wouldn't drink it, he insisted, drink, drink, drink. Although Yan Heqin wasn't understanding anything, he still took a sip of the glutinous porridge from Xiao Yuan's hand. How is it? Xiao Yuan asked. Yan Heqin frowned, it's too sweet. Xiao Yuan's hand trembled nearly breaking the porcelain bowl. It's too sweet. Sweet? Shouldn't you use all the best words in the world to praise this bowl of porridge? How do you have the nerve to dislike it? You don't want your wife. Xiao Yuan asked, don't you feel anything? Feel what? Of course the feeling of palpitations. The feeling of first love. A young girl yearning for love pa. A heartfelt feeling. You must drink it all. Xiao Yuan pushed the food box to Yan Heqin. Yan Heqin stared at him and slowly swallowed the porridge until he felt full. Xiao Yuan asked nervously, how was it? Yan Heqin poured a cup of water and put it on his lips, slightly greasy. Xiao Yuan stood up. It'll come back tomorrow morning. I must present someone special to you, I must. Yan Heqin was drinking water trying to clear the greasy feeling in his mouth while listening to Xiao Yuan's nagging about a plot, and the nonsense of a male lead and a female lead. Finally, Xiao Yuan emphasizes it again that hell come tomorrow morning, and then, he sighed and left. Yan Heqin was confused wondering why Xiao Yuan was so sad that he didn't finish eating all the porridge. He put his hand on his chin and looked down. Suddenly, he felt something was abnormal, so he got up and walked to open the window. The wind was cold, there was ice and snow everywhere. Yan Heqin narrowed his eyes slightly. After checking that everything was looking normal, he felt that he was thinking too much and finally closed the window. At the same time, there was a man hiding behind a big tree inside the courtyard. The man was thin and agile. Seeing Yan Heqin closing the window, he took a long breath, wiped his cold sweat, and ran towards another part inside the Jing Yang Palace. That was Qin Ye's wing room. Qin Yu was anxiously walking back and forth inside the wing room, worried that something had gone wrong and everything was exposed. Qin Yu was afraid of death. Because he was afraid of death, he didn't dare to disobey the emperor's order and became part of his harem of male concubines. Because of his fear of death, when the young monarch expressed his love to him, he had to suppress his disgust and pretend to be flattering and charming. Just because of his fear of death, in this palace, his original strong temperament became more and more susceptible and sensitive. There was a time when he didn't have plotting and tricks inside his mind, but he had no other choice than to become a calculating person. After all, inside this palace filled with evil intentions, there's no room for true temperament. Suddenly, there was a knock at his door, Qin Yu was so scared that he hurried to open it. The short man quickly entered the room and closed the door behind him, Qin Gongzi, his majesty will go to Yan He Qin tomorrow morning. Hearing the news, Qin Yu nodded, 
got up and took a bag of silver from a wooden cabinet inside the wing room and gave it to the thin man. The man thanked him again and again, and heard Qin Yu say, Go and ask Xiao Fengyue if he had already considered it or not, got it? Chapter 38 In the dead of the night, the lights were cut from the candles, and the rain was desolate. Xiao Fengyue, who wasn't able to close his eyes for a long time, sat at the table. The candlelight stretched his figure making it look extremely long. He carefully stroked the porcelain bottle in his hand, his eyes were full of sorrow. Xiao Fengyue knew in his whole lifetime, that the world was cold and ruthless. When Xiao Fengyue was eight years old, his parents died for some unknown reason, and his family fell into despair. He was sold to the royal family by his relatives and became a little slave from then on, he suffered a lot from being owned by others. When he was sixteen years old, his royal highness the prince brought a Qin player of sixty years of age to the palace. When the old master was playing the Guqin, Xiao Fengyue was fortunate enough to be able to enjoy it on the side while he was serving Wang Yewen. His appreciation deeply trapped him into the first, second and fifth pentatonic scale too that sounded everywhere inside the palace, unable to extricate himself. It was a pity that Wang Ye was disconcerted and didn't understand the beauty of the melody at all. It was only because the Qin player was old and boring that he didn't have any interest in him. The next day, he was sent away. On the day when the old Qin player left, it rained heavily. Xiao Fengyue ran out of the palace despite the fact that he could be punished for it. Standing in front of the old Qin player, he begged, Can I touch your Guqin? Just for a little bit, I've washed my hands. The old Qin player untied the Guqin on his back and handed it to Xiao Fengyue. Xiao Fengyue held the ancient Guqin as if he was holding a treasure, then, he gently hooked the strings excitedly and even a piece of music lighted out. It was the piece that the old Qin player interpreted the day before at Wang Ye's palace. The old Qin player was taken aback and quickly taught Xiao Fengyue several melodies on the spot. Xiao Fengyue played one by one without any mistakes. The old Qin player laughed up to the sky, and then spent all his belongings to redeem Xiao Fengyue from the palace. From then on, there was one less slave in the world, and one more Guqin player that followed his master to travel around the mountains and rivers. Five years later, the old Qin player passed away. Xiao Fengyue buried him and traveled alone. His life was hard, but he was also very happy. Due to his extraordinary appearance and because he was very good at playing the Guqin, he soon became a legend among the people. When the emperor of the southern Yan kingdom heard about him, he asked Xiao Fengyue to join the imperial palace to become the imperial Qin player. In the end, half a year later, the southern Yan kingdom was destroyed by the cavalry of the northern kingdom. Xiao Fengyue failed to escape and was captured by the northern kingdom. Later, because of his appearance, he was chosen by Hong Xiu and he was sent from the prison cell to Jingyang Palace. On the last day of his imprisonment, an imperial guard untied the chains on his ankles. At that time, Xiao Fengyue's ankles were worn by the iron chains, and it was extremely difficult to move. The imperial guard apologized and said, Let me carry you on my back. That day, Xiao Fengyue fell on the guard's steady back, he heard the guard whispering an apology to him. Xiao Fengyue asked him why he should apologize to him. The imperial guard replied to him that it was because he was suffering. Xiao Fengyue suffered a lot in this lifetime, but no one had ever apologized to him. The next day, the imperial guard blushed, took a medicine bottle from his clothes, and carefully handed it to him, I was sent to give this to you, the healing effect is very good, take it. Afterwards, the imperial guard said, the weather in the northern kingdom is really cold, will you be able to bear it? The imperial guard continued, I've heard that you had traveled to a lot of places. I haven't been out of the palace since I was a child, is the outside world interesting? The imperial guard talked to him again, there's no one on night guard duty today. Would you talk with me? Just an hour, no, half an hour will be enough. The imperial guard tried again, I went to the imperial kitchen today and saw the sweet osmanthus cake. I begged for one and brought it to you for you to taste it. The imperial guard spoke again, my name is Yang Liuan. Xiao Fengyue talked to him, the world is much more exciting than this grand palace. One day, 
would you like to go out and travel with me? Xiao Fengyue asked him, I'd like to play the guqin for you, is that okay? Xiao Fengyue asked again, did you like it? That evening, Yang Liuan looked at him with affectionate eyes. It sounded to some degree like the bright moving water and the music of an ancient instrument, at the half setting of the sun, it's beautiful, it was really nice to hear. Gradually, the two of them fell in love with each other, but because of their own identities, they never did anything beyond the rules. But in this palace that was like a cage this innocent relationship, was just like a capital crime. Xiao Fengyue squeezed the porcelain bottle tightly, and when he closed his eyes, all he could see was Yang Liuan's smile. After a long time, he opened his eyes again, and they were determined and sorrowful. But lacked fear. Title meaning, Jn Zio G X N G Ha Ch This sentence comes from the poem Y Lin Ling Henkin Ki, A Small Bell Is Under the Rain The Cicada Is Morning, written by Li Ying Lu Yong 987-1053 A poet from the Song Dynasty 960-1279. The poem describes the scene of lovers parting ways and expressing their feelings after the separation. It expresses the true feelings of lovers when they have to say goodbye to each other. Chapter 39 It rained down all night, and into the next morning. The green leaves were dripping, the air was cold, and the sun was shining brightly through the hazy morning mist. Xiao Yuan finished his breakfast in a spirited manner and said to Hong Xiu, Today you can call me Cupid Chow. Hong Xiu's face looked dull, the ball must nervously laugh. 1. Even if you didn't understand the first three words, how can you hear Xiao as a falling tone 2 when I said it with a high level tone 3? Anyway, Hong Xiu, is the Imperial Guard uniform that I asked you about yesterday ready? Xiao Yuan asked. Hong Xiu nodded, she was holding a set of clothing in her hands. Xiao Yuan looked at it and found that Hong Xiu even had black boots, belt and sword. What does His Majesty want to do? Hong Xiu asked doubtfully. Xiao Yuan smirked with pride, the 36 strategies 4 weren't created out of nothing 5, you must watch the fire from the other side of the river 6, and lastly. The soul. Will return. To the corpse. 7. Xiao Yuan's selfish calculations were very smart. First, Hell make Yan Heqing pretend to be an imperial bodyguard. Then, Hell take him to see Princess Yongming for a moment, and lastly, he can just watch the plot develop on its own. After all, it isn't impossible for the male lead and the female lead to meet each other, stare at the other's eyes and like each other. They're like the positive and negative poles of a magnet, they're similar and compatible with each other. As a personal maid, the magic of Hong Xiu is that even if she doesn't understand Xiao Yuan's words, she can still guess his intentions, Your Majesty, are you going to Jingyang Palace again? This time, you must bring an imperial guard with you. Ever since the last time when Xiao Yuan didn't take an imperial guard with him, disappearing for a whole day and coming back with an injury, Hong Xiu persuades him to take an imperial guard with him now every time he goes out. Xiao Yuan thought for a moment and said, maybe this time he'll bring some imperial guards and maidservants. After all, if you want to bring Yan Heqing to Yangning's palace hall afterwards, he has to put on airs. Seeing that Xiao Yuan listened to her advice, Hong Xiu was relieved. She personally selected a few smart maids, and asked Yang Liuan to choose several imperial guards to follow Xiao Yuan. When they reached the Jing Yang palace, the great group of people looked inspiring. Xiao Yuan subconsciously was going to knock Yan Heqing's door, but Hong Xiu quickly stopped him, Your Majesty, why do you need to knock on this male concubine's door? Xiao Yuan didn't have the time to speak yet, when Hong Xiu pushed the door open and entered without hesitation. Wait, this is too abrupt. What if Yan Heqing hadn't gotten up yet? Or in case he has the habit of sleeping naked? Or what about if he's changing clothes? Hong Xiu, Hold back a little. Don't make him lose face 8. Seeing that Hong Xiu had entered the wing room, Xiao Yuan must catch up quickly. Unexpectedly, at the moment he stepped in, Hong Xiu suddenly took a step back, almost hitting him. Ha! Huh. Is he really changing clothes? Xiao Yuan looked inside, his pupils shrank and he turned around almost running into Yang Liuan who followed him in. Yang Liuan was startled and looked right inside the wing room. Your Majesty, 
what happened. But after looking inside, Yang Liuan's throat seemed to be suddenly strangled by something. His face became pale as if he was falling into an ice cave. Yang Liuan was once stabbed in the abdomen by an assassin with a sharp blade. He still remembers the pain he felt that time, the cold and sharp tip submerged into the flesh letting out the blood, the pain accumulated everywhere, and then, it exploded violently through his four limbs. But the pain he felt then was ten thousand times less painful than what he was feeling now. All of you, go out and wait outside. Xiao Yuan stopped Yang Liuan, who was about to follow him in. He was so frightened that he raised his eyes in shock. Yang Liuan's eyes were red and his lips were white. He was trembling, his voice was hoarse and dry, he wasn't able to utter a whole sentence, Your Majesty, this, this, must be a misunderstanding. Why is your reaction so exaggerated? Were you shocked by the erotic view inside the wing room? Liuan, wait outside and don't let anyone come in. Xiao Yuan patted him, but Yang Liuan grabbed his arm. He breathed hurriedly and said, Your Majesty, I, I. You, you, what do you want to say? After a long time, Yang Liuan lowered his head as if he had been crushed by something and murmured, "Ill comply with His Majesty's order. Xiao Yuan closed the door of the wing room and pinched himself fiercely. Making sure that this wasn't a dream, he then turned around. The wing room wasn't so big. With a table and chairs, bookshelves and wooden cabinets, and a tool bed that could be seen clearly at one glance. The messy bedding on the bed covered two naked bodies that could be seen faintly. Their long black silk-like hair intertwined, lying in each other's arms, elegantly drunk, one of them was Yan He Qin. Xiao Yuan blinked, blinked again, and then blurted out, What the fuck? What the fuck? Yan Ji Yi. Why are you lying next to him? He's. Man. Even if you hadn't met the goddess yet, you can't bend so suddenly. No, 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 that's not the point. Xiao Yuan was at a loss on whether he should be more horrified by the sight of Yan Heqing becoming gay or the fact that had already slept with someone else before meeting the female lead. After a while, Hong Xiu finally came out of the shock, and a terrible rage possessed her. She stepped forward, and after rounding her arms, she was ready to slap the two men sleeping on the bed. Chapter, 40 Hey! Hong Xiu's slap was about to hit the faces of the two men sleeping on the bed. Xiao Yuan quickly stepped forward to stop her from doing so. Your Majesty! Don't get angry. This maidservant will skin these two bitches alive. He'll cut them into pieces and throw them to feed the dogs. Hong Xiu gritted her teeth and roared in anger. I'm not angry. You don't need to look for knives everywhere, there are no knives here. And this is the male lead. The protagonist. You can't make a move against him. Although I don't know why the male lead suddenly became gay, this is a stallion protagonist that sleeps with whoever he wants, it's really just a daily thing. A daily thing. Seeing that Hong Xiu was going to try to slap them again, Xiao Yuan hurriedly said, Hong Xiu, calm down. Calm down. Naturally, because of the noise, the two men sleeping on the bed gradually woke up. Xiao Fengwei was worried that he wouldn't be able to fall asleep last night. At this moment, he slowly opened his eyes, pretended to be horrified and rolled off the bed. Then, he kneeled on the ground, Why your ma majesty? Yan Heqing gasped, he held his forehead and slowly got up. His head seemed to be in great pain, he opened his eyes and stared at everyone standing in front of him. His eyes were surprised and he was dazed for quite a long time. Finally, he laid his eyes on his naked body as if he suddenly understood something. He immediately turned to look at Xiao Fengyue, his eyes were full of calculations, regret and anger. Hong Xiu seemed to have calmed down, so Xiao Yuan let go of her. Lowering her head and thinking of what to say, Hong Xiu took two deep breaths, suddenly stepped forward, and slapped Xiao Fengyue's face hard, slut. How you dare do such a lousy thing? Xiao Fengwei was slapped on the first side of his white cheek, five fingerprints appeared on it. He turned his head back, and his voice was weak, Your Majesty, Yan He Qing and I are in love. We promised each other, I hope His Majesty can understand. 
Xiao Yuan, cough cough cough, ah. What, what did you say? Man, do you have the guts to challenge the authority of the female lead? Shameless. Hong Xiao was red with anger. She grabbed Xiao Fengjia's hair and slapped him a few more times, then she turned around to tear Yan Heqing apart. Jia Wan. Why do you want to hit him again? You can't fight the male lead. Hong Xiao. Xiao Yuan held Hong Xiao back. He turned his head to look at Xiao Fengyue, who was in a mess with his long hair scattered everywhere, and said, Put on your clothes, and go back first. Ji Go be back. Xiao Fengyue raised his head. His eyes were astonished, his cheeks were red and swollen. He looked very pitiful. Xiao Yuan asked him, Yes, by the way, what's your name? Seeing that Xiao Yuan's expression wasn't angry, and instead he asked for his name, Xiao Fengjia's body trembled all over. For a while, he didn't know how to answer. It took him a long time to speak, Xiao, Xiao Fengyue. Hey, why does this name sound so familiar? It seems that it was from the last time he asked Hong Xiao if there was a Qin player inside the Jingyang Palace, her answer was this name. Go back first. Xiao Yuan tried to comfort him. Xiao Fengyue put on his clothes while shivering, leaned over and walked out of the wing room. Once he was outside, he raised his head and saw the last man he wanted to see right now. Xiao Fengjia's eyes darkened, his lower lip was bit fiercely to stabilize his mind, making it almost bleed. Yang Liuan looked at the person coming out of the wing room and suddenly his eyes opened widely. He quickly stepped forward, but Xiao Fengyue passed by like he didn't see him, leaving in a hurry with his head lowered. Once he saw that Xiao Fengyue had already left, Xiao Yuan said to Hong Xiu, Hong Xiu, please go out first, I want to talk with Yan Heqing alone. Your Majesty. I understand. Hong Xiu stopped herself from saying something, but still bowed her head and went out of the wing room. The wing room had finally quieted down. Xiao Yuan turned his head and looked at Yan Heqing. Then he approached him with a smile and sat on the opposite side of the bed, don't you have something to say? Yan Heqing exhaled slowly, I was framed. Say something I don't know. Yan Heqing was stunned, he stared at Xiao Yuan and said, Do you believe me? Of course I believe in you. Xiao Yuan sneered. I told you yesterday that I'll come to see you in the morning. But you still do this kind of things, you think I'm mentally disabled, or do you think you're more stupid? So, would you like to put on some clothes first? His figure is too good, and the visual impact is too big. Seeing that Yan Heqing was slowly getting dressed, Xiao Yuan couldn't help but sigh in his heart. He looked really thin while wearing clothes, but once he takes off his clothes he's all muscles. He's always looking thin and slender, but it turns out that his figure is well built. After Yan Heqing finished getting dressed, he frowned and started to explain, last night, he came to me with a clear porridge, and he convinced me that the porridge. Wait a minute, he convinced you to drink it. Xiao Yuan interrupted Yan Heqing's words. If a young woman convinced Yan Heqing to eat porridge, Xiao Yuan could still understand it. But how could a man convince him to drink it, why did Yan Heqing lose his way? Because he said that this porridge was sent by you. Yan Heqing glanced at Xiao Yuan. That's a false imperial order. Xiao Yuan nodded. There was drug inside the porridge. Yan Heqing said, Yes. Did you know him before? I don't know him. Xiao Yuan touched his chin, I guess he was caught by someone, and he was ordered to hurt you. Otherwise, he would have had guilt and hate against you, and he wouldn't be willing to die together with you in this way. The symptoms of the drug caused Yan Heqing to have a headache. He frowned tightly, and pressed his forehead with one hand, slowly inhaling and exhaling, what are you planning to do next? Xiao Yuan hurriedly got up and poured a porcelain cup with water for Yan Heqing, well, I didn't think about that. I'd better send him away from the palace first, to avoid any more troubles. It's impossible to go to Yongning Hall now that something unexpected happened. After Xiao Yuan and Hong Xiao finished talking about how to handle the problem, they wanted to go find Xiao Fengyue alone, but Yang Liuan knelt in front of him and begged him to go with them. Xiao Yuan wasn't a fool, how could such an obvious clue be ignored? 
he just remembered that he heard a Guqin sound when he met with Yang Liuan twice before. Then, he thought about Yang Liuan's attitude and he suddenly was enlightened. It's you. Theme song man. This man is the reason you have a theme song. When you figure out something, a lot of things will suddenly come to light. Xiao Yuan suddenly remembered something. In the original novel, after Yan Liuan protected the young monarch from dying there was a paragraph mentioning that on the day the news of Yang Liuan's death reached the palace, a mournful Guqin music could be heard throughout the palace for a whole night. The music was sad, and heartbreaking. The next morning, a Qin player was found dead after he hung himself inside the palace. At that time, Xiao Yuan thought that this paragraph was used to exaggerate the sadness of Yang Liuan's death, but now, he realized that this wasn't the case at all. Maybe the original book buried many foreshadowing metaphors, but Xiao Yuan was only interested in the business of the male lead while reading the book he didn't go too deep into these side characters. He didn't expect that he would actually miss so much plot. Xiao Yuan asked Yang Liuan with a tentative tone, Are you and Xiao Fengyue? Yang Liuan suddenly cowed out, hitting his forehead hard against the ground several times until his forehead started to bleed, Your Majesty is very kind to me, but in the end I betrayed you. Indeed, we should die for our sins too, be chopped a thousand times into pieces three. However, I ask His Majesty to let me see his face one last time. After that, I would like to end my own life. If His Majesty is not satisfied with this, then I plead for torture and punishment. The favors weigh as much as mountains for, according to the plot of the original book, it's clear that the young monarch owes his life to Yang Liuan. What will be the last thing to happen, how will it end, it's hard for the little imperial bodyguard to talk. Xiao Yuan didn't know whether to cry or laugh. He stepped forward to help him get up, get up, let's go, well go to see Xiao Fengyue. Yang Liuan's eyes were shining, and he had to kowtow again. Xiao Yuan hurriedly stopped him, you still want to knock your head. Don't do it, otherwise you can't go. When they reached the wing room, Xiao Yuan raised his hand and knocked on the door, but nobody answered after a long time. Oh. Don't try to escape just because you fear being punished. Xiao Yuan wanted to wait, but after seeing that Yang Liuan was anxious, he had no other choice than to push open the door. In the end, the scene they encountered inside the wing room almost made Xiao Yuan's heart jump out of his chest. Three feet of white silk, dressed in white clothing, Xiao Fengyue was hanging under the beam, and a chair was pitifully tilted sideways. Chapter, 41 Yang Liuan rushed forward as fast as an arrow, hugging Xiao Fengyue, and shouted several times. His eyes were so red that bloody tears could come out. But Xiao Fengyue had stopped breathing and a pulse couldn't be felt. Xiao Yuan quickly took Xiao Fengyue from Yang Liuan's arms, which were about to collapse, and laid him flat on the ground. Without a word, he made a set of cardiopulmonary resuscitation. After three CPR cycles, Xiao Fengyue's throat made a muffled sound, suddenly coughed, and slowly opened his eyes. Xiao Yuan sat directly with his buttocks on the ground for a long time but didn't feel relaxed. Son of a bitch one. Fortunately, in order to become a tyrannical president and to deal with the situation if his beloved were to drown at any time, his father made him learn first aid. And by fortune, that time he studied really hard. Unlike the tyrannical president next door who didn't learn anything for a long time. When he was in real trouble, he almost broke the ribs of his true love when doing chest compressions. When Xiao Fengyue opened his eyes, after trying for a while, he discovered that he was unable to speak because of his neck injury. When he saw Yang Liuan, a line of tears fell from his eyes while he sobbed. Yang Liuan held his hand tightly, his voice choked and trembled, why why would you do something like this? Xiao Yuan couldn't look at this anymore. He stepped forward and pushed Yang Liuan to make him hold Xiao Fengyue into his arms. Why the hell too are you still asking? Hold him. The miserable couple hugged each other and sobbed. Xiao Yuan, who was distressed, wiped the cold sweat that was provoked by the scare he just experienced. After that, he stood up at the side of the table. Yang Liuan let go of Xiao Fengyue and knelt down to Xiao Yuan again. Xiao Yuan shouted, Don't kneel. 
you have to take him to bed first, and then bring him a cup of hot water. Yang Liuan stared at Xiao Yuan in an incredulous daze, feeling that he may have heard him wrong. Xiao Yuan gently touched his forehead and smiled, what are you waiting for? Yang Liuan, regardless of the consequences, hugged Xiao Fengyue and gently put him onto the bed, gave him a quilt and poured hot water inside a porcelain cup for him. Xiao Yuan felt the pulse of Xiao Fengyue. Only after making sure that there was no problem, did he take a long relieving breath. This was also a great blessing. Seeing that Yang Liuan was helping Xiao Fengyue drink the hot water, Xiao Yuan said to Xiao Fengyue, I will ask you some questions, and I know you can't speak right now so just nod your head for yes and shake it for no. The first question, is there someone inside the Jingyang Palace that is aware of your relationship with Yang Liuan? Xiao Fengyue's eyes were sorrowful, and he nodded his head. Then, did this person threaten you with Yang Liuan, and obligate you to harm Yan Hiqin? Xiao Fengyue nodded again. Yang Liuan breathed heavily, he was very upset. Did you hear? Xiao Yuan jokingly pushed Yang Liuan with his elbow. Your Majesty. He was trying to protect you. That's why he participated in this bad plan, he didn't change his love three. Xiao Yuan explained for Xiao Fengyue. Yang Liuan knelt down heavily, Your Majesty, this is all my fault. If you want to punish someone, you can punish me alone. Why are you kneeling again? Are you addicted to kneeling? Xiao Fengyue heard this and shook his head repeatedly, struggling to get out of bed he was trying to kneel besides Yang Liuan. All right, all right. Xiao Yuan hurriedly pressed Xiao Fengyue back to bed. The both of you will be punished, no one can run away from it. He had expected that this would be the case, so Yang Liuan stopped apologizing, leaned down, and bowed again. You, and you. Xiao Yuan's face was solemn. He pointed his finger for a little bit towards Yang Liuan and then did the same to Xiao Fengyue, the both of you are fired. Fired. Yang Liuan raised his head in astonishment, ah. Xiao Yuan hummed, ah, whatever, it'll send both of you out of the palace. Yang Liuan, who for a while didn't understand whether they were being punished or rewarded, didn't know how to respond. Liuan, go to the Taiyi Palace first to get some medicine to treat strangulation. Take some more for later, then go and pack up clothes, money and other valuable things it doesn't matter. Then you'll go to find a carriage, take Xiao Fengyue with you at night, and wait for me at the east gate of the imperial city. Xiao Yuan explained. Yang Liuan reacted all of a sudden and he almost fainted from happiness, Emperor Your Majesty. Ibit I. Xiao Yuan smiled and said, All right, all right, go ahead and quickly prepare everything. Time is running out. After coming out of Xiao Fengyue's wing room, Xiao Yuan ran to Yan Heqing and explained the cause and effects for of the incident to him. Yan Heqing was silent for a while, then, he asked, How are you going to deal with them? Xiao Yuan had an overflowing smiling expression. He picked up some grapes from the fruit tray on top of the table and sent them to his mouth, There's an old saying from my last life, I would rather destroy ten temples than to ruin a marriage five. So today, I still can be called Cupid Xiao. The night was quiet, and the lights from the lamps were everywhere. Slowly, a carriage was driving out of the imperial city. The imperial guards guarding the gate immediately stopped it. When the curtain was lifted, they saw that the emperor was sitting inside. Through the faint curtain, the imperial guard could also see that there was a man sitting besides the emperor holding a guchin. Xiao Yuan said, Don't worry, well go out for a stroll and we'll be back in a while. The imperial guards naturally didn't dare to stop him anymore. The carriage passed through the heavy and big vermilion wall. The wheels ran over the ground leaving traces in the snow, leaving behind only the sound of the horse's hooves clattering. When there was no one around, the carriage stopped. The driver took off the bamboo hat, jumped out of the carriage and went to open its door. Xiao Yuan stepped out of the carriage. While pointing out towards a box inside the carriage, he said to Yang Liuan, it's full of money. You will take Xiao Fengyue with you and go all the way to the east, there's a place called Taoyuan village at the junction of the four countries. If you settle your home down there, and sell tea or salt, you will soon become rich enough to support your family. 
Yang Liuan burst into tears and knelt down to salute him, Your Majesty's great kindness, Yang Liuan has no way of repaying it. In my next life, am willing to repay it with my own life. Xiao Yuan smiled and murmured softly, No, you've already paid me with your life in your last life. By the way, Liuan, I have something to ask from you. On the second day of February from next year, please come back and wait for a message at the post station outside the Imperial Palace. If you don't get any messages by February 15th, then you can go back. Whatever happens in the Northern Kingdom, don't worry about it. Live a good life, don't think about the Northern Kingdom ever again. Yang Liuan nodded heavily, don't worry, your majesty. I will keep it in mind. Then go. Yang Liuan and Xiao Fengyue bowed down to Xiao Yuan deeply, then they disappeared into the boundless night while driving the carriage. Xiao Yuan returned to the imperial city with a lantern in his hand. He passed by the gate and the imperial guards guarding it were shocked and frightened, Your Majesty. Why did you come back alone, where's your carriage? Xiao Yuan smiled and answered, I've exchanged it. Exchanged? Yes, I've exchanged it for two genuine hearts. With that, Xiao Yuan left humming a tone, completely ignoring the surprise on the imperial guards' faces. On this snowy night, the ground was covered with white frost. The cool moonlight fell on the palace, making it look completely covered in white, even in the lighting. Xiao Yuan walked a few steps and saw a man standing in front of him. He had been waiting for such a long time that there was a little bit of snow on top of his shoulders. Xiao Yuan was slightly surprised, he walked over a few steps, were you waiting for me? Yan Heqing's dark eyes looked at him and nodded slowly. Xiao Yuan walked side by side with him and asked strangely, there's imperial guards everywhere, why didn't you get caught? Yan Heqing replied, I avoid them. Xiao Yuan suddenly groaned and turned to look at Yan Heqing, oh no, I forgot to ask Xiao Fengyue who's the one that wanted to hurt you. Yan Heqing said it doesn't matter. It does matter. Xiao Yuan was distressed. This isn't the end, who knows what other things that person will do next. Although I can let Hong Xiao investigate it and she can surely find the behind the scenes within three days but, what if she does find that person and there's someone else plotting to hurt you too? Xiao Yuan mumbled to himself for a while, then he bowed his head and thought hard for quite some time. Then, he suddenly snapped his fingers and said to Yan Heqing, I have a way that will end it once and for all. Chapter, 42 After listening to Xiao Yuan's method, Yan Heqing asked lightly, wouldn't such a big move inevitably lead to a turmoil? Yes, definitely. Xiao Yuan's voice was relaxed and he was smiling happily. He stopped to play with the snow accumulated on the railings of the corridor and said, since ancient times, the in-laws' relatives have been in charge of politics. And since I don't have any concubines, some people with political power can only rely on the male concubines. How many male relatives of high-ranking officials are part of the harem? So, if I dismiss all the male concubines, I will definitely make some people go into panic. So you want to centralize power one? Suppress them? Yan Heqing looked at Xiao Yuan, who was rolling the snow and making two big snowballs, putting one on top of the other. It doesn't count. After all, they're not real concubines. They don't have official ranks too, those people are mainly there to please the emperor. I'm actually more worried about you. Me? Yes. Xiao Yuan looked around for some time. He found two thin branches and inserted them at the sides of the snowball, making it into a little snowman. Then, he looked up and smiled at Yan Heqing, right now you're part of the three thousand beauties in the harem, and these three thousand share the same love with you. Not to mention that there's someone inside the Jingyang Palace that is jealous of you and wants to see you die. You're the prince of the southern Yan Kingdom, and in the emperor of the northern kingdom. Do you know what it's called if the rumor that I love you and favor you alone comes out of the palace? It's called cluster chaos. This type of thing is too unpleasant to listen to, and I don't want you to bear this kind of judgment. So I will just dismiss the harem and let the world know that I don't like men anymore. Xiao Yuan used his fingers to draw the eyes and the mouth to the little snowman, and then clapped the snow off his hands. Yan Heqing went silent. 
His unique face was covered by the thin moonlight and his expression couldn't be seen clearly. Let's go, it's too cold outside. Xiao Yuan, who just had a good time playing with the snow a few moments ago, should already know that it was extremely cold. He wrapped his robe tightly and jokingly hit Yan Heqing with his shoulder. Yan Heqing returned to reality, and nodded gently. The next day, there was a great disturbance in Jing Yang Palace. Because earlier during the morning court, the emperor said to all the civil and military officials that he would keep filial piety three in abstinence for the late emperor's death, lasting for three years. Everyone went dumbfounded. It has already been almost a year since the late emperor died. What do you mean by filial piety? When the late emperor died, do you know how many people advised you to keep filial piety, and be away from your lovers? What does it mean that you suddenly want to fucking stay away from them? For a while, the imperial court that was fully packed with people going up and down. There were a lot of discussions and talking about everything. Xiao Yuan didn't care so much about these matters, so he asked Hong Xiao to gather all of the male concubines to the main courtyard of the Jingyang Palace. As the president of a company, Xiao Yuan knows how to appease the dismissed employees. Compensatory payment, find a way out, a happy dismissal for me and for you too. In other words, the compensation was high enough that they'll find a better way of living. Everything will be fine. Facing the group of kneeling male concubines, Hong Xiu slowly explained Xiao Yuan's preparations for filial piety, His Majesty remembers the feelings shared in bed, so he will reward all of you with a hundred liang four of gold. After you receive the reward, all of you must go back, pack your belongings and leave the imperial palace. One hundred liang of gold. This wasn't a small amount. If it weren't from the house of a high-ranking official or a merchant's home, it would be completely impossible to see so much gold in one's lifetime. But no one dared to make a move, fearing that this was the emperor's way of testing their hearts and fidelity. They were terrified of getting up, of their heads falling on the ground. Xiao Yuan smiled helplessly and couldn't help thinking the obscene impression this young monarch left on these people is a little deep-rooted, add another reward. If any of you used to be an official, you can be restored to your original post. There was a dead silence in the main courtyard of Jing Yang Palace. There was someone with his head lowered and his hands on the ground were slowly clenched into fists. The gravel on the ground bruised his fingernails and punctured his fingertips, making his palms covered in blood. Then, he stood up. Xiao Yuan looked at Qin Yu. He was still dressed in red clothes, and his look remained as charming as ever, but his expression was far different from the one he had when he first met him. Qin Yu bowed his head, and step by step, he left the courtyard in a heavy and slow manner. He never gave Xiao Yuan a look from the beginning to the end. Xiao Yuan always felt that he should say something to Qin Yu, but he didn't know what to say. It's like in the original book. When the young monarch saw Qin Yu for the first time, his mouth was wide open, but he was like a prepubescent boy. His face blushed for a long time, and in the end, he couldn't utter a word. And again, like in the original book. When the northern kingdom was destroyed, the young monarch poisoned all of the male concubines. But when Qin Yu was about to drink the poisoned wine, he slapped the porcelain cup out of his hands. Then, he opened his mouth to say something, but instead, he silently sobbed. Still, like in the original book. When the young monarch was about to escape to the north, countless people told him that Qin Yu was going to betray him. But he just snorted coldly and didn't respond. And more like in the original book. Even after the young monarch was betrayed by Qin Yu and was captured by Yan Heqing in front of the imperial palace's gate, he still struggled and shouted, You tell Qin Yu. That too. What was behind those words, he didn't say them until he died. After Qin Yu left peacefully, many people started to stand up and walk away in a hurry. At the end, there were five people left behind kneeling on the ground, four of them were shivering with fear. But there was a particular young man sitting with his back straight, his eyes lowered and his hands clenched into a fist. His kneeling posture was so unique that Xiao Yuan couldn't help but stare at him more. Were you sent here by Wanning Wang Ye? Xiao Yuan asked the four terrified men. The four men looked at each other and nodded. You can go back. Wanning Wang Ye won't do anything to you. 
Xiao Yuan kindly persuaded them. The four men were still hesitant, but Hong Xiu grew impatient, so she maliciously said, Why are you waiting to get lost? Do you want to lose your heads? Only then did the four men finally get up and hurriedly left the courtyard in panic. The only one left behind was the young man, calmly kneeling without uttering a single word. Hong Xiu was about to threaten him with vicious words when she was stopped by Xiao Yuan. Your Majesty. The young man slowly said, I don't want the 100 liang of gold. Then what do you want? Xiao Yuan became more interested in him. The young man raised his head, his eyes were like burning torches five, I want to be a soldier. Become a soldier. Did he hear right? Young man, you're no longer a clear stream, you're now a mountain waterfall. Xiao Yuan asked, What's your name? The young man replied, Xie Chengui. Xiao Yuan breathed in abruptly, and he didn't slow down. Choking with his own saliva, he hammered his chest heavily, and then said, Xie Xie what? Xie Chengui. Xie. Chen. Gui. Why would such a strong, Hot bloodied man be selected to be a soft and charming man to warm the imperial bed. Xie Chengui was a legend in the original book. In the original book, after General Sun got angry with the emperor and returned home, there were only two generals left in the northern kingdom. However, when the enemy is putting you under pressure, from the two generals, one was defeated by Yan Heqing, became a traitor, and joined him. The other general packed up his belongings and ran away when the enemy approached. Under the circumstances of Yin and Yang, the task of leading the army to defeat the enemy was handed over to Xie Chengui. Unfortunately, Xie Chengui was too young to be trusted by the soldiers. In the end, the good northern army rebelled and escaped. As a result, Xie Chengui relied on his own strength and led the disabled and injured soldiers to defeat the enemy. They blocked Yan Heqing at the border of the northern kingdom for about half a month. It can be said that he was a strong opponent in the career of Yan Heqing as a male lead. For the Northern Kingdom, Xie Chengui was like electricity. He was like the light. He's the legendary myth among the group of blind and barbaric villains. At this time, Xiao Yuan couldn't help but scream inside his heart, Why are you in Jingyang Palace? Why aren't you in the military camp? You can't die in early life. Will you be able to fight for the Northern Kingdom by then? Will you be directly rubbed to the ground by Yan Heqing? Chapter, 43 Xiao Yuan then asked Hong Xiu about him, and found out that ever since Xie Chengui was in Jingyang Palace, he had to rely on himself. The Xie family was a military family. Generation after generation, they served the Northern Kingdom, and every single one of them were loyal and good. Xie Chengui's father and brother died fighting in the battlefield, and when it was his turn, the young monarch ascended to the throne. The Xie family wanted Xie Chengui to go to the imperial palace to meet the emperor before joining the army. In the end, the young monarch was stupid. He thought that Xie Chengui was a servant from the Xie family and arranged him to be sent to the Jingyang palace. In the original book, when the old general son returned to his hometown, he was still very worried about the country and the people. He wanted to promote several juniors, and so, he thought of Xie Chengui from the Xie family. Then, General Sun ran to the Xie family only to find out, oh, he's at Jingyang Palace. The old general spit out blood and almost had a heart attack. In the end, he wrote a letter remonstrating to the emperor, took him out of the palace, and sent him to the barracks. That's what happened later. But now, General Sun didn't return to his hometown, and he's still leading his own troops. Unfortunately, he didn't thought about this issue. In the end, Xie Chengui had been forgotten in Jingyang Palace. Now it was Xiao Yuan's turn to spit out blood and have a heart attack. When Xie Chengui raised his head to look again at Xiao Yuan, he saw that his expression was gloomy. Although he thought that Xiao Yuan wouldn't allow it, he was young and stubborn if his majesty doesn't allow it, then I don't want this one hundred tails of gold. When war breaks out, there will be a need to recruit soldiers, and so, I will join the army then. Who will not allow it? Even if you refuse to go, he will still throw you into the barracks because of your military capabilities. While he was thinking of making him leave, 
Xiao Yuan asked with a smile, what if it remains peaceful, and there's no need for wars? Xie Chengue thought for a while and said, then we will march towards the south, recapture the southern Yan kingdom and then we will go to the eastern Wu. Now, with a million soldiers in the north, surely we can expand our territory and stand superior from the rest of the world. Xiao Yuan found himself speechless. After a while he said, in a few days, it'll take you to see General Sun, so you must prepare at once. Xie Chengui's eyes were shining and he knelt down on the ground, thank you, your majesty. Xiao Yuan came out of the courtyard and went straight to Yan Heqin's wing room. Yan Heqin was packing up his things because Xiao Yuan had announced hell take filial piety, Jingyang Palace may have to become a Daoist temple or perhaps a shrine. Actually, Yan Heqin didn't have much luggage, just a few thin clothes, a long sword and a jade hairpin. It could be said that more than packing up, he was just killing time, looking to do something out of boredom. When Xiao Yuan came, Yan Heqin was sitting at the table wiping the blade of the sword. Xiao Yuan walked in without asking for permission, ah, young boy, he's so hot-blooded. Really, he has such a backbone to lead a million armored people. Like moths, they will follow his bright righteous ardor to train. His bones and meat will feed the belly of the corrupt officials. Yan Heqin has long been accustomed to Xiao Yuan's self-talk in the early morning, and Xiao Yuan also knows that he can speak without fear in front of Yan Heqin. Xiao Yuan sat down at the table slightly decadent. He rested his head on his arms and while resting on his stomach, he looked up at Yan Heqin, after the demobilization is over, you may be arranged to go back to the House of Internal Affairs. Yan Heqin nodded and put the sword back to its sheath. Xiao Yuan asked him with a smile, Eunuch Xiao of the House of Internal Affairs wants to harm you, aren't you afraid? Yan Heqin replied indefinitely, is it useful to be afraid of him? I mean it. What if one day I don't look out for you or don't pay attention to you anymore, what would you do if he breaks your hands and feet? Xiao Yuan raised his head pretending to be intimidating. Why do you care so much for me? Yan Heqing suddenly asked him instead. Because I want to give you a favorable impression. To avoid being killed by you in the future. Xiao Yuan didn't answer him. Instead, he held his head thinking that if it wasn't for him, Yan Heqing and Princess Yunying would have fallen in love with each other by now, which caused that Yan Heqing had never seen his first wife yet. Xiao Yuan must take responsibility for this. Even more in these recent couple of days, Yan Heqing was no longer just a few lines of a text inside Xiao Yuan's heart. Instead, he saw him as a man with flesh and blood, someone that could feel joy and sorrow. Little by little, he wrote himself, minimally but also with heavy pressure inside Xiao Yuan's heart, finding a place and occupying a seat. Xiao Yuan raised his head and said with a smiling face, Yan Heqing, why don't you become my imperial bodyguard? They'll be able to protect you, and they'll never let anyone hurt you. Yan Heqing looked at him. The smooth and soft skin of his face was extremely beautiful, but what he actually saw in him wasn't his appearance. He saw his pure eyes of black jade, they were always crystal clear, smiling, warm and soft. Yan Heqing then remembered that right before the complete destruction of the southern Yan kingdom, when the imperial palace's building was about to collapse. At that moment, his mother held his hand with a tight grip. Her nails embedded into his flesh and blood started to flow, as if weeping, her voice was so full of hate that she could almost spit out blood, after this, all the roads must be walked on by yourself. No one can protect you, but you have to keep on living. You must live. After saying this, Yan Heqing's mother jumped into the deep well of the palace without hesitation. To keep on living was so tiring and so hard. Even his mother couldn't bear it, but he had to keep himself alive, it was truly strange. But also because of that sentence, when the prisoners from the southern Yan kingdom came to the northern kingdom, and they had to walk with heavy shackles, even when the soldiers threw dirt at him and laughed loudly after saying something disrespectful. Even though the prisons in the northern kingdom were like hell full of spirits, even if he was kicked to the ground and his head was pressed in the dirty water, and the iron whip fell mercilessly on his naked body, he never actually thought of committing suicide. It's hard to live on with these three simple words. Yan He Ching. Yan He Ching. When Yan He Ching returned to reality, 
he saw that Xiao Yuan was shouting at him while grabbing on his wrist. What are you doing? Isn't that painful? Xiao Yuan was anxious and helpless. He gently opened the fingers of Yan Heqing, only then did Yan Heqing realize that he had clenched his hand into a tight fist and that his palm was scratched and bleeding. Xiao Yuan found a clean silk cloth to bandage Yan Heqing's hand and to stop the bleeding. Xiao Yuan knew that it was probably because of his words that Yan Heqing thought of his mother. But before he killed himself, he was used to taking care of others, so he blurted out those words without thinking too much. In the end, those words triggered Yan Heqing's traumatic past. Yan Heqing looked at the blood-stained silk cloth around his hand, held it tight and then opened it, I. Xiao Yuan said without hesitation, you are what you are. Pack up your things and move to the second room in the imperial palace. The second room was on the west side of Xiao Yuan's imperial bedchamber. It was also the residence of the imperial bodyguards. Yan Heqing held the silk cloth with both hands, and then he looked at Xiao Yuan, his cold eyes blended into those warm eyes. He imperceptibly raised the corners of his mouth, and the tone of his voice increased, okay. Chapter, 44 In February, the snow was covering the old General Sun's official residence. The old General Sun, who rarely took a rest, was coughing and saying that he was failing as a hero. Madam Sun patted him on the back scolding him, your old arms and legs still run every day to the barracks for training. Can't you take a good rest for a few days? General Sun had been on the battlefield for many years, galloping around the world, making everyone around him fear him, but he. He was afraid of his wife. Keep it down in case someone hears you. General Sun blushed, and his voice was similar to the one of a mosquito. Madam Sun slapped him on the back and said, to hell with keeping it down. Did you drink the medicine or not? Yes, yes. General Sun muttered. Humph. Madam Sun put one hand on her hips. Her hair was completely silver, but her appearance still gave the impression of a coquettish young girl. Suddenly, a young manservant came from outside making an announcement, Darren One, General Lee came asking for advice. General Sun quickly cleared his throat and regained his authority, let him wait for me at the reception hall, he'll go now. The young man replied affirmatively and quickly retreated. Madam Sun helped General Sun get dressed, and walking side by side, they approached the reception hall. In the reception hall stood a young man with upright features. He was eight feet tall, and he had an aura of flourishing might. When he saw the old General Sun, he knelt down first, and then stood up to help his elder. Wooding, Xianji too, why did you come so suddenly? Is something wrong with the barracks? General Sun was nervous. Li Wooding shook his head, I heard that the general was unwell, so I searched for some tonics three. With such a leisure mind, it's better to train your troops. The old general son scolded him. Li Wooding knelt down with his fist clenched, the general's lesson is right. Oh, you, the young man was being kind. Madam Sun was angry at him, and then, she smiled at Li Wooding, Wooding has good intentions. On the surface, General Sun blew his beard and glared with anger, but behind his back, he secretly pulled Madam Sun's sleeve. Madam Sun clearly understood his intentions, so she quickly said, Wooding, get up, there's no need to kneel down. Suddenly, a young manservant came to report, His Majesty is coming. The three people in the reception hall were shocked. Lee Wooding wanted to avoid arousing suspicions, General Sun, ill take my leave. The old general's son waved his hand, and Lee Wooding left the reception hall. He wanted to go through the side door, but he didn't expect to collide with the emperor, so he had to kneel down and pay his respect, Wei Chen Lee Wooding pays his respects to his majesty. Xiao Yuan just told Xie Chengwen to wait for him outside, and out of nowhere, someone bowed and kneeled in front of him. For a long time he couldn't react, and after coming out of his initial shock, he repeated the man's name twice, and then, sighed inside his heart. Li Wooding. This, 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 isn't this the second male? In the original book, after General Sun got so angry at the emperor that he returned to his hometown, there were two candidates for the general's position. One of them was a close friend of General Sun, Li Wooding. Li Wooding is a brave and resourceful man. 
and the other one was just another good for nothing for that one a military post due to his relationship with one Inwanya. Attempting nothing and accomplishing nothing 5, relying on his force to bully others 6. In any case, the general's position should have been given to Lee Wooding, the old general's son's close friend. However, the young monarch, who was daily courting disaster, gave that position to that Fan Tong instead. From then on, the Northern Kingdom's army had become sloppy the soldiers didn't have any motivation, and even the scandals that they were oppressing the common people were being reported almost every day. When Yan Heqing led his army to fight over the territory, Li Wooding was sent to the front line to defend against the enemy by General Fan Tong. And his strategy was to not give the army any food. On a snowy and freezing day, the soldiers on the front line were not given any rations, they were simply forced to die. Li Wooding left the following sentence behind him, It's not worth to sacrifice our lives for a country where treacherous officials are in power. Then, he led his troops to Yan Heqing's side. Yes, he's a traitor. Later, when Yan Heqing ruled the whole world, Li Wooding made great contributions to his cause. However, this is a stallion novel. And he's the right hand of the stallion protagonist. Generally speaking, the last part of this book goes something like this, while Yan Heqing was flirting with a young woman, Li Wooding was studying the art of war. While Yan Heqing was unlocking a new posture in bed, he's studying the art of war. When Yan Heqing is looking for a new girl, he's studying the art of war. Yan Heqing has received a new member to his harem, and Li Wooding is still studying the art of war. Then, when Yan Heqing said, let's fight the Eastern Wu. He just said, let's go. After the territory of the Eastern Wu was captured, Yan Heqing continued to flirt with the young girls of the Eastern Wu, and Li Wooding, the right hand, continued to study the art of war in the Eastern Wu. While Yan Heqing was surrounded by so many beautiful women that it resembled clouds. What surrounded the right hand of the protagonist was a pile of military books. They're fighting for the same cause, however, how come the difference between them is so big? It's too awful. Although, as the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom, Xiao Yuan resented Li Wooding as a reader, how could he do anything but laugh? Get up. Xiao Yuan coughed softly to cover up his smile. What are you doing in the general's official residence? Answering to his majesty. Li Wooding got up. I came to pay a visit to General Sun. Xiao Yuan nodded and went towards the reception hall of the general's official residence. Madam Sun had already left, and the old general's son was kneeling on the ground. Xiao Yuan quickly picked him up and helped him to sit down on the chair, then, he explained the intentions of his visit. The youngest son of the Xie family, Xie Chengui. General Sun was surprised. Yes, it's him. Since he was appointed by the emperor, General Sun naturally didn't dare to neglect, so he quickly got up and went to meet him. Unexpectedly, the young manservant outside the door suddenly ran in with a roar, Darren, it's bad, Darren. General Li and His Majesty's companion are FF Fai Fight. Xiao Yuan, though the river flows eastward seven. The young manservant finally managed to say it in one breath, they're fighting. Chapter, 45. General Sun was really stunned at first, then his face became gloomy and he rushed out in a hurry. Fighting? The emperor is still here. These young brats, do they want to die? Xiao Yuan followed closely, hurrying to keep up with him. Fighting? Is it really so interesting? Then let's go and watch the fun. The two of them rushed to the courtyard and found that Xie Chengui's arms were tightly held by Li Wooding, he couldn't move at all. Li Wooding helplessly said, All right. The victory has been decided. Xie Chengui gritted his teeth fiercely. While struggling to break free, he managed to turn around and punched up. But Li Wooding evaded it easily, he held the fist, twisted it, and then pressed Xie Chengui to the ground. General Sun's face went blue, Li Wooding. What are you doing? What is this scandal? What is this scandal ah? Li Wooding panicked and quickly released Xie Chengui, then he knelt on the ground, Your Majesty, General Sun, I. Without leaving him to finish his words, Xie Chengui knelt beside him, Your Majesty, General Sun, I was the one that insisted General Li on fighting. This was, in fact, 
the truth. Originally, Lee Wunning planned to go straight home, but he was suddenly interrupted by someone. Are you General Lee? Xie Chengui looked at him with surprise and fear in his eyes. You are Li Wooding was suspicious. After Xie Chengui introduced himself, Li Wooding suddenly realized something, Xie Chengui, I know you. Why you know me? Xie Chengui was extremely happy. I met you when you were ten years old. Damn, I actually went to your house just to drink wedding wine. Li Wooding chuckled, his face was majestic, and although he was laughing, it wasn't with a bad intention. Xie Chengui gathered courage, took Li Wooding's arm, and excitedly said, Li, General Li, I've admired you for such a long time. I want to be your deputy. Li Wooding was stunned at first, he rubbed his head and smiled embarrassedly. Actually, he looked quite silly, all right, all right, but my deputies can beat me. You have to work hard. Li Wooding spitted nonsense and the young man was completely excited at once. After patting his shoulder for encouragement, he was ready to leave once again. Who would have thought that Xie Chengui wouldn't let him go just like that? Instead, he started to fight with him without uttering a word. After listening to the explanation, Xiao Yuan asked Xie Chengui with wide eyes, Do you admire him? Xie Chengui nodded firmly. Xiao Yuan was so startled that he almost bit his tongue off. How can Xie Chengui admire Li Wuding? In the original book, the intersection between them was during the half month of Xie Chengui's guarding the Northern Kingdom border. Li Wuding, the traitor, sent someone to persuade him to surrender like he did. Xie Chengui looked up at the sky with a smile, then he laid down and gave up with a sigh Go back and tell Li Wuding, that man, that as long as I'm alive, I will never let the enemy's cavalry step foot into the Northern Kingdom's territory. The hypocrites that dare to disturb the morale of the troops are disgusting. Go. Now looking at this, if Xie Chengui admired Li Wuding ever since he was a child, this is actually a little bit sad. Seeing that Xiao Yuan wasn't upset, General Sun angrily scolded Li Wuding with a few words, and then let him take his leave. Li Wuding saluted with a fist one, got up and walked for a few steps, but then. He suddenly returned, Your Majesty, General Sun, the youngest son of Xie's family has an extraordinary military force, and I happen to lack a deputy so I beg his majesty to allow him to become my deputy. He expressed his thoughts. What happened? The plot of these two is going in the opposite direction. If you contain them in the same place, what will happen next is truly a mystery. What a decadent moral. It's indeed a paradoxical situation. Really. It's so amusing. Xiao Yuan nodded, yes. Xiao Yuan returned to the palace from the general's official residence, but instead of directly going to the imperial bedchamber, he went towards the secondary room. Usually, most of the imperial guards don't often live in the palace, so that's why they take turns. But the imperial bodyguards are different, they have to be around the emperor all the time. The secondary room is not as fancy as the Jingyang Palace's wing rooms. This one is simple and clean, but it's comfortable to live in. Xiao Yuan knocked on the door, but no one answered after a long time. Xiao Yuan snorted in surprise and decided to go back to the imperial bedchamber. But after walking a few meters away from the secondary room, he stopped. At the entrance of the imperial bedchamber, there were several imperial bodyguards, and Xiao Yuan stared at one of them. As if feeling that he was looking at him, Yan Heqing turned his head and stared back. He was wearing a soldier uniform with red lapels, a three-finger wide belt that had a pattern of burning clouds, and black boots. His black silk-like hair was tied in a high ponytail, giving him an imposing aura that was out of the ordinary. And between his eyebrows, is the boundless wind and the moon. Xiao Yuan suddenly began to worry about the little girls in the palace. Although they haven't reached the second half of the story, Yan Heqin's face value is completely against the rules. Xiao Yuan smiled at Yan Heqing in a friendly way, and Yan Heqing suddenly looked away. Ah! What's wrong with him? Xiao Yuan, who didn't know what just happened, walked over to the door of the imperial bedchamber. When the imperial bodyguards saw that the emperor came back, they knelt down in unison. Xiao Yuan said with a smile that the comrades had been working hard, and then glanced at Yan Heqing two more times. 
As a result, he was able to notice that the sleeve of his right hand was slightly turned up, forming an unsightly fold. Xiao Yuan passed by the several imperial bodyguards that were kneeling and bowing their heads. When he walked to Yan Heqing's side, he made sure that no one was paying attention to him. Then, he reached out quietly and fixed his sleeve for him. After that he put his hand behind his back and continued walking towards his bedchamber. If Xiao Yuan turned around at this instant, he would have been able to see that Yan Heqing pursed his mouth and bent the corner of his mouth shallowly. Ever since she didn't need to take charge of the Jingyang Palace, Hong Xiao was able to take care of everything in serving Xiao Yuan. But in recent days, her work was full of mistakes, she looked very absent-minded. Early this morning, when Xiao Yuan touched the cold water inside the basin, he asked Hong Xiao, What's wrong Hong Xiao, are you sick? Hong Xiao's face turned pale, she then knelt on the ground, This maidservant was careless, I beg his majesty to punish me. Xiao Yuan quickly helped her up, get up quickly. If you're sick, then hurry up and go to the Taiyi Hall to get checked. Hong Xiao shook her head, answering to his majesty, Hong Xiao is not ill. So why have you been so anxious and preoccupied recently? Hong Xiao bit her lower lip, hesitated for a long time, and suddenly looked up, Your majesty, Hong Xiao has something to ask for. Xiao Yuan said softly and gently, Don't worry. Your Majesty, a few days ago this maidservant received a message from outside the palace that my sister is seriously ill. This maid this maidservant wanted to go out of the palace to see her. Hong Xiao lowered her head. She held her head with both hands, anxiously waiting for the answer. There was an unwritten rule in this deep palace, the maids that enter the palace can never leave it. After all, their duty is to always serve the princess and the emperor. If they leave the palace there's three things to be afraid of. The first one is that the secrets of the palace will be leaked outside, the second one is that they will be bought by someone with bad intentions, and the third one is that they're not able to stand the loneliness of the deep palace, so they will run away. Hong Xiao didn't hold any hope at all. Xiao Yuan suddenly slapped the table and scared her all over, don't be angry your majesty, this maid. Why didn't you say that your sister was ill earlier? You should go back and see her as soon as possible. Yes, wait a moment, it'll give you a hand. Go to the Taiyi Hall and take an imperial physician with you to see your sister. Xiao Yuan said while looking for paper and ink. Hong Xiu heard Xiao Yuan's words with a stunned face, and then her eyes became red and choked with sobs, Thank you, Your Majesty. When she was at the age of 18, as the oldest daughter, she didn't hesitate to enter the palace for the sake of her siblings. Five years had passed since then, and she knew that she would be buried in this cold deep palace her whole life. But now it seems that she doesn't regret it. On the afternoon of the same day, Hong Xiao left the palace with the emperor's written instructions with her. That night though, Xiao Yuan wasn't surprised to find himself with. Insomnia. Chapter 46. Normally, Hong Xiao stood by the bed waiting for him to fall asleep before leaving, but now, there's no breathing sound beside him, so Xiao Yuan can't sleep. After counting sheep, reciting mathematical formulas, studying English speeches, and others, he still can't rouse any sleepiness. Xiao Yuan rolled over and climbed up, no longer supporting his body. He pondered for a few seconds, and then, went out of the window. The window guard was a young man that had just been appointed as an imperial bodyguard. When he saw that the emperor wasn't sleeping in the middle of the night, he suddenly turned away from the window scared to death. Xiao Yuan was wearing a white undergarment and his long hair was scattered, he grinned at the young imperial bodyguard showing his white teeth, my friend. The young imperial bodyguard rolled his eyes and saw his dead grandfather calling him by his nickname across a river full of flowers at the other side. Xiao Yuan woke up the young imperial bodyguard, and he panicked, Your Majesty what, what are you doing? I can't fall asleep. They'll go out to write poems and watch the moon. Xiao Yuan waved his hand, don't panic over such a small scene. My friend, can you recite poems? Come, let's face the moon and sing a song. The young imperial bodyguard was so frightened that he gave up thinking, he raised his eyebrows and hummed for a long time, then he said, the moon is round, like a big jade plate. 
Xiao Yuan soothed his palm, wonderful. It's neat, simple and easy to understand, hits straight to the heart. And now, add two more sentences. The young imperial bodyguard boasted and flustered, if you look closely, it will look more like a scallion cake. Xiao Yuan asked, are you hungry? The young imperial bodyguard nodded while rubbing his belly, then he suddenly realized what he was doing, felt panicked, knelt down and cowed out, Your Majesty, Wei Chen is talking nonsense and is lazy, I ask His Majesty to punish me. Xiao Yuan didn't know whether to cry or laugh, get up, and go get something to eat. Where are you going, Your Majesty? The young imperial bodyguard raised his head and saw Xiao Yuan walking away in a leisurely way. He'll go find someone to talk about life. Xiao Yuan walked towards the entrance of the main hall, standing far away. Because he didn't see Yan Heqing, he walked quietly towards the secondary room. There wasn't any patrol around the secondary room where the imperial bodyguards lived. Xiao Yuan swaggered to the door of Yan Heqing's room, raised his hand to knock but then stopped. It was so late that Yan Heqing must have fallen asleep. Xiao Yuan withdrew his hand and turned to leave he was only wearing a thin coat, so when the cold wind blew at night, he shivered and sneezed. It was so cold that he quickly went back. Xiao Yuan rubbed his arms and the door behind him suddenly opened. Xiao Yuan turned around and grinned at the man that opened the door, why haven't you gone to sleep yet? I patrolled the first half of the night and just came back. Yan Heqing took off his outer robe and wrapped it around Xiao Yuan tightly, what's wrong? Did something happen? It's no big deal. Xiao Yuan followed Yan Heqing into his room. The light inside was dim, except for the bright moonlight outside, there was only one candlelight flickering on the table. It's just that I can't sleep. Can't sleep. Yan Heqing closed the door behind him. Yes, I have an illness. I really do have an illness. Xiao Yuan repeated with a smile. I can't fall asleep without the sound of breathing around me. I need someone to accompany me. Yan Heqing stood silent, his eyes were hidden in the dark, after a while he finally asked, how did you manage to fall asleep before? He doesn't know why, but Xiao Yuan felt that Yan Heqing's tone of voice wasn't good, Hong Xiao will stay at the bedside waiting for me to fall asleep. This night I couldn't sleep because Hong Xiao left the palace. Yan Heqing calmed his mind and said, when will she come back to the palace? Tomorrow. Then you can rest with me tonight. Ha! Huh. Is that really okay? Xiao Yuan was pretending to be reserved, but in fact, he had already taken off his coat and laid down on the bed. After all, suffering from insomnia is really difficult to bear. Yan Heqing picked up the candle and without saying a word, he began to set the table and wooden bench. What are you doing? Xiao Yuan, wrapped in the quilt, asked incredulously. I'm going to sleep here. Yan Heqing squeezed his clothes tight and started to lie on top of the table. Xiao Yuan lifted the quilt, come here, sleep on the couch, he'll sleep there. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Yan Heqing, in this world you're the only one that knows that I'm not the emperor, so you can treat me as an ordinary person and you can do these kind of trivial matters with me. Either I sleep on the table or we sleep together, you choose. Yan Heqing raised his head and stared at Xiao Yuan for a while, then Yan Heqing slowly walked towards the bed and looked down, are you sure? Come in. Xiao Yuan shrinks into the bed to make room for Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing took off his coat and laid down on the couch. How big could a chamberlain's bed be? The two big men squeezed themselves to sleep, naturally, they could only lay sideways. Xiao Yuan clung tightly to the wall, listened to the breathing sound beside him and closed his eyes ready to sleep, but suddenly he heard Yan Heqing's voice, why do you have that illness? Do you really want to know? You know everything about me, but I don't know anything about you. Xiao Yuan didn't expect that Yan Heqing would care about this. After feeling uncomfortable and changing his position, he thought about how to approach the subject, and finally said, I'm an illegitimate son. My mother, after being abandoned by my father, took my brother and me with her, after that we had a very difficult life. When I was a child, I was in poor health. 
I often woke up with nightmares, and then I will cry out of breath, so my mother will always accompany me to sleep. She used to say to me don't be afraid, if you listen to my breathing, you will know that I am by your side. But later. Xiao Yuan suddenly paused, and then continued, later, when I was six years old, I woke up in the middle of the night and went to listen to her breathing like I habitually did, but I ended up finding that I couldn't hear anything. That night, she overdosed on sleeping pills, she killed herself. Do you want to know what's the funniest part? Xiao Yuan turned over and looked at Yan Heqing. In the dark, his eyes showed anger but he wasn't angry, they were hateful but without hatred it was more like a big senseless self-deprecation smashing into his own heart. The day after my mother died my so-called father came to see her. He was kicked out of his house because his wife discovered the things had done and the fact that he had cheated on her. Also, just because his wife was unable to give birth to a son, he recalled that my mother, my brother and I existed. But because my brother was born with a leg disability, he didn't want to take care of him, so my brother and I were separated by our father. Afterwards, I took revenge on my father on behalf of my mother and went looking to find my brother. But when I found him, I discovered that he had mental problems. He believed that I had left him on my own initiative and he wanted me to die all the time Xiao Yuan's eyes darkened and he continued softly. I've spent the rest of my life taking care of him, but in the end, he never stopped hating me at all. Yan Heqing remained silent for a long time, then, he stretched his hand to Xiao Yuan and caressed his back. The sudden comfort made Xiao Yuan stunned, he twisted his body a little embarrassedly, don't worry, it was a long time ago. Afterwards I didn't let my father, who was not better than an animal, have an easy time. Well, you can sleep now. Yan Heqing said. Sweet dreams. Like venting his nameless sorrow, Xiao Yuan just closed his eyes and finally fell asleep. In the early morning of the next day, the sunlight was weak and the air was cold. Yan Heqing opened his eyes and found that Xiao Yuan was already awake. He was half supporting his body on the bed, his black silk-like hair was falling down like a cascade from his shoulders to his waist, and a warm smile adorned his eyes and mouth. Yan Heqing was about to speak but he was suddenly silenced by Xiao Yuan. He covered Yan Heqing's lips with one hand and extended a finger against his own lips with the other one, then he softly said, Hush, listen. Yan Heqing held his breath and listened attentively, he heard several birds singing. The sound of singing was melodious and clear, breaking through the clouds. Yan Heqing saw that Xiao Yuan was looking at him with a smile, his pure black pupils were fascinating, like they were capturing his soul, then, he said, the warbler is singing and the swallow is dancing one. Spring is coming. Chapter, 47 Spring is coming, everything is reviving, and it's time for animals to meet again mating season. The early spring of the northern kingdom was covered with thin frost everywhere, and instead of warmth, it brought coldness to the bones. As the snow melted, the northern kingdom had two major events. The first one, the birthday of the young emperor is approaching, which is a great event of universal celebration. Although Xiao Yuan prepared everything to be simple in order to keep filial piety, some feasts for singing and dancing are still under intense preparation. The second one, Xiao Yuan knowing the plot, had been uneasy about ever since the end of winter. This event was that the Western Shu Kingdom will send envoys to make friends with each other. In the original book, the young monarch was seeking trouble as usual. He was disdainful of making friends with foreign nations, so he rejected the envoys of the Western Shu Kingdom. This annoyed the Western Shu Kingdom. In the end, when Yan Heqing attacked the Northern Kingdom, he joined forces with the Western Shu Kingdom. In the original book, this plot passed very quickly mainly to help the Western Shu Kingdom and Yan Heqing to become allies and join forces. Naturally, Xiao Yuan wouldn't look for troubles. At the beginning of spring, during the spring festival, the envoys of the Western Shu Kingdom were respectfully greeted into the imperial city. According to the protocol, the Northern Kingdom will place the nine guests to sit at the top of the main hall, and then a banquet will be arranged at the palace hall to entertain the envoys of the Western Shu Kingdom. All of these ceremonies were extremely respectful, so it could be seen that Xiao Yuan attached great value to them. In the main hall, in order to show respect, Xiao Yuan was dressed in a complicated formal attire and arrived in advance. 
When he sat down, he almost stumbled over his broad sleeve, but Yan Heqing, who was standing right beside him, had quick eyes and hands, so he reached out to help him. These formal clothes are too troublesome. If it weren't for Hong Xiu, I wouldn't be able to dress myself for three whole days. Xiao Yuan, in a low voice, whispered to Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing nodded his head, without saying anything. Xiao Yuan was sitting properly, he was looking nervous and expecting. In the original book, the Western Shu Kingdom has an extremely particular existence. Because it has a particularly powerful backer, honorable female members. Throughout the Western Shu Kingdom, there were many female generals and emperors. Such a sense of setting was naturally enjoyed by the male lead Yan Heqing. One third of Yan Heqing's harem were the women from the Western Shu Kingdom. The princess, the prime minister and the number one scholar one were all in his hands. Xiao Yuan estimated that the emissary sent by the Western Shu Kingdom should have one of Yan Heqing's wives, but he didn't know which wife would it be. However, it doesn't matter which little wife is coming, she won't be able to enter Yan Heqing's eyes for the time being. After all, the protagonist halo of Princess Yongming is still here in the palace. Xiao Yuan tuned his head and smiled at Yan Heqing. If the protagonist dares to be unfaithful to the female lead, he will be still cut into pieces by the readers. Yan Heqing was bewildered by his smile, and he was wondering if his clothes were perhaps too tight, which caused Xiao Yuan's head to lack oxygen. According to the reports from outside, the envoys of the Western Shu Kingdom had arrived, and Xiao Yuan was full of energy, sitting in an upright posture. A group of people came from the outside of the hall with gifts packed in boxes. Sure enough, most of the women had graceful slender bodies and their facial features were beautiful. The envoy was led by a woman dressed in red. She was dressed in a royal dress with a corset and no wrists, there wasn't any complicated decoration on her body. The underclothes were embroidered with white clouds and fire patterns, she looked proud and unrestrained, her hair was tied in a high ponytail. Her phoenix eyes were slightly raised, and between the waves of her eyes, was indescribable heroism. Standing at the center of the hall, she bowed down in front of Xiao Yuan with her fist resting in her hand too she was acting appropriately to the occasion, natural and relaxed. She said, Xiao Pingyang from the Western Shu Kingdom pays a visit to the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom on behalf of the Western Shu Kingdom, hoping that the two countries can make good friends with each other for generations. Xiao Yuan stood up abruptly, his eyes were wide open, and all the people present in the hall were immediately scared. Your Majesty. Hong Xiu, who was waiting at his side, shouted softly. Cough he forced down the stormy waves inside his heart, Xiao Yuan sat down and said, I'm all right, I'm just really happy. To hell with happiness ah. What the fuck three ah. Before all this, for the envoys of the Western Shu Kingdom, Xiao Yuan had thought about countless possibilities. But. He. Really. Didn't. Expected. Her. To. Come. Xiao Pingyang Ah. Xiao Pingyang was the second female lead in the original book, The History of the Four Kingdoms. Since Princess Yongming was the first woman that Yan Heqing fell in love with, she was worshipped as the first female lead by readers. However, it wasn't Xiao Pingyang's fault that she was the second woman that Yan Heqing took a fancy at. The reason why she's in this novel with all kinds of girls flying over the world, and that no one dares to shake her position as the second female lead is because. She's the last wife of Yan Heqing. She becomes Yan Heqing's empress after he finally unified the countries into one nation. Chapter, 48 The magic of Xiao Pingyang doesn't lie in the fact that she made the stallion protagonist stop accepting more members into the harem. After all, even if he doesn't add more girls into his harem anymore, the girls that Yan Heqing once brought were enough for him to die one. The most amazing thing about Xiao Pingyang, was that her and Yan Heqing's bedtime scenes were never written in the original book. They don't exist. Not a single sentence, nor a single word, nor a punctuation mark, nothing. In the second half of the novel, almost every member of the harem and Yan Heqing rolled the sheets for three whole chapters. But only Xiao Pingyang didn't. This was also the most incomprehensible thing for the readers. 
In Yan He King's harem, apart from Xiao Pingyang, only Princess Yongning had such treatment. But Princess Yongning didn't have the opportunity to be intimate with Yan He Qing because she was killed by the author. So, why did Xiao Pingyang, the Empress, never been described in a bed scene? Moreover, Xiao Pingyang's role in the original book was also quite extraordinary. Although she's the princess of the Western Shu Kingdom, she has another identity, general of the Western Shu Kingdom. Yes, she's a young but powerful female general. When Yan He Qing attacked the Northern Kingdom, it was Xiao Pingyang who was sent by the Western Shu Kingdom to support him. That was the first time that Xiao Pingyang and Yan He Qing met in the original book. Like a clear stream or water, Xiao Pingyang naturally won't be like the other girls where in the first chapter they met and in the second chapter she's pushed down. In short, after helping Yan He Qing defeat the Northern Kingdom, Xiao Pingyang returned back home. Just when the readers thought that this heroic girl wouldn't become a part of the harem, the author raised their giant palm and slapped everyone in the face. In the original book, when Yan He Qing successfully recovered the Southern Yan Kingdom, captured the Northern Kingdom and the Eastern Wu Kingdom one after another. Everyone thought that Yan He Qing would continue to attack the Western Shu Kingdom, but contrary to that, Yan He Qing didn't make a move. Just when everyone thought that the pattern was one big country after a smaller one, Xiao Pingyang ascended the throne and became the emperor of the Western Shu Kingdom. Then, Yan He Qing sent troops to fight over it. And when everyone thought that when they encountered each other at the battlefield they would fight for their lives, unexpectedly, Yan He Qing asked Xiao Pingyang to marry him. On the battlefield. Everyone was so confused. What the hell is happening? It was even more confusing, because Xiao Pingyang knew that she couldn't beat Yan He Qing, and she didn't want the people of the Western Shu Kingdom to be trampled by war. In the end, she agreed to Yan He Qing's proposal and married into the Northern Kingdom becoming the Empress. Naturally, after that, the Western Shu Kingdom belonged to Yan He Qing. Surprisingly, Yan He Qing successfully unified the four countries into one kingdom. Just because he married a wife. Married a wife. Others would fight for their father and mother, but Yan He Qing fought for his wife. This progress made people speechless. As a reader, Xiao Pingyang was probably Xiao Yuan's favorite wife from Yan He Qing's harem. There's no need to explain that it isn't just because Xiao Pingyang and he share the same Xiao Tu surname but because Xiao Pingyang's temperament is so heroic that there's not need to explain further. In the original book, the author never described her smile. She was always cold, acting cold, and being icy cold. People gave her the nickname, the Iron Masked Lady Three. And Xiao Yuan gave her the nickname, Xiao Popsicle. Also, because there was a lot of readers that live for the bed scenes, at that point, they analyzed the second half of the book and came to the conclusion that Xiao Pinyang may not like Yan He Qing at all. But it was precisely because of her strong nature that she was able to control Yan He Qing's harem. Besides, his harem is so huge, how can there not be a single evil woman? If it weren't for Xiao Pinyang, those who were gentle and weak in nature, would have been killed long ago. Xiao Pinyang's identity is so special, and now she's suddenly standing at the main hall of the palace. Xiao Yuan felt that his heart, liver, spleen, lungs and kidneys were trembling. Why did she appear so early? Does she really want to take the male lead away from Princess Yongming? To be honest, the only one in Yan He Qing's harem that is comparable to Princess Yongming is Xiao Pingyang. After the ceremony, all the envoys of the Western Shu Kingdom took their seats, and Xiao Yuan didn't took his eyes away from Xiao Pingyang. Standing behind Xiao Yuan, Yan He Qing could clearly see all of Xiao Yuan's actions, and his eyes were very gloomy as he followed Xiao Yuan's gaze directed at Xiao Pingyang. He held his sword at his waist and clenched it silently. Xiao Yuan's eyes were faintly burning. When he turned his head around quietly, he saw that Yan He Qing was intensively looking at Xiao Pingyang, and without saying a word, his heart thumped. Damn it! So this is the situation. He couldn't see his first wife yet, so he wants to take advantage of the second wife first. How will the plot develop from now on? Chapter, 49 At the end of the banquet, they had a very good talk. 
Xiao Yuan felt like his mind could rest at ease if Hong Xiao was the one to take Xiao Pingyan and the rest of the envoys to visit the imperial city of the Northern Kingdom. There was still snow covering the Northern Kingdom. While in the Western Shu Kingdom, it wasn't possible to withstand such a beautiful scenery wrapped in white at all. The group of girls were freezing and their cheeks were flushed red because of the cold, but that didn't matter to them, they were still very excited. Xiao Pingyang reached out and grabbed the snow on top of the branches. The snow gradually became transparent and melted in her hands, before finally only the cold water remained these wonderful changes were unexpected and interesting to her. The architectural style of the Northern Kingdom was slightly different from that of the Western Shu Kingdom. The palaces of the Northern Kingdom were even more magnificent, with nine dragons and golden crows carved everywhere. These were also snowflakes flying around, which made Xiao Pingyang fascinated. She looked up and her eyes fell on a building. Xiao Pingyang pointed to that place and asked, What's that? Hong Xiao looked down at her eyes and explained, Ah, that's the Yuhua Tower. In a few days it will be the Emperor's birthday, and he will feast with 100 officials there. Xiao Pingyang was quite interested, since that's the place where the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom will celebrate his birthday, is there anything special about it? Hong Xiao said, There's a lotus pond in the middle of the building. Lotus pond? Wouldn't that be just a scene of dead branches and fallen leaves on an icy and snowy day? Hong Xiao covered her lips and smiled lightly, It's not a real flower, but a lotus carved out of gold, it's extremely delicate and lifelike. In the middle of the lotus pond, there's a white jade platform. In this country, only Princess Yongning is allowed to dance on the white jade platform. Xiao Pingyang nodded and asked, Can I go and have a look? Hong Xiao hesitated a little, but still led Xiao Pingyang and her companions towards the building. Although it was only a few days before the birthday, Yuhua Tower had already been decorated with lanterns and it looked extremely festive. Many servants were cleaning outside the pavilion, but the place was in complete silence. A richly ornamented building, the pavilion was layered with precious burning incense, and the wooden beams and cornices were each more delicate and exquisite than the other. The golden lotus and white jade platform was located on the fifth floor. Hong Xiao then realized that the pavilion was actually too quiet. It was something strange for sure, but it was already too late. The envoy just stepped inside the fifth floor, when a woman dressed in green clothes with a very large figure shouted, Hey! The envoys were suddenly scared out of their wits, and when they turned around they saw that woman twisting her body and her face was blushing, What are you doing? Has no one told you that Princess Yongming is practicing her dance here? Disgraceful, leave quickly. Hong Xiu quickly bowed down and apologized, leading the envoys of the Western Shu Kingdom to leave the pavilion in a hurry. But Xiao Pingyang didn't seem to hear her at all. She looked at Chuer and then fixed her eyes on the inside of the fifth floor. On the jade platform, singing and dancing rising at the top of the platform, a woman wearing a plain white cloud skirt waved her sleeves. Xiao Pingyang looked at her and saw that she was smiling and dancing gracefully, dancing with a simple hand is the world's best move. Upon hearing the noise, Princess Yongming jumped off the white jade platform strangely, and walked a few steps with light steps like a swallow. Princess Yongming, this maidservant didn't know that you were practicing your dancing here. I asked the princess to forgive me. Hong Xiao knelt on the ground. It doesn't matter, you can get up. Princess Yongming waved her sleeves and her eyes fell on Xiao Pingyang. She asked strangely, Who are these sisters? Answering to the princess, they're the envoys from the Western Shu Kingdom. Hong Xiao said. Xiao Pingyang from the Western Shu Kingdom salutes Princess Yongming, the Princess of the Millennium. Xiao Pingyang was, according to the etiquette, very attentive and courteous. Western Shu Kingdom? Princess Yongming murmured, then she smiled cheerfully, Are you also a princess? Xiao Pingyang said, Yes. Are you visiting the Imperial City? Yes. Princess Yongming suddenly grasped Xiao Pingyang's hands and held them up in front of her chest. She wasn't hiding her joy, let me show you around. Xiao Pingyang was stunned and asked softly, Don't you have to keep practicing the dance? Ah, it's all right. It's a dance prepared specially for my imperial brother's birthday, I'm already familiar with it. 
Princess Yongning picked up her skirt and said, I'll go change my clothes, wait for me here. After saying that, she trotted into the fifth floor. The envoys from the Western Shu Kingdom looked at each other and someone whispered, She's a very warm princess. Chuei sighed, You girls might not know, but there's few women of the same age as the princess in our palace, so she actually lacks playmates. Naturally, she's very delighted to see you. Xiao Pingyang nodded, and deep in her eyes, there was a hint of tenderness. Inside the palace, the tributes of the Western Shu Kingdom were neatly arranged in two rows. Xiao Yuan's face showed a baby-like intrigued expression, he was looking at each box in that way with Yan Heqing standing behind him. Should this be the one? Xiao Yuan looked around the box filled with silks and satins and rare antiques. Yan Heqing followed behind Xiao Yuan and was a little confused, just when he was about to ask him what he was looking for, Xiao Yuan stopped abruptly and rejoiced, this is it. In front of him was an ice basin one completely sealed in wax, with cold handles. Xiao Yuan pushed the lid but realized that it won't budge an inch, so he asked Yan Heqing, can you open it for me? Yan Heqing pulled out his sword and cut the wax seal, embedded the sword into the gap of the ice basin, and pushed it away with force. Inside the ice basin were sealed three layers of porcelain boxes, the bigger one was covering the smaller one and the gap between the third layer and the second layer was full of melted ice water, only the first layer had some floating ice. Xiao Yuan opened the innermost layer and his eyes were filled with a warm smile, ah, sure enough. Yan Heqing looked closely at the box and saw that there were many red fruits inside it, the skin was raised, it was quite strange, what's this? Xiao Yuan picked up one, and after peeling it, that fruit showed its white flesh. Xiao Yuan was about to put it in his mouth when Yan Heqing grasped his wrist and blocked this action. What? Xiao Yuan was confused. It could be poisonous. Yan Heqing frowned. PFF Xiao Yuan sneered and handed the fruit to Yan Heqing, then will you test the poison for me? Yan Heqing was slightly shocked, and the fruit was then stuffed into his mouth, its taste was very sweet and cold. Delicious? Xiao Yuan asked, hey. Don't forget to spit out the pit. The black one in the middle, spit it out. Yan Heqing spit out the black pit and held his breath, after a while he said, it shouldn't be poisonous. Xiao Yuan laughed out loud, I already know that it isn't poisonous, otherwise, how could I let you taste it? This is called lychee fruit too and it's a speciality of the Western Shu Kingdom. It's also one of the foods that Yan Heqing likes the most in the original book. In the original book, every time the lychee fruit matures, Yan Heqing will go to the Western Shu Kingdom and eat lychee while holding a member of his harem, living the happy life. Xiao Yuan wondered if such a famous special product, the envoys of the Western Shu Kingdom would regard it as a tribute, fortunately he was right. By the way, do you know this ancient poem? Xiao Yuan picked up a lychee and held it in his palm to rub and play with it. He looked at Yan Heqing, his smile was full of emotions, one horseman in red dust approaches the gates making a concubine smile happily, no one else knows that it's because the lychees have arrived three. Yan Heqing stared at Xiao Yuan for a long while, and he suddenly pulled the corner of his mouth showing a very stiff smile. Xiao Yuan was dumbfounded and the lychee on his hand almost rolled to the ground. When he finally reacted, he stretched out his hand and pointed tremblingly at the ice basin, they're all yours. He was astonished. In order to be able to eat lychees, the stallion protagonist wouldn't hesitate to show his true colors. The men and women shed silent tears. The readers are crying. The big and small wives are crying themselves blind. Don't cry, it's not this world's protagonist fault. Yan Heqing, actually, didn't feel happy at all. He recovered his cold expression and with a light tone, he said, it's too much. It's all right, the weather in the Northland can keep them consumable. That is, just don't eat too much a day or your stomach will get upset. Xiao Yuan was slightly scared while pushing the ice basin to Yan Heqing aside. Yan Heqing sighed, thank you. Xiao Yuan patted Yan Heqing, you're welcome. The male lead laughed, all of this just for a few lychees. After the lychee situation was settled, Xiao Yuan looked at the other gifts curiously. 
This time, the Western Shu Kingdom came with sincerity, so the tribute was dazzling. Xiao Yuan's eyes glanced over a box of jewelry and silk, he abruptly stopped, reached out and picked up a cinnabar red hairpin engraved with flowers. After looking at it for a while, he held it in his palm and put it away, the rest will be sent to Yongming Palace. Chapter, 50 When the tribute ceremony was sent to Yongming Palace, Xiao Pingyang was resting there. After all, Princess Yongming dragged her around the whole imperial city until finally she said that she wanted to take her to her palace, of course, Xiao Pingyang didn't refuse. The emperor seems to love you very much. Xiao Pingyang looked at the tribute and then asked her. Yes. Princess Yongming nodded exaggeratedly, my imperial brother is very kind to me. How about you, do you have an imperial brother one? Xiao Pingyang said, I have many royal brothers, but there's only one that I get along with. Come this way. Princess Yongming took Xiao Pingyang to sit at the table, Xiao Pingyang saw a gold needle and silver thread on top of the table. There was also a sachet halfway embroidered, but this sachet was crooked and looked unsightly. Princess Yongming's face was blushing red, she entered into panic and then she was in a hurry to hide it. Wait a minute. Xiao Pingyang reached out and took the needle and thread. Can I embroider it? You, you know how to do needlework. Princess Yongming asked incredulously. Seeing Xiao Pingyang nodding her head, Princess Yongming said, Yes, you can embroider it. Xiao Pingyang twisted the needle and thread, turned her fingers, and after a while, the oddly shaped sachet was completely transformed, becoming delicate and refined. Princess Yongming exclaimed, Oh heavens, it's amazing, but Hong Xiao told me that you were a general. Xiao Pingyang squeezed the thread and said softly, I can do needlework and also lead soldiers to fight. Wow, are all the women in the Western Shu Kingdom like this? No, but we can do whatever we want. Xiao Pingyang paused, suddenly raising her head at Princess Yongning, her voice fluttered softly, I can also love anyone I want. Awesome. Princess Yongning put her hands on her face and smiled innocently, I really want to visit the Western Shu Kingdom. Xiao Pingyang lowered her head, hooked her lips and smiled, there will be opportunities. By then, you must show me around the imperial city. Yes, a promise is a promise. In the spring night, the cuckoo cries loudly at the moon. Hong Xiu worked the whole day, and she didn't have the time to take a break. Even then, she hurried to the imperial bedchamber to wait for the emperor to sleep at night. Xiao Yuan was dressed in white and he was reading the memorials with the light of candles. When he saw Hong Xiu, he waved at her, Hong Xiu. Your Majesty. Hong Xiu stepped forward and saluted him. Come, take it. This is for you. Xiao Yuan took out a small makeup box and handed it to Hong Xiu. Hong Xiu took it doubtfully, and when she opened it, she was even more surprised. Inside the box was a cinnabar red flower hairpin. It was made with exquisite workmanship, gorgeous and elegant. I think it suits you very well, so please accept it. Xiao Yuan smiled tenderly and softly as the calm waters. As the president of a company. As the president of a company with proper life values, he should respect the elderly, cherish the young, and spread positive factors. Xiao Yuan used to say, for the subordinates, it's important that we show them that we're on their side by telling them the truth, that'll arouse their sympathy. Hong Xiao looked at the flower hairpin in a determined way, and suddenly knelt down with a choked voice. Thank you, your majesty. For such a valuable reward, this maidservant will work extremely hard for I don't have a way to reciprocate it in this lifetime. Xiao Yuan was astonished, what she said was out of the question, so he hurriedly helped Hong Xiao to stand up. This flower hairpin can't be returned. How harsh the young monarch used to be. There's no wonder that the northern kingdom destroyed itself, after all, how can the supreme leader lack affinity? There's no cohesion. It's just a flower hairpin. It's not very expensive, besides, you already help me a lot every day. Xiao Yuan helplessly glanced at the tearful eyes of Hong Xiu. This, this maidservant will wait for his majesty, for his majesty to wash himself. Hong Xiu was still sobbing. Okay. Xiao Yuan smiled, wait a minute, by the way, 
when is the birthday feast taking place? In five days from now, your majesty. Ever since ancient times, for the emperor's birthday was nothing more than two sentences, everyone will celebrate this day, forget about the rest of the world. To put it bluntly, it's just like a holiday, blind and lively. The imperial city is colorfully decorated with lanterns everywhere, the civilians and the military officials worship with rites and drink a 10,000 worth birthday wine. In the evening, they feast at the Yuhua Tower. The whole country is celebrating, and after that, take three days off. In Yuhua Tower, where Xiao Yuan was holding the feast, he was drinking wine a little bit absent-minded. It wasn't because Xiao Yuan didn't like festivities, but because he was looking at the golden lotus on top of the white jade platform in front of him and suddenly remembered a plot from the original book. In order to celebrate the emperor's birthday, Princess Yongming will sing and dance on the white jade platform every year. This particular year, she jumped and sprained her ankle, resulting in her falling into the water. Yen Heqing, as the male lead, naturally reacted faster than ordinary people would, and jumped down towards the pool to save her without hesitation. But now, the plot became a total mess. The male lead and the female lead hadn't even met yet, and Xiao Yuan can't guess what will happen next. At this time, on the fifth floor of the Yuhua Tower, all the people sitting here are relatives of the emperor but in order to show respect, Xiao Yuan also invited the envoys of the Western Shu Kingdom. Xiao Pingyang was sitting on the west side calmly drinking a cup of wine. Xiao Yuan suddenly realized something. He turned his head and looked right behind him. As a close bodyguard, Yan Heqin was standing a few steps away from him, half hidden in the shadows silently watching the drinks and gamble lying together in the large group two in front of him. When he saw that Xiao Yuan turned his head, Yan Heqin gave him a questioning look. Xiao Yuan shook his head, turned around and grabbed his porcelain cup. For a while, he was unable to suppress his inner excitement. The male lead, the female lead and the second female are all in the same room. He can't wait for the male lead and the female lead to finally meet each other. Will this plot turn into an epic love drama, Ashura Scene 3? Suddenly, he heard the sound of the stroke of four drums four but he didn't know where it was coming from. It was sweet and clear, and the people that until that very moment were talking loudly, abruptly calmed down. Everyone looked at the golden lotus and white jade platform right at the center. For graceful dancers waved their wide sleeves around the jade lake, their sleeves then fell to the ground and Princess Yongming appeared on top of the jade platform. She was smiling extremely cheerfully, with rosy lips and ivory white teeth, she was looking just like the wind and the snow flying around the world. With the sound of the strings, Princess Yongming danced gracefully, her appearance was as beautiful as fairies. From the beginning to the end, there weren't any flirtlerish's intentions in her moves. It only made people feel that her dance wasn't indecent, instead it was truly stunning. Xiao Yuan quietly looked back at Yan Heqin. Yan Heqin was tightly holding the handle of his sword. Although his eyes were looking at the white jade platform, he actually seemed careless and absent-minded, like he was thinking about something. Wow, he really is the male lead. TCH, TCH, TCH5, look at this calm attitude, look at this seemingly innocent expression, in fact, he had long been amazed and became speechless. This must be love at first sight. As expected, the female lead's aura is greater than the sky. Xiao Yuan then glanced at Xiao Pingyang. Xiao Pingyang's lips were slightly open, and she was looking at Princess Yangning's dancing on the white jade platform intensively. She was refusing to blink, like she was fearing to miss even a second of the spectacle. Heavens! The second female, she. She. Is she shocked by the female lead's aura? Xiao Yuan was still thinking about it when Princess Yongning, accompanied by the sound of the guqin, fixed her body, and ended the dance. The whole audience inside the hall were completely shocked, and they instantly started to cheer loudly. Xiao Yuan calmed down and was slightly surprised to find that Princess Yunning didn't fall into the water. It seems that this plot was skipped. He reached out his hands and applauded, then he saw that Princess Yunning, while holding her skirt jumped down from the white jade platform and ran towards him. Imperial Brother 
Princess Yongming held Xiao Yuan with both her hands, she smiled vigorously and exerted a little force, come with me. Yongming has a surprise for you. Aya. Ah. What? Xiao Yuan's face was confused. When he came to reality, he realized that he was already on top of the white jade platform. Imperial brother. Look. Princess Yongming pulled Xiao Yuan around for two times, and a strange fragrance left her waving sleeves. Xiao Yuan was really confused, and then, out of nowhere, someone exclaimed, Butterfly. Is that a butterfly? At the corner of the Yuhua Tower, an envoy of the Western Shu Kingdom opened a box, and a group of colorful butterflies spread their wings flying out. They were attracted by the exotic fragrance, flying right towards the jade platform, dancing around Princess Yongming and Xiao Yuan they were even falling on the princess sleeves, shoulders and fingers. It could be said that the butterflies were all fragrant and had thick wings, they could be difficult to find among flowers. Imperial brother, did you like it? Princess Yongming asked with excitement. I like it. More than that, Xiao Yuan was shocked. There's no such paragraph in the original book. What's more, the spring was still cold in the northern kingdom, and the snow haven't even disappeared yet. Where are these butterflies coming from? These butterflies? They're part of the tribute from the western Shu kingdom. Xiao Pingyang gave me this idea. For these butterflies, I've changed the dancing posture. Changed the dancing posture? Was this the reason that Princess Yongming didn't fall into the water pond? Xiao Yuan nodded his head clearly and then, he was pulled again by Princess Yongming for a few more times. The butterflies gathered more and more, in the end, his eyes gradually became a bit dazed. Xiao Yuan stared right at Princess Yongming's feet, fearing that she would fall into the water, after all, it's better to avoid suffering the cold weather. Princess Yongming had enough with playing around and cheerfully said, Imperial brother, let's go back to the feast. Yes. Xiao Yuan nodded with a gentle smile in his lips, but then, he turned around and stepped on the air, falling backwards. Chapter, 51 Imperial Brother Princess Yongming stepped forward a few steps and grabbed Xiao Yuan's wrist, but the falling force was too great and she couldn't hold on at all, resulting in her falling into the cold water alongside Xiao Yuan. What the fuck? Xiao Yuan could guess the beginning, but he couldn't fucking guess the end. The whole audience screamed in horror. And as soon as Xiao Yuan felt the freezing pool water drowning him, he heard two diving sounds. Hmm. Two sounds. Xiao Yuan covered his mouth to stop himself from coughing and choking, in a hurry he adjusted his breath. He wanted to save Princess Yongming before they fell into the water together. Princess Yongming was right in front of Xiao Yuan and she obviously couldn't swim, she spitted out a big bubble while waving her hands and struggling to get out of the water. Xiao Yuan managed to hold his breath, and as soon as he was going to swim towards Princess Yongming, he saw red silk shining right in front of him. Someone grabbed Princess Yongming from behind and brought her to the surface. As expected, he was too naive. How could there be less drama when the male lead and the female leads are involved? How could that be possible? It could clearly be seen that the two of them fell into the water together, but in the end, no one jumped back and grabbed him. Look at this protagonist Halo. The hero Xiao Yuan wasn't able to save the beauty. When he was preparing himself to get out of the water, he was suddenly caught off guard when someone grabbed him by the back and was brought into their arms. Poof! Xiao Yuan was astonished and choked after opening his mouth and breathing some water. As soon as he came out of the water, he coughed for a long time, and his mind exploded in hurt. When he finally looked up, he found out that he was being held by Yan Heqing's arms. What the fuck? Did you mistook me for Princess Yongning? Xiao Yuan covered his mouth and looked around. He found that Princess Yongning was rescued from drowning in the jade platform, and she was being held by Xiao Pingyang. What kind of development was that? Xiao Yuan wiped the water from his face and was pushed ashore by Yan Heqing, then he turned and pulled him up, looking at him with distressed eyes. Your reaction was too slow. Your first wife was rescued by another person. And that person happens to be your second wife. Aren't you scared that they will think that you don't have a heart? Either way, 
both the emperor and the princess fell into the water, which scared everyone to death. As soon as the two of them were rescued, they hurriedly took them to the Taiyi Hall, resulting in the birthday banquet to reach its end. Xiao Yuan stared at the thick two-layer quilt covering his whole body, the charcoal basin beside the bed, the medicinal soup to prevent the cold, and the imperial physician that was rubbing his muscles and veins. He asked quietly, Imperial physician, I just fell into the cold water, I will not die, will I? The imperial physician kept his professional smile and added a quilt to Xiao Yuan's body while he was talking about falling into the water. The imperial physician asked cautiously, Your Majesty, how are you feeling? He felt suffocated. Xiao Yuan asked him instead, How is Princess Yongning? Answering to His Majesty, Princess Yongning is perfectly fine, she just returned to Yongning Palace. Xiao Yuan nodded feeling at ease, and then lifted the quilt, then I will go back as well. Your Majesty! The Imperial Physician suddenly shouted, putting the quilt back on Xiao Yuan's body again. Your Majesty, you must not move, that's absolutely impossible for you right now. You're very weak and you should rest more, you need to take care of the dragon body one. You are weak. Your whole family is weak. Xiao Yuan was completely wrapped in the quilt and only his head was exposed, he felt that he couldn't breathe at all. He thought that the imperial physician was actually an assassin that was trying to use the quilt to slowly suffocate him, well then, ill rest. You can go out and call Yan Heqing to come here, I have something to speak with him. The imperial physician obeyed his orders and retired. After a while, the door was pushed open, and Yan Heqing walked in. He stood beside the bed and Xiao Yuan shivered, stretching a hand from under the three-layer thick quilt, he said, Help me, I will be crushed to death. Yan Heqing analyzed the situation for a while, and decided to hold Xiao Yuan's hand putting it inside the quilt once again. Yan Heqing said, You must have a good rest. After he said that to him, Xiao Yuan lifted the quilt, turned over and sat up, I don't want to rest, it's just getting dark outside. No one goes to bed so early, I don't care about my health. Seeing that Yan Heqing was frowning at him, Xiao Yuan took his hand and put it at the side of his neck, I really am alright. If you don't believe me, you can touch and see for yourself, my meridians are stable, and full of youthful energy too. Yan Heqing raised his eyebrows lightly, he pressed his thumb against the side of Xiao Yuan's neck, felt the pulse for a while. Then he softly touched Xiao Yuan's side face, circled around his eyes with his fingertips, and finally covered his forehead with the palm of his hand. After that, he nodded affirmatively, yes, it seems that you're really fine. It also seems that I don't actually have anything to do. Xiao Yuan tidied up his clothes, climbed out of the bed and walked towards the windows, looking like he was really eager to try and leave from there. Let's go out to play. Go where? Outside, to the Imperial City, at the Market Streets. Chapter, 52 In the Imperial City, because it was early evening, the lights were beginning to shine, and thousands of candles could be seen being lit for ten miles ahead. In order to celebrate the Emperor's birthday, the market was bustling and it was lively and crowded. People were coming and going like tides. Xiao Yuan was full of curiosity strolling through the streets, stalls and shops, it's quite interesting. The palace is always so boring, I've long wanted to come out and stroll. Yan Heqing said, in any way, you are the emperor. You can take the imperial bodyguards and the maidservants with you at any time. That's not the same. Everyone else follows me in a state of fear, I feel more at ease with you alone. Xiao Yuan said while looking at the ink-painted fan on top of a stall, he didn't notice that Yan Heqing gently hooked his mouth. The two of them strolled from the West Street Market to the East Street Market, where peddlers were shouting and juggling everywhere, and where the children were shuttling through the crowd in their jackets, one after the other, the city was flourishing. Walking around, Xiao Yuan suddenly saw something and walked into the shop with his hands down. It was a jade shop. When the owner saw two imposing young men stepping into his shop, he turned his astute eyes and nodded bowing one his head to salute them, what can I do for both Gongzi? Xiao Yuan flicked his fingers through a wide range of dazzling jade until finally he stopped at the most striking place of the jade shop. There was a wooden cabinet which contained a jade flute made out of white jade inside. 
The flute's body was outlined with cloud patterns and had a handing red spike. Even those that didn't know anything about flutes will know at a first glance that this one was particularly extraordinary. The owner hesitated, ah, about this gongzi, you don't know but this jade flute is the treasure of this town's shop and the price tch, it's quite expensive. Oh. Xiao Yuan chuckled, so it really is precious. Then can you take it out so I look better at it? After thinking for a while, the owner opened the cabinet and took out the jade flute, humble me will give gongzi face too, after all, good things must be shared. Xiao Yuan took the jade flute and played with it in his hands for a while, then he handed it to Yan Heqing, try it out. Yan Heqing was stupefied, how did you know that I can play the flute? Because I'm very smart. Now, play it for me. Yan Heqing took over the jade flute and placed it on his lips, the melodious flute sounds just like the limpid autumn waters 3 and the spring breeze 4. In the original book, it was described for many episodes that Yan Heqing and Princess Yongning played together. The flute and the Guqin strings were described at the first half of the book as under the moon and before the flowers 5, but Xiao Yuan didn't expect that Yan Heqing's solo play could make people's hearts feel ripples 6. Xiao Yuan, as the president of a company that could memorize the quotations of the tyrannical presidents, and a former president that attempted but failed to walk this lunatic road. A president that is still trying to go through the seduction road, in his twenty years of life, he would never think that it will come a day in which he would make use of a president golden sentence, which is what he just did in this situation. It wasn't even for his own wife, but for a stallion protagonist that could spend a night with ten members of his harem. Life, it's really tricky, it's unpredictable, it's incredible, it's really wow, how happy I am. Xiao Yuan pointed at the jade flute and said to the owner in a bold manner, it doesn't matter how much this flute cost, I will take it back with me. The owner's heart was in full bloom seven, but he pretended to be distressed, Gongzi, don't ask for this jade flute so easily, it's worth a hundred liang of gold. Yan Heqin returned the jade flute to his owner and turned his head to ask Xiao Yuan, do you want to buy it? Xiao Yuan was smiling from ear to ear, I want to buy it. Do you even have any money with you? Can you stop hitting my mind so abruptly? The two of them left through the window of the Taiyi Hall, and they certainly didn't bring anything with them. Besides, ordinary people wouldn't have a hundred liang of gold with them so casually. Xiao Yuan thought for a long time and said, This is the imperial city, am I right? The owner of the jade shop thought with pity, This Gongzi looked very attractive and intelligent, but in reality, he was very stupid for his young age. Then I have a solution. Xiao Yuan pulled Yan Heqing out of the jade shop. Yan Heqing was very confused, where do you want to go? Wanning Wangfu 8. In the original book, Wanning Wangye was a peculiar character, because he's the worst villain from all the villains of this book, he's not just a cannon fodder like the others. He mistreated the country and wanted to usurp the throne. Power is the only thing he wants in life, and because of that, he rebelled. And yet, he was described as a good Wangye. Because he was at the male lead side. Wanning Wangye was a foreign relative that was very determined in rebelling. He tried to take the position of the emperor, but he lacked military power, so he could only join forces with the southern Yan kingdom and make use of their troops to rebel. It could be said that Wanning Wangye was the only connection between Yan Heqing, who was imprisoned in the palace, and the southern Yan kingdom. But then, after the East Window incident happened, Yan Heqing fled with glory because he is the male lead, but Wanning Wanye was in a miserable situation instead, and his head was cut off by the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom. Yan Heqing and Xiao Yuan walked towards the palace of Wanning Wanye, but they were stopped by the guards when they reached the gate, who's there? Xiao Yuan replied with a smile, I came looking for Wanye. The guard glared at him and roared with great force, is really Wang Ye the one that you want to see? Xiao Yuan simply replied, yes. The guard looked at him up and down, who are you? If you don't change your name, you can't change your surname 9. The name Xiao Yuan, is the name of the president of the Jianghu 10 but you can call me President Xiao. Yan He Qing touched his forehead. The guard drew out his sword with a brush and in a murderous voice he said, where is this madman coming from, leave this place right now, my sword doesn't have eyes. When he drew the blade out he sent it right toward Xiao Yuan, 
but Yan Heqing stepped forward and blocked the attack putting Xiao Yuan behind him. He held the guard's hilt and coldly said, Go and report to Wang Ya that the emperor has come to see him. Chapter, 53 Both of them were respectfully greeted into the main hall of Wang Ya's mansion, and after a brief moment, a young man dressed in elegant brocade came. One in Wang Ya knelt down and saluted him, Your Majesty, for what reason came to honor his imperial presence in my humble home? Humble. Humble house. Xiao Yuan looked around. All right, whatever makes you happy. Xiao Yuan wasn't interested in changing the topic, I want to borrow money. Wanning Wang Ye thought that he had heard it wrong, borrow what? Money. Wanning Wang Ye's mind began to think at a high speed. What does the emperor mean? Is he doing this deliberately to test him? Or is he trying to ridicule him? And to borrow money? Borrow? Does the emperor even need to use this word? How much does he even want to borrow, will 10,000 liang of gold be enough? And even if he can get that sum for himself, it still hurts a little bit. What's his majesty saying, why do you need to borrow it, how much does his majesty need? Wanning Wang Ye asked cautiously. Quite a lot. Wanning Wang Ye's heart began to bleed, could it be that 10,000 liang won't be enough? 200 tails. Ho oh, how much? 200 tails. Yes, 200 tails of gold. Is it too much? No, not at all, they'll call for someone to prepare it. Wanning Wang Ye walked out of the main hall not knowing what was going on. He immediately called for his staff and talked about this strange situation. The two of them whispered for a while until finally, they reached an agreement. The emperor, he, must have felt that his abstinence lasted for too long. In order to keep filial piety to the late emperor, the young emperor had to clean up his six roots one. This year his birthday was a rare one, and it's hard to avoid some thoughts after all. Because he was worried about being caught doing inappropriate things in the palace, he must have sneaked out to be able to act on these thoughts. Yes, that must be the case. Wanning Wang Ye was very pleased with this line of thought. He confidently sent the staff to quickly make the proper arrangements, and then went back to the main hall where he said to Xiao Yuan, Your Majesty, I've sent someone to prepare the two hundred tails of gold, but there's still something I want to discuss with His Majesty. Xiao Yuan asked puzzled, Ah. What's the matter? Wanning Wang Ye bowed and said, This day is His Majesty's birthday and naturally I prepared a gift. I wanted to present it to His Majesty after the banquet, but because of unfortunate circumstances, the banquet hastily ended and I failed to fulfill this wish. Now that His Majesty luckily visited this one's house, it would be a pleasure if my meager gift is accepted. Xiao Yuan goes with the flow too, all right. It'll trouble three His Majesty to come this way. Xiao Yuan and Yan Heqing looked at each other and walked at the same pace of Wanning Wang Ye. Wanning Wang Fu was luxurious and magnificent, with carved railing and painted buildings, and a rockery garden with lotus ponds. Xiao Yuan was looking around thinking with full consideration that Wanning Wang Ye must have accepted some bribes. The three of them passed through the cloister pavilion and stopped at the door of the east wing room. Wanning Wang Ye made a gesture of invitation and Xiao Yuan opened the door with a little bit of doubt. Yan Heqing followed close behind him and intended to walk inside, but he was stopped by Wanning Wang Ye, Imperial Bodyguard Xiao, GE4, it's better for you to wait outside. Xiao Yuan asked, he can't come with me. Yan Heqing frowned and his complexion was looking rather cold. Wanning Wang Ye didn't answer, but his smile afforded much food for reflection 5. Xiao Yuan laughed with goosebumps, and vaguely guessed what would wait for him inside. Then, wait for me outside. Xiao Yuan patted Yan Heqing on the shoulder. Yes. Yan Heqing nodded his head and watched as Xiao Yuan walked inside the wing room. The wing room was huge, and it was surrounded by a fragrant lingering mist. The outer hall was filled with all kinds and rare calligraphy, paintings and treasures. Xiao Yuan walked through the outer hall and entered the inner room, abruptly stopping at once. On the large bed, the red yarn was entangled, the bedding was messy and the bodies of two beauties loosely dressed in red were intertwined, their skin was rubbing each other. The two of them looked charming and they were panting, their eyes were silky and looking directly at Xiao Yuan. 
Xiao Yuan grinned, rubbed his kidney six and turned away, leaving the two beauties in bed. Outside the wing room, when Xiao Yuan just closed the door behind him, Wanning Wang Ye suddenly approached Yan He Qing and whispered, Prince of the Southern Yan Kingdom, Yan He Qing. Yan He Qing was clearly stunned. Yan, Huang Z7, it must be hard to be around the emperor. Wanning Wang Ye narrowed his eyes slightly, his tone was unclear. Yan He Qing's eyes opened slightly and flashed inconceivably. He suddenly grasped the handle of the sword resting at the side of his body, his thin lips were slightly pursed, pressing down the emotions in his eyes, they became extremely deep and dark. Wanning Wang Ye took another step forward, and their bodies were almost stuck together. Wanning Wang Ye hooked a smile and covered the hand of Yan He Qing that was holding the sword with his own. This posture and movement were extremely warm, but Yan He Qing wasn't furious, instead, he was shocked. Because he put something inside his hand. Chapter, 54 Wanning Wang Ye lowered his voice the most he could, hurry up and hide this on you Yan Huangzi. You can't bear this humiliation any longer, this month is a good opportunity. You must also remember that you and I are on the same side, and if something goes wrong, no one will be able to run away. You must be very careful. It seemed that Wanning Wang Ye wanted to say something else to him, but the door of the wing room suddenly creaked, scaring him and making him retreat quickly to his previous position. Looking up, his expression was quite puzzled, what happened? Your Majesty, why did you come out so early, could it be that my gift didn't satisfy you? Xiao Yuan said, I think the money will satisfy me more. Wanning Wang Ye turned pale with fright one. It could be that. Don't tell me. Could it be that the rumors about the emperor being empty of desire, are actually true? Wanning Wang Ye coughed gently trying to cover up his embarrassment and quickly called for someone to bring the two hundred tails of gold. Xiao Yuan wasn't interested in acting polite and quickly took the money, I've troubled to you. Wanning Wang Ye greeted them by cupping one hand in the other before his chest three. Xiao Yuan turned his head towards Yan He Qing and said to him, let's go. Yan He Qing was soulless for, ah. Yes. Xiao Yuan glanced at him, but said nothing. In fact, Xiao Yuan knew that by coming to Wanning Wangfu, Yan He Qing would get in contact with Wanning Wang Ye. But if he doesn't trust Yan He Qing in this situation, he shouldn't have rescued Yan He Qing from the prison in the first place, let alone protect him every time. Although he had already transmigrated to this book for such a long time, Xiao Yuan always felt like an outsider from beginning to end. He acts indifferent to every character role and just stays there, like looking at a play, how they interpret their sorrows and joys 5. The funniest part is that he already knows the end of many events and the fate of many people he can even guess the thoughts of the people around him. But, in the end, he doesn't know where he will go from now on. He doesn't even understand what's the position of the Northern Kingdom inside his heart, and what position has Yan He Qing in his heart either. The two of them, with their own worries inside their heads, returned to the jade shop. Xiao Yuan finally bought the jade flute without any hesitation and they were cordially sent off by the owner of the shop. The night hadn't ended yet. The market streets were still very lively, the stars were accompanied by the lights and the laughter was accompanied by joy. Xiao Yuan was playing with the jade flute he just bought with quite a lot of money, and thought, I don't know what will happen in the future, so I'll just do what I want for now. So Xiao Yuan turned around and handed the jade flute to Yan He Qing, here, this is a gift for you. In the Eternal Guanghan Palace 6 and the Qingxiu Hall 7, people can live a long life, sharing the beauty of the moon. Xiao Yuan's bright smile shone right into Yan He Qing's clear eyes, the light of the moon can't reach the tenderness of his wham eyes, and the boat full of clear dreams can't hold the crooked corners of his mouth. When seeing such a gentleman, why would you not feel happy? 8. Yan He Qing fixedly looked at Xiao Yuan. What are you thinking about? Xiao Yuan hands the jade flute to Yan He Qing once more. Yan He Qing took the jade flute and clenched his grip on it for a long time, then, he murmured softly, Two don't have anything to give you in return. I want to thank you for this. Xiao Yuan just wanted to wave his hand and say to him that it wasn't necessary, when he suddenly saw what Yan He Qing had handed over to him, which almost scared him to death and made him take a big step back. Yan He Qing's palms were up, 
and on top of them, lying quietly in his hands, was a jade hairpin. This is the relic of Yan Heking's Empress Mother, and it's also the love token that Yan He Ching gave Princess Yongning in the original book. Gu. Yan Ji Yi. You can't just give this to him as a gift, even if you give it to him as a thanks gift. Don't you know what this is? Don't you know what it means? This object can't be given away so casually, don't be such a loser. Xiao Yuan nervously smiled and waved his hand, no no, I don't want a reciprocity for the gift. Yan He Ching insisted, I want to give it to you. Don't mind it. Don't you have anything else? Xiao Yuan continued to wave his hand, it's too valuable for you. Yan He Ching kept himself in silence and stretched out his hand right in front of Xiao Yuan's eyes, without any intention of taking it back. Xiao Yuan took a deep breath and thought about it for a long time, finally, he decided to take the jade hairpin, thank you then, he'll accept it. Forget it, he'll take care of it for Yan He Ching. Yan He Ching's lips smiled lightly, his eyes were shining, they were very clear and bright. Xiao Yuan, while holding the hairpin, was feeling a little bit uneasy, and because of that he said, if someday you want me to return it to you, I will give it back. The smiling expression in Yan He Ching's face suddenly banished, becoming a frown instead, he asked him, why would I want it back? In any case Xiao Yuan coughed to cover up his embarrassment, hey, there's juggling over there, let's go and have a look. After finishing talking, Xiao Yuan took Yan He Ching and ran towards the lively place. Xiao Yuan was restless and ran as fast as he could. Suddenly, he crashed with someone and the both of them fell together, they rolled into a ball, sobbed in pain, and then, froze in place. Because this voice was very familiar. Xiao Yuan even forgot to rub where he felt pain, and looked at the person in front of him, he was stunned, Ning Er. Ah Imperial Princess Yongming covered her mouth and whispered, Gij. Both of them were still staring at each other, and out of nowhere, Princess Yongming was suddenly helped up by someone. Xiao Pinyang's tone was anxious, and her eyes were worried, like she was blaming herself, are you alright? Do you feel any pain? Xiao Yuan was completely dumbfounded. The second female lead, Xiao Pinyang. Why is this plot line more and more magical? Chapter, 55 In the bustling lively street market, the four people looked at each other and the atmosphere around them became very strange and delicate. Xiao Yuan coughed softly and decided to be the one to break the silence, Ning Er, why did you come out of the palace without an imperial bodyguard? That doesn't matter, Ping Yang will protect me. Princess Yongming gave a bewitching smile. WTF. One when did the female lead and the second female lead establish a revolutionary friendship, is this the first step of harmony for the future male lead harem? And if you want to feel protected, you must find Yan He Ching for that, okay? Wait, this also seems to be the historic face-to-face -face meeting between the male lead and the female lead. Xiao Yuan took a deep breath, turned his head to look at Yan He Ching, and then looked back at Princess Yongning. He then retreated quietly, trying to make room for the both of them. As soon as he retreated this way, he squeezed himself at Xiao Pingyang's side. Xiao Pingyang was inexplicably pushed away by him, so she could only stand aside. Yan He Ching saw every single move that Xiao Yuan just made. He frowned slightly and looked at Xiao Pingyang unwillingly. Xiao Yuan stared back at Yan He Ching and thought, Yan Ji Yi, Yan Ji Yi, did you just start to regret giving me the jade hairpin? Never mind, I wait why are you? Why are you looking at the second female? You'll have your lifespan shortened too. The aura of the female lead can't hold down the second female. Xiao Yuan's heart feel tangled for three seconds, but still, he decided to stand as the official matchmaker for the first couple. He turned his head towards Princess Yongning and asked her, Ning Er, where were you planning to go? Princess Yongning replied, I heard that there's lanterns by the river. I've planned to take Ping Yang with me to look at them. Xiao Yuan nodded his head and his mind started to scheme. He then looked at Yan He Ching and said, You will accompany Princess Yongning to the river first, I have something to discuss with the embassy of the Western Shu Kingdom. After that, he added, protect her. Let's give the male lead and the female lead some time alone. Xiao Yuan doesn't believe that they won't have any spark. 
And the heavens will surely help, for example, a little cannon fodder suddenly appears, and ignoring the breath of death hell make a move on Princess Yongming flirting with her, and then, the handsome protagonist, Yan He Chin, will save her. Ah, the fucking dog blood 3. But it can't be denied that these types of cliché moments are useful. They work. They're extremely beneficial. Xiao Yuan looked at Yan He Chin, but unexpectedly he didn't see his face in full bloom. On the contrary, Yan He Chin's face wasn't looking good, his eyes were very dark and gloomy. He replied coldly, at your imperial majesty's command. All right, pretending to be cool is also a good way of flirting with women. Xiao Yuan believes that he can still understand Yan He Chin's thoughts. Princess Yongming reluctantly glanced at Xiao Pingyang and said to Xiao Yuan, in that case, Imperial Cough, Gij, come to the riverside as soon as you finish talking. At this time, don't talk about business and let's have a happy time instead. Xiao Yuan nodded his head and watched as the male lead and female lead quietly left away. He had quite a sense of matchmaking accomplishment, and just when he was feeling very complacent with himself, the confused voice of Xiao Pingyang came from beside him, Emperor of the Northern Kingdom, what do you want to discuss about? Oops, he forgot that she was still present. Xiao Yuan was slightly embarrassed, he turned around and tried to find a topic to talk about, well do you like sweets? There's some people here that sell sweets, do you want them? Do you want me to buy you some? Xiao Pingyang, does Yongming like to eat sweets? No, what kind of situation is this? Don't you know that by knowing the enemy and yourself will get you unscathed through a hundred battles for? Ningyur doesn't like sweets. Xiao Pingyang nodded lost in thought, oh, then I don't like it either. Even though she realized that Xiao Yuan had nothing to actually speak with her, Xiao Pingyang still behaved with indifference and didn't ask him why. Instead, she suddenly said, Monarch of the Northern Kingdom, can I forget about our identities and talk with you freely? Xiao Yuan suddenly paused, and with a smile on his face he answered, of course you can. Xiao Pingyang glanced at him and looked right into his eyes, then, she said, I suddenly feel that you're pretty much like a brother to me. Huh? Why's that? The way you talk, your behavior, and the most important thing, your eyes are very similar. I just spoke casually, I hope the monarch of the northern kingdom won't mind it. No, I don't mind. Xiao Pingyang looked at Xiao Yuan and murmured something that sounded like they're both very similar. Then she said, does the monarch of the northern kingdom believe in destiny? This change of topic was a bit too sudden. Xiao Yuan shook his head and said, I don't believe in it. He's indeed a socialist successor. Of course he only believes in materialism. Xiao Pingyang added, is that so? Then, do you think that your life choices should be decided by yourself instead of just wanting for the death to arrive? Xiao Yuan felt that behind these questions, there were some traps waiting for him to jump right towards them, and after he thought about it, he answered her, yes. Um. Xiao Pingyang pretended to be casual and said, I hope that one day in the future, Yongning will also be able to make her life choices by herself, rather than someone else choosing for her instead. Why can't you stop mentioning the female lead every three sentences? After the beginning of this last topic, Xiao Yuan slowly fell into a trance. Because he remembered the cause of death of Princess Yongming in the original book. In the original book, Wanning Wang Ye's plan for rebellion was exposed, and Yan He Qin was implicated. The Emperor of the Northern Kingdom made up his mind to kill Yan He Qin once and for all. He put Yan He Qin in prison, and sent someone to severely torture him. Princess Yongming couldn't bear this and helped Yan He Qin escape from the palace, but the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom didn't punish her for this because he loved her dearly. Three months later, Yan He Qin led his army to break through the Northern Kingdom. When Yan He Qin captured the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom right in front of the palace's gates, he vented his hatred on him by torturing him to death. Princess Yongming hanged herself with a three foot long white silk at the Yongming Palace. Princess Yongming didn't leave any word behind for Yan He Qin, only shame for the Northern Kingdom. Princess Yongming died, and she didn't express her thoughts for Yan He Qin even until her death. No one knows whether she loved or hated Yan He Qin at the last moment in her life or both, or neither. 
what she left behind for Yen Heqing was just a cold body and a lifetime of regret and pain. But, if he had the chance to go back in time, would Yen Heqing choose not to break through the Northern Kingdom? Xiao Yuan doesn't think so, because Yen Heqing was not only burdened by this hatred, but also he had to think of his southern Yan kingdom and the thousand soldiers that put their lives in his hands. He can't believe in fate, but he can choose by himself. But why is this book full of cruel words written with blood everywhere? In the street market, Xiao Yuan raised his eyes in a daze, and a playful child passed him by. The peddler was shouting, the candlelights were dazzlingly shining, and the passers-by were talking loudly, all of this felt unreal. Monarch? Monarch of the Northern Kingdom. Xiao Pingyang called Xiao Yuan trying to bring him back to reality. Ah Xiao Yuan touched his cheek uncomfortably. My mind was somewhere else, forget it. Let's go to the riverside. At the riverside, women and children were laughing and talking, and the lanterns were accumulated at the middle of the river. They were slowly swimming down the river, it looked like the stars were floating in the water. Both of them found Yan Heqing and Princess Yongning. Princess Yongning was sitting by the river, making a wish to a lantern. When they saw them, she stood up happily and pulled Xiao Pingyang to her side, Pingyang, come quickly, let's send the lanterns together. Xiao Yuan walked towards Yan Heqing and asked him, did something happen just now? Yan Heqing replied to him in a cold way, nothing happened. Ah! Heavens, where's your helping hand? Sensing a faint displeasure coming from Yan Heqing, Xiao Yuan asked him strangely, What's the matter with you? Yan Heqing restrained himself, and shook his head. Princess Yongning and Xiao Pingyang finished putting together the lanterns. She jumped over a few times while holding her skirt, smiled lovingly at Xiao Yuan and said, Gij, we've already finished with the lanterns, we're ready to go back to the palace. Xiao Yuan said, Huh? So early, then let's go back together. No, you and your imperial bodyguard will go around the street market to shop a little bit more. We will go back by ourselves. Princess Yongning didn't give Xiao Yuan any chance to reply. Her eyes were brightly shining, and with a smile, she took Xiao Pingyang's hand tightly and led her towards the crowd. Soon enough, they both disappeared into the masses. Wait Xiao Yuan stretched out his hand and helplessly said, that's not the way back to the palace. Chapter, 56 Xiao Yuan and Yan Heqing slowly walked side by side on the blue stone board beside the river. There were a lot of candles illuminating the river, it was such a beautiful scenery. Xiao Yuan asked Yan Heqing, would you like to put a lantern? No need. Then, let's go stroll around. Yes. Xiao Yuan stopped walking and looked back at Yan Heqing, he asked him with confusion, Are you angry? What happened? He didn't expect Xiao Yuan to see right through him. Yan Heqing concealed his expression and softly answered, Nothing happened. There's a troop singing there, do you want to go see it? Let's go, let's go, let's go. On top of the stage, set up casually with a wooden board and a red cloth, was a man in female clothes one with his dancing sleeves, singing about a bright and sunny day. Under the stage, there are several low tables and a lot of spectators. The drums were a little loud and the applause was non-stop. After the both of them listened to the music attentively, Yan Heqing suddenly asked, Do you like the princess of the Western Shu Kingdom? Ah! Xiao Yuan was eating melon seeds while listening to the music and Yan Heqing's question caught him off guard, scaring him to death and the seeds in his hands fell. When he finally understood the meaning behind those words, Xiao Yuan reacted with urgency. What the hell, Yan Heqing was truly angry after all, because he got too close with Xiao Pingyang, he started to doubt them both. Yan Heqing, Yan Heqing, you are the one eating in the bowl and looking at the pot too. This is too much, too much. And how could he dare to touch your wife? Everyone knows that the wife of a stallion protagonist can't be touched. You can't even take a glance at her. Cough. Xiao Yuan patted the crumbs of the melon seed on his hands, and after pondering for a while, he finally answered, I don't like her. Who told you that I'm attracted to women? Sure enough, this time, he must rely on sexual orientation to get rid of arousing suspicion. 
Yen He Ching's eyes narrowed slightly, you did say before that you're not a cut sleeve. Ah. Uh, I said that. When did I say that? Oh, I seem to have said it. Xiao Yuan was stupefied, that was before, people change over time. I recently found that I'm more interested in men, look at the actor singing on the stage for example, I find him very eye-catching. Xiao Yuan felt that the air temperature surrounding him got a little colder. Carefully, he looked back at Yan Heqing's face, and couldn't help but cry out inside his heart, I explained it to you but you're still not satisfied. What else do you want me to do? What else should I do? At the end of the evening, the song ended. The market streets gradually got empty leaving behind the lively hustle and bustle. Xiao Yuan was still in a good mood and weighed the gold in his hands that was borrowed from Wanning Wangya. He took Yan Heqing towards the most famous wine shop in the imperial city to buy some intoxicating fine wines and brought them back to the palace. Inside the palace, the both of them came to the sixth floor of the Yuhua Tower. Looking by the fence three at the bright moon, the high buildings, the boundless mountains and rivers, it was such a beautiful scene. Come, let's get drunk and enjoy while we still can for. Xiao Yuan smiled and opened the seal of the wine jar, immediately, a mellow fragrance came from inside the jar. Yan Heqing seemed to be in a better mood and he took over the wine jar to drink alongside Xiao Yuan. After being warmed by wine five, Xiao Yuan was slightly drunk. He held his head and looked at the palace's cornice at the distance, the stars were sparse, and with a soft smile he said, I never thought that there'll be a day in which they'll be so close with you. Yan Heqing looked at Xiao Yuan and replied, Me too. Xiao Yuan drank the second half of the wine jar, stood up shakily, took a breath and said, I suddenly want to sing a song. What type of song? A love song. Xiao Yuan cleared his throat, held on to the railings and began to sing, You're a mighty and powerful man in a horse, the galloping horse is like the wind. The boundless wilderness wanders with you. 6. PFT Yan Heqing choked after taking a sip of wine and coughed for a long time. Xiao Yuan looked at Yan Heqing and laughed at him. His smile was indulgent and warm, he shook his body and his feet were unstable. He stumbled and was supported by Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan held on to Yan Heqing's arm and fell halfway sitting on the ground, this, this really is a love song, even if you don't believe me, it's a love song. Do you believe me or not? Yan Heqing helplessly said, I believe that you're drunk. Well, I am drunk. Xiao Yuan said with a smile, because you've become two, there's two of you in front of me. After he said that, Xiao Yuan grabbed the half-filled jar of wine. Yan Heqing fought with him for the wine jar because he wanted to take it away from him. In the end Xiao Yuan held on to it and emptied its content on his stomach, leaving the almost empty jar on the ground. He then asked Yan Heqing with a smile, have you ever thought about the future? Yan Heqing gently raised his eyebrows, the future? Yes, the future. Xiao Yuan leaned on the railing with his elbow around his knee, and a bright smile adorning his face, I want to find a leisurely village, buy some land, grow a farm, open a wine shop or do business. Although capitalism is rotten, it's still better than not having any money. It'll make some good scholar friends, I won't be deceived and I don't have to suspect anyone seven and there won't be a sword at my neck. I will live a free life, feeling at ease. Yan He Qin leaned over and looked at Xiao Yuan. He was silent for a long time, like he was waiting for him to keep talking. In the end he couldn't wait any longer, so he asked it himself, and then... Xiao Yuan looked back at him and felt that his eyes were a little bit blurry, so he couldn't focus, what then? Yan Heqing's eyes were very clear and his voice was very soft, where am I? What about what about me? Yu Yu Xiao Yuan tried to stand up by holding onto the railing, but he became more and more dizzy because of the wine. His mouth was slurred and he couldn't say a word, but in his mind, his voice was quiet and clear. You're remonstrating with all the officials in civil and military affairs, you're wielding the sword that controls the whole world, you're sleeping on a bed that is sweet-scented. You and me, were too different. One will leave and the other will be lenient, each in their own happiness eight. Yes, Xiao Yuan understands that even if he's now the emperor of the northern kingdom, 
he still hopes that Yan Heqing would be able to rule the world. You, you may, want to, want to carry me back Xiao Yuan couldn't finish his words that he had to lean back against the railing, he was shaking, and half his body fell in the air. Yan Heqing's eyes narrowed and stepped forward very quickly, reaching out for Xiao Yuan he brought him to his embrace. Xiao Yuan smashed into Yan Heqing's arms and then both hugged each other, because of the force of the impact, they staggered for a few steps. The wine jar was kicked with their feet pouring out the liquor inside, its mellow smell was very intoxicating. Yan Heqing's heart was so frightened that it was beating like a drum, and Xiao Yuan chuckled twice. With an unrestrained look, Yan Heqing glanced at his eyes that were misty because of drunkenness. And just then, he heard the world of the mortals whispering passionate words at his ear. On this long night, the wind blew on their sleeves and the red lantern lit up the corner of the balcony. Yan Heqing hugged Xiao Yuan's waist, suddenly leaning over, and kissing his lips. The wine was so fragrant, that it made him forget about the bustling world. Xiao Yuan was so passionately kissed that he couldn't breathe, and his eyes opened with difficulty, only to feel that his human body was in a trance. His feet were floating like in a dream, like he could fall into the clouds. He grabbed Yan Heqing's lapel and pulled it several times, until a small box fell out of Yan Heqing's sleeves. This scared Yan Heqing, stopping his actions, he leaned over to pick up the box with panic. But before that, he looked back and found that Xiao Yuan was leaning against the railing, he was so drunk that he passed out. The small box that fell on the ground rolled out a silk that was only two inches long. Yan Heqing quickly took it back and glanced at it, his eyes were suddenly cold. On the silk cloth there were only a few words, at the beginning of the third day of March, at the Bailey Inn on the west side of the Imperial City, they'll be waiting for seven days. Keep the silk cloth as a token. Today, it's the third day of February. Yan Heqing folded the silk cloth very slowly, put it back into the box, and hid it into his sleeve. Then, he carried Xiao Yuan on his back, and step by step, slowly walking towards the imperial bedchamber, trying very hard to be as silent as possible, taking as many breaks as needed. Chapter, 57 The next day at noon, Xiao Yuan was in a daze he felt his head aching due to a hangover. He searched through his mind about last night's events and remembered the awesome horse set song. He then dreamed of a Mongolian man with the back of a tiger and the waist of a bear one, he said to him in a charming voice, tyrannical president. Have you ever met such a simple, kindest and cute horse rider? Xiao Yuan turned around and ran away. While running, he fell into a man's arms and when he looked up, he saw that it was Yan Heqing. Afterwards, the dream became more frightening than the Mongolian man. In the dream Yan Heqing even kissed him. He kissed him so deeply and affectionately that he couldn't move, this type of kiss made him suspect that it was out of romantic love. After the kiss, Yan Heqing looked at him calmly and began to sing, It's a magical road to the sky e. 2. What the hell is this? The drunken hallucination is really terrible. Xiao Yuan was rubbing his head when Hong Xiu pushed the door open. When she saw that Xiao Yuan had woken up, she quickly brought up the sobering soup and a hot towel. After he drank the hot soup, Xiao Yuan slowly came back to normal, then he asked her, how did I come back yesterday? Hong Xiu covered her mouth and smiled warmly, answering to His Majesty, Bodyguard Yen was the one that brought you back. His Majesty's plan to win his heart than to act with violence is indeed a successful move. Xiao Yuan grinned, was he drunk? If he was drunk, you must give him a sobering soup. Bodyguard Yen was sober last night, but His Majesty was drunk enough to pass out, and that really scared this maidservant to death. Hong Xiu replied. Your Majesty, would you like for this maidservant to open a window to ventilate the air? Yes, open it. Hong Xiu walked towards the window casket, pushed it open, and let the warm spring breeze enter the room. Hong Xiu turned to Xiao Yuan and smiled, Your Majesty, the pear blossom at the corner of the courtyard has bloomed. Pear blossom. Xiao Yuan wanted to look out of the window, but his eyes fell inexplicably on the red hairpin tied at Hong Xiu's bun, the one Xiao Yuan had gifted her before. Hong Xiu answered him with a smile, Yes, it is snow white and beautiful. It seems that the temperature will get warmer. 
The spring is full of warmth, and the time to part ways is getting closer. The envoys of the Western Shu Kingdom spent nearly half a month in the Northern Kingdom, and after the spring melted the snow away, they were ready to leave. With a friendly and diplomatic attitude, Xiao Yuan sent Xiao Pingyang and her envoys out of the imperial city. Xiao Pingyang led the horse in a valiant and formidable way. She said to Xiao Yuan, monarch of the northern kingdom, we will meet again. Xiao Yuan replied to her with a smile, sure. Xiao Pingyang suddenly chuckled, emperor of the northern kingdom, if the world is big, you and I will be family. What the fuck? Xiao Pingyang smiled. Who said that the iron masked lady never laughs? What do you mean with this sudden smile? And what do you mean by becoming family, haven't you read the script? Don't you know that Yen He Ching wants to unify the land under heaven? Xiao Yuan was still in shock, but Xiao Pingyang had already left. She didn't know that the sound of the horse's hoof leaving the imperial city pierced right through someone's heart. In spring, the herbs regained their bugs, which provoked all kinds of diseases. Princess Yongning occasionally will catch the cold and collapse on the bed resentfully, without being able to get up for several days. Xiao Yuan heard the news and hurriedly went to Yongning Palace to see her. Princess Yongning was lying on the bed, her small face was red, she was coughing, her nose and eyes were red too. She looked extremely pitiful. Xiao Yuan asked the imperial physician about her condition, and when he heard that it wasn't a serious illness, he felt relieved. Seeing that Princess Yongning was looking decadent and powerless, Xiao Yuan accompanied her for a long time and talked with her. Then, Princess Yongning suddenly said to him, Imperial brother, I like someone. His three. Xiao Yuan inhaled and exhaled, and sighed inside his heart, as expected, last time, at the street market, the male lead and the female lead fell in love at first sight. They're worthy of being the official relationship. The heaven is fast. Accurate. And ruthless. Princess Yongming carefully observed Xiao Yuan's expression. After seeing that his expression changed from surprise to emotion, she felt really nervous for a while and secretly grabbed the corner of the bed, waiting for Xiao Yuan to give her an answer. Xiao Yuan kind of immersed himself in thoughts, and after a long pause, he said, I understand, I completely understand. Princess Yongming asked nervously, Imperial brother, why you, don't you have any complaints? How would he dare to have any complaints? Xiao Yuan laughed and replied to her, No, you must be happy. Don't let it burden you, it doesn't matter, really. Princess Yongming was so happy that she stretched her hands and hugged Xiao Yuan's waist, Thank you. Imperial brother. Xiao Yuan patted her on the back, feeling in his heart like a father whose daughter had just grown up. Then, in the next few days, Yan He Ching discovered that Xiao Yuan would always look at him with a strange look on his eyes, which once made him suspect that either his feelings or his secret silk scroll had been discovered. Later, Yan He Ching realized that Xiao Yuan might have just poor eyesight. Chapter 58 At spring, the work and swallows are abundant, the world is unpredictable. While Xiao Yuan was thinking that the plot of the original book had been disrupted completely by him, from the general son's mansion came some unexpected news that were beyond his control. The old general son was seriously ill. General son's body didn't collapse out of nowhere. After all, he had been fighting for many years, how could he have a body without any injuries after so many battles? But still, no one expected that he would suddenly fall at this time. When Xiao Yuan arrived at the old general's mansion to pay him a visit, General Sun was already at his deathbed. He took Xiao Yuan by the hand and burst into tears, Your Majesty, although you've been confused in the past, you've changed your mind and you're able to know your mistakes and improve what's wrong. This minister knows that His Majesty has the people in his heart, and His Majesty is a bright monarch that's worthy of his soldiers' trust and is someone worthy of guarding the country against death threats. But Sun Yuzhong will soon die, and I can no longer go to the battlefield. I can no longer protect the country, my heart is unwilling, really unwilling. Xiao Yuan felt like he had a fish bone stuck in his throat one, after a long pause, he softly said, General Sun, you've worked hard. Because the old General Sun needed to rest, Xiao Yuan didn't dare stay for too long, 
and after hearing a few more pieces of advice, he left. When he came out of the general's official residence, Xiao Yuan bumped into a man. It was the second male, Li Wooding. He looked sorrowful and in grief. It seemed that he also knew about General Sun's serious illness. When he saw Xiao Yuan, Li Wooding knelt down and saluted him, Wei Chen salutes His Majesty. Stand up. Xiao Yuan looked at Li Wooding and his heart was filled with complex feelings. General Sun can't lead the army anymore, which means that he should transfer the military power. In the sense of emotion and reasons, Xiao Yuan should give the general's position to Li Wooding. However, Xiao Yuan was hesitant when he remembered that Li Wooding will surely become a traitor in the near future. Are you and Xie Chengui getting along these days? Asked Xiao Yuan. Answering to His Majesty, the youngest son of the Xie family is quite capable. Wei Chen thinks that he will make great achievements in the future. Li Wooding replied. These two, one betrayed the country, and the other protected the country with his own life. But now, they're unexpectedly getting along pretty well. Even though Xiao Yuan already knows the plot of the original book, he still feels that the fate of these two people is really hard to figure out. Xiao Yuan nodded and was about to turn away, ready to leave when Li Wuding suddenly called out to him, Your Majesty. Ha! Huh. Xiao Yuan turned his head around to look at him clearly confused. Li Wuding's eyes were dark, and after a little pause, he finally opened his mouth and said, Your Majesty, it's necessary to be defensive, even from the closest and intimate person around, Orth ministers and Dixiong too. Xiao Yuan stared at him without saying a word. The two of them remained silent for a few seconds until Xiao Yuan asked him directly, Go to the point. Li Wuding replied, Your Majesty, without any conclusive evidence, this official doesn't dare to talk about it. He's not interested in appeasing people. Xiao Yuan simply nodded his head, and turned away. Every year, at the beginning of spring, there will be some competitions at the barracks of the Northern Kingdom. Firstly, it was meant to abandon the old and welcome the new year. Secondly, it was meant to let each soldier check their own training achievements over the past year. This rule was set by the old general son. And even though he's seriously ill and unable to lead the army, this rule continues. At this time, several soldiers were setting up the challenge arena, even if it's a temporary ring, it's important for it to be strong. However, the soldiers were still a little bit exhausted. Because Xiao Yuan was with them, at the side, clapping. When they knocked on the wood wedge, Xiao Yuan will clap, so they had to knock on the wood following his rhythm. Just knock with the rhythm and that's it. Xiao Yuan would also sing along with the rhythm, two tigers, two tigers three. Hello, it's fast over there, slow down, do you understand the four on four claps? Four on four claps. The soldier that was holding the hammer suddenly collapsed. He doesn't understand. He really doesn't understand. A soldier that was next to him patted him comfortably. Xiong Di 4, calm down, this is the emperor, you can't throw the hammer at him. Fortunately, after a while, Li Wooding appeared right in time to rescue the group of five rough soldiers that were forced to accept the influence of music teaching. Your Majesty. Li Wooding was surprised and saluted him five, why are you here? Xiao Yuan smiled mischievously, there's no reason, I just came to take a look. Although his statement wasn't false, it wasn't the entire truth. Because General Sun was seriously ill, the position of general was now vacant Xiao Yuan was still very doubtful whether he should give the position to Li Wooding, so he just came to take a look. Li Wooding was slightly surprised to see Xiao Yuan dressed in a simple and neat white brocade with long sleeves. He was wondering, why would the emperor, who always liked to show off, be so modest now? What surprised Li Wooding even more was that Xiao Yuan only brought with him a single imperial bodyguard. The imperial bodyguard stood quietly behind Xiao Yuan. He wasn't smiling, but he didn't look angry either, yet his presence was extraordinary. But the coldness in his eyes couldn't be ignored. Li Wooding said, Your Majesty, the outside is covered with dust, you can go to the military account. Yes, I also wanted to ask you something. Xiao Yuan nodded his head, turned around but suddenly remembered something, so he turned back to the group of soldiers who were too afraid to even set up the challenge arena and said to them, for claps, strong and weak next strong and weak. 
a soldier that was using the hammer almost hit his hand. Several people came to the military account, all of them were soldiers that were discussing the matter of the competition. When they saw Li Wuding and Xiao Yuan walking in, they immediately knelt down and saluted the emperor. Stand up, I have something to speak privately with General Li, please go out first. Xiao Yuan raised his hand. The several soldiers quickly withdrew from the military account, leaving only Xiao Yuan and Li Wuning behind. Chapter 59 One of the soldiers wondered, wasn't the emperor never interested in the barracks? Why did he suddenly come today? Another soldier with a sharp face and thin eyes sneered and replied to him, Stupid, General Sun is seriously ill. The emperor must have come because of the matter regarding the general's position. The general's position must definitely go to General Lee. Someone said. The sharp-faced soldier touched his chin, I don't think so, after all, the close friend of Wanning Wanya is guff. Knowing that he almost consciously said the wrong thing, the sharp-faced soldier coughed and stopped talking. The several soldiers that came out of the military account were about to go to the competition arena, when they suddenly saw an imperial bodyguard standing at the front of the military account. The imperial bodyguard was dressed in dark clothes with black patterns. His eyebrows were sword-shaped and his eyes were like stars, they couldn't be ignored. The several soldiers thought about the emperor and they couldn't help themselves, staring at him more intensively. At a first glance, the sharp-faced soldier suddenly stopped and stared straight at Yen Heqing, after a while, he started cursing, this son of a bitch, isn't he? With that, the sharp-faced soldier stepped forward and reached for Yen Heqing's lapel, his mouth made a strange noise, oh one, isn't this Yen Heqing? Everyone else went stunned and hurriedly walked forward, Nye Air, what are you doing, this is his majesty's person. Motherfucker, what kind of the emperor's person? He's from the Southern Yen Kingdom. Nye Air sneered. What Southern Yen Kingdom? Everyone was surprised. All of a sudden, Yen Heqing was also shocked for a bit, and after seeing Nye Air's face more carefully, Yen Heqing's expression suddenly changed. Eh? Did Yen Huangzi thought of me? Nye Air laughed disdainfully. I was the one that escorted Yen Huangzi all the way to the Northern Kingdom. Oh, did I leave a little impression on Yen Huangzi? I did break your arm on the way, ouch. But now, it looks like it's already healed. After he said that, Nye Air reached out to touch Yen Heqing's right shoulder. Yen Heqing blocked him with a cold face and Nye Air abruptly kicked him on the knee, throwing him on the ground. Then he stepped on Yen Heqing, and with a cruel smile he said, I could expect you to be dead by now after being sent to prison. What I didn't expect was that you'll become his majesty's dog. You're really difficult to deal with. In fact, Yen Heqing was perfectly capable of beating Nye Air to a pulp, he just couldn't do it right now because he was in the Northern Kingdom's barracks. If he made any move against the soldiers of the Northern Kingdom, he would bring shame to Xiao Yuan. That's enough, Nye Air. If his majesty hears about this, you will have to bear painful consequences. Someone stepped forward and persuaded him to stop. The Emperor? It's even possible for the Emperor to think that the captives of the enemy country are more important than the soldiers that fight for him? Nye Air said with disdain. Kneeling down, he pressed Yen Heqing's head into the sand, his eyes were glancing at him fiercely. Yen Heqing, even if you're the Emperor's dog, you still have the blood of the southern Yen Kingdom in your veins. The northern kingdom doesn't welcome dogs like you. Do you understand? Quick as lightning, Yen Heqing suddenly reached out his hand and grabbed Nye Air's neck. His posture was twisted, and then, he suddenly withdrew his strength. These actions were very quick and neat, almost shocking to death all the soldiers present on the scene. Nye Air didn't know how to react at all and his throat fell into the hands of his enemy. In the end, the expected pain didn't hit him, because Yen Heqing withdrew his hand in silence. When Ye Air recovered from his initial shock, he suddenly bursted into laughter, you don't dare. Yes, you don't dare to start a fight, because this is the northern kingdom. But you can still give it a try, do you want to fight? Yen He Ching, I tell you, you're not brave enough to dare, but I dare. After saying that, Ye Air raised his fist towards Yen He Ching's cheek, but at that instant, he was stopped by someone else. 
Xie Chengui firmly blocked Nye Er's fist and frowned, Nye Er, Dage 2, what are you doing? There are rules in the barracks, fighting is not allowed. When Nye Er saw that Xie Chengui stopped him, he wasn't annoyed at all. He replied to him, Xie, Shower 3, this can't be called fighting. If this isn't fighting, then what is it? Out of nowhere, a majestic voice came from behind, and Li Wooding looked at Nye Er with anger. Nye Er knew that he was on the wrong side of the argument, so he just let go of Yan He Ching and stood up. Nye Er. You're looking to get punished, aren't you? Li Wooding stared at him with anger, asking him with a deep voice. General Li, please calm down. Someone pleaded for Nye Er. This man is from the Southern Yen Kingdom. Nye Er's brother died in the hands of the Southern Yen soldiers, so Nye Er he General Li this. Fine, after the competition is over, I will punish him with the penalty of ten military sticks. Lee Wooding said with a sharp voice, turned around and walked back to the military account. Knowing that Lee Wooding has always rewarded the punishment seriously, no one dared to say anything more, and left one after another with a loud yes. Nye Er took a last look at Yan He Ching and turned around, placing his arm around Xie Chengui's shoulders and said, Huh, I was getting rid of the anger inside my heart. These ten military sticks will be worth it. Let's go, Xie Shaor. Before the competition starts, let this gidge teach you a few tricks. Someone laughed at him, pull it down, would you? Xie Chengui knows more about fighting than you do. Nye Er loosened his hold on Xie Chengui's shoulders and jokingly pushed that man, get lost. You're talking pure bullshit. Xie Chengui looked back at Yan He Ching, who hadn't gotten up yet, and after seeing that he wasn't able to clearly see Yan He Ching's expression since he had his head lowered. He no longer paid attention to him and followed the group of soldiers that were laughing and joking in the distance. As the crowd dispersed, Yan He Ching started to get up very slowly. He held the hilt of his sword resting at his waist with one hand. It was clear that the palm holding the hilt was red and bloody, but Yan He Ching was unaware of this. He finally stood up and straightened his back. He slowly tidied up his appearance and patted the dust off his body. His eyes were slightly cold and lacked any emotion. Yan He Ching raised his head and looked at the Northern Kingdom barracks with these eyes, like looking at a dead object, calm and indifferent. Chapter 60 Li Wooding walked back to the military account, and Xiao Yuan, who was sitting cross-legged on the felt, looked at him, what happened? Some soldiers were having a fight. I have already dealt with it. Li Wooding answered. Xiao Yuan nodded, right. By the way, where's General Fan Tong? Your Majesty, you're asking about Fan Tong. Yes, yes, Fan Tong won. Wanning Wang Yes trusted aide is the second candidate for the general's position. Li Wooding replied, General Fan doesn't come to the barracks that often. Xiao Yuan reluctantly held his head with one hand. This was the exact reason why his mind was so entangled, if, according to the original book, he gave the general's position to Fan Tong, then the soldiers of the Northern Kingdom would become more and more dispirited and will not have any fighting spirit. But, if it were given to Li Wooding, the one that would most likely betray the country when the time came, then the Northern Kingdom would be like a bird trapped in a cage, a turtle trapped in its own shell, trampled by the armored horses of Southern Yen. Seeing that Xiao Yuan was silent, Li Wooding sat upright, with his hands on his knees waiting patiently. Suddenly, a shout of cheers came from the outside of the account, and Xiao Yuan's line of thought was interrupted by it. He then raised his head to ask, what's happening outside? Li Wooding replied to him, someone must have won a competition. It started already. Xiao Yuan stood up. Let's look at it for a while. Both of them went out of the military account and walked towards the competition arena. Yan He Ching, who had been guarding the account, kept his eyes on them all the way. The three of them went towards the contest and after walking for a while, Xiao Yuan stopped all of a sudden. Turning around he took a look at Yan He Ching's palm and reached out to pat the sand off his forehead, then he asked him, who provoked you? Yan He Ching, nobody. Li Wooding, Nye Er. The both of them talked at the same time, but their answers were different. Xiao Yuan looked at Yan He Ching and then at Li Wooding, then he said to Li Wooding, explain. 
A moment ago, my improper discipline in the soldiers led them to fight and I wasn't able to control the fighting, I plead his majesty to punish M. Xiao Yuan interrupted him, you mentioned a name just now, could you say it again? Li Wooding was puzzled but still answered him, Nye Er. Nye Er. Xiao Yuan positioned his finger against his chin. The name sounded too familiar, but Xiao Yuan couldn't remember it from the original book just now. There was another shout and applause coming from the arena, and Xiao Yuan decided to put down the doubts wandering in his mind and looked up instead. Not far away, Xia Chengui hit the horse and advanced forward. Taking the bow and setting an arrow, he focused himself on stretching the bow at its fullest and then let the arrow go. The arrow hit at the red center and a young man with high spirits started to applause and cheer. Xie Chengui didn't show a proud look and jumped off the horse, then he bowed in gratitude for those that were applauding for him. Someone came to report, generally, the results of the equestrian competition came out. The first place is for the youngest son of the Xie family, Xie Chengui. Not surprised, Li Wooding smiled slightly, yes, as expected. After the equestrian challenge, too many people were participating at the martial arts competition so they divided the platform into two arenas. Xiao Yuan stood happily under one of the arenas to watch the match with great interest. Suddenly, he heard that a sharp-faced and narrow-minded soldier stood victorious, and someone shouted, Yes. That's Nye Er. Xiao Yuan quickly fixed his eyes on the soldier, but the only thing he saw was the soldier making an extremely provocative gesture towards the arena. This gesture was directed at Yan Hiqing. When he saw that Yan Hiqin looked away, Nye Er immediately sneered. Xiao Yuan then abruptly realized who this Nye Er was. In the original book, when the southern Yan kingdom was invaded, and Yan Hiqin was taken away from the southern Yan towards the northern kingdom, this soldier was the one in charge of him. Because his brother died on the battlefield, this soldier felt extreme disgust for the people of the southern Yan kingdom, so he used all means to humiliate Yan Hiqin all the way back. Not only did he not give food to him, or sometimes he would give him moldy food, but also, he even nearly ruined Yan Heqing's left arm. Xiao Yuan was very impressed by the original book. This soldier even dared to press Yan Heqing's head into the dirty water and maliciously said, Aren't you a dog? Why don't you bark? Come on, let's hear your bark, they'll give you something to eat if you bark. Fine, Xiao Yuan understands that all of these things happened in order to pave the way for the toughening of Yan Hiqing. But he still lamented that there's no other way than to just deal with the plot, and at the same time, he filled a 300-word length comment for the author at the comment section, You evil stepmother, please accept this blade as a thank you gift. There's a trace of unhappiness rising from the bottom of President Xiao's heart. He clung uneasily to the cuffs of his royal dress, and then turned his head to look at Yan Heqing and said, I feel like I'm wearing a suit and a cigar is in my hand right now, so I will start a new chapter on my road of becoming a tyrannical president. Yan Heqing didn't understand him at all, what? Xiao Yuan smiled lightly at him, then he propped himself up to the arena and clapped Nye Air, come on, let's have a match. Chapter, 61 Everyone was stunned. The young monarch's face was so tender and delicate, and his body wasn't built. Just now, he shocked everyone because of this unusual action. Nye Air was also dumbfounded. He breathed with difficulty for a long time, and with some hesitation he said, Your Majesty I Weichen doesn't dare, I. Don't worry, just treat me like an ordinary person. Xiao Yuan approached him. Nye Air looked at Xiao Yuan's thin arms and legs and felt that he could break the monarch's small body if he touched it casually. His breath was accelerated and hard, no, your majesty, I'm afraid that if I move my hand I will hurt you. It's not good. Xiao Yuan smiled slightly, then he abruptly reached out and twisted Nye Air's left arm and pinned him to the ground. Once again, everyone present was stunned when they saw Nye Air fell to the ground. When he came back to reality, he felt some pain gradually coming from his left arm. He felt anxious and in a hurry he broke away from Xiao Yuan's grip and then turned over. Xiao Yuan's face showed a light smile, but secretly in his heart he was saying, the body of the emperor of the northern kingdom is too weak. He can't even twist an arm. Do you understand that it's okay to exercise outside the bed once in a while? 
Although he felt frustrated, Nye'er didn't dare to fight seriously with the emperor. He quickly clenched his fist and said, Your majesty is really good at martial arts, but Wei Chen can't compare with him, I must admit my defeat. Nye'er quickly got down the challenge arena, fearing angering the emperor. In the end, it wasn't interesting enough. Xiao Yuan felt embarrassed and that he couldn't show his face in public, jumped down from the arena holding his heart firmly with one hand, then he raised his head meeting Yan Heqing's bright eyes. When he looked at him, it was like a thousand lights were shining inside his pupils, with a soft voice Yan Heqing said to him, Thank you. All of a sudden, Xiao Yuan didn't feel so ashamed anymore. The challenge arena at the side was very noisy, because on the other side was full of fists and punches, they were fighting to the ground. Xie Chengui went with all of his strength, but still, he couldn't hold Li Wuding's fist. Someone whispered in a low voice, How come these two are fighting so fiercely? Sai, you don't know. What do you mean? General Li said to the youngest son of the Xia family that if he manages to beat him, then he would make him his deputy. The youngest son of the Xia family is outstanding, General Li doesn't let the water go one. General Li did let it go one time before, but Xie Chengui got so angry that he refused to admit he had won and admitted defeat instead. So after that General Li had been fighting with him with all his strength. It turns out it was like this. In other words, Xie Chengui had already been defeated. Xie Chengui was half kneeling on the ground, clenching his fist tightly, he seemed disappointed with the end result. Suddenly, he felt a hand touching his head. It was Li Wuding who was patting his head, there's some progress. Xie Chengui clenched his teeth and said, I'm still unable to win against you. Li Wuding smirked, you will in the future. Xie Chengui raised his head, his eyes were burning like fire, and his tone was firm, I definitely will. Li Wuding stretched out his hand and pulled Xie Chengui up, looking back at him, he was still smiling, yes, I'm waiting for that day to come. The martial arts competition slowly came to an end. The next day, Xiao Yuan, after tossing and turning all night in bed, finally decided to give the general's position to Li Wuding. First of all, he didn't want to go the same path as the original book. Secondly, although Li Wuding may betray his country, he still was a close friend of the old general's son, so it will not be like the original where it was reported that the soldiers were being abusive to the common people. After receiving the imperial edict, Li Wuding knelt on the ground and lost his voice for a long while before giving his thanks to the emperor. Li Wuding was supposed to hold a banquet in his mansion commemorating such a big event. However he was afraid that because of General Sun's serious illness, it wasn't appropriate to celebrate a happy event. So, in the end, he only invited a few Dixiong that fought alongside him in the battlefield. He said to them that it was just a small drinking party to liven things up a bit. Even though he didn't fight side by side with Li Wuding, Xie Chengui received an invitation anyway. Xie Chengui attended the celebration banquet for the first time and paid great attention to it. He solemnly discussed the congratulation gift with his mother and family, and then took a carriage to the Li mansion, dressed in royal clothes. Although General Li had already made great contributions in war and gained a formidable prestige, his mansion was still very humble. The young boy almost thought that he had gone in the wrong direction. There were no bodyguards or servants, and a red door god two painting was posted in front of the narrow vermilion wood door. Xie Chengui walked towards the front door and knocked twice, but then he saw that the door was unlocked. After a little hesitation, he pushed the door open and walked in. What he saw inside was a simple small courtyard, a stone chair, a wooden shed and the entrance of a grapevine. Xie Chengui was still in a daze when he saw a man walking out of the kitchen, inside it was filled with a little bit of smoke. Li Wuding, who had a chicken in his left hand and a duck in his right hand, looked at the silk and satin that Xie Chengui was wearing, at the rare and precious gifts in his hands, and then looked down at his own coarse linen clothes, a thesis that stood duck soup. As Li Wuding said that, he raised the white-haired duck with its neck in his hand. The duck didn't succumb to the cruelty of fate and tried to fight against the shackles of being slaughtered by someone. After that, several muddy duck feathers fell slowly into the silk holding the jewels in Xie Chengui's hands. Li Wuding silently hid the duck behind him. Yu Yu Xie Chengui stuttered, he was so scared that he started to talk with honorific speech, 
do you cook by yourself? Li Wuding nodded with a smile, I didn't make it clear to you earlier. It's not a feast, rather it's more of having a meal together with the Dishion. In the end you had to spend a lot of time preparing, it was impolite of me. It's might was me who was the one that didn't understand. Xie Chengui bowed his head, his voice getting smaller as he spoke. Suddenly, someone pushed open the door and entered. It was one of the soldiers, a big bearded man. His voice was loud and full of vitality, and when he entered through the door, he shouted, Who? Li Wooding. Oops, I should be calling you Great General Li Three now, right? Is the wine ready? Whoops. Who's this? And why are you all dressed up? Eh, isn't this the youngest son of the Xie family? Ha ha ha, are you here to ask for a maiden's hand in marriage? Such a shame because there's only rough old men here. Xie Chengui lowered his head and was unable to speak. Even in a low voice, he looked extremely embarrassed. Li Wuding smashed the soldier with his shoulder away, what? That was such a sour speech, can't you bear to see a young man with a good appearance? Cough. Isn't it a pity for him? Look at the youngest son of the Xie family and how he came to congratulate you in contrast to how you entertain guests dressed like that. The man with a big beard and an imposing aura didn't want to lose. He laughed until he choked with his own saliva. Li Wuding laughed alongside him, and then whispered to Xie Chengui, you can go put the gift at the wing room, and, if you don't mind, you can also change into my clothes. Just wait for these people to get drunk. In case they make a scene, you will end up smelling of wine. Okay. Xie Chengui nodded. Li Wuding laughed loudly, and then walked into the kitchen with the chicken and the duck in his hands. The author has something to say. As for the president's military force value, he has something to say. President Xiao, if I could return to my original body, don't even mention Nye Air, Nye 3, 4, 5, 6 or 74, I would even dare to fight Yan Ji Yan He Ching, huh? Xiao Yuan, uh nothing, you heard me wrong. Yan He Ching, you might as well give it a try. Xiao Yuan, T try I it. W8. What are you saying? Yan He Ching, try it in bed. Xiao Yuan, Yan Ji Yi. Wake up. The plot hasn't even developed to that stage, not yet. Chapter, 62. The courtyard wasn't big, and yet, there were so many wing rooms. Xie Chengui didn't know which one should he go in and turned around to ask when he saw the bearded big soldier standing behind him. He smiled and patted Xie Chengui on the head, don't worry, Li Wuding's house doesn't have any girls. You can enter whatever room you want, that one is his room where his robes and armor are. Xie Chengui became more and more surprised with Li's mansion, General Li is well known for his merits, why doesn't he have a wife? The bearded soldier coughed and replied, everyone wants to marry some girl to him, but he's the one that doesn't want to get married. He says that because he doesn't know if he will live or die on the battlefield, he doesn't want to hurt his unfortunate wife. Xie Chengui nodded and then walked into Li Wuding's wing room. Li Wuding's wing room also had a simple decoration. A single bed, a round table, a few low stools, and if it wasn't for the dozen or so crumpled military books filling the bookshelves, the room would seem pretty empty. Xie Chengui quickly changed his clothes and couldn't help his curiosity, so he took a military book and looked at it for a little bit. After reading for a while, he realized that some time had passed already, so he placed the military book where it was before and quickly left the wing room. In the courtyard, Li Wuding was arranging the dishes and chopsticks. Around the big round table were the several soldiers, who already began to drink for some time now. When they saw Xie Chengui returning, the bearded soldier waved at him and urged, youngest son of the Xie family, come quickly. We were just waiting for you. The dishes on the table weren't exquisite. These could be described as being simple home cooking, but the taste was actually pretty good. The group of big men were eating happily and soon the meat dishes were almost gone. Unlike the several soldiers that came from the battlefield, Xie Chengui had a good family education ever since he was a child. Compared with the soldiers that were eating directly with their hands, his eating style could be described as being extremely polite. 
Li Wuding glanced at the soldiers who were devouring the food like their life depended on it, and then at Xie Chengui, who was slowly eating with his head slightly bowed. He involuntarily smiled, picked up an empty plate and filled it with a large amount of meat and vegetables and then placed it in front of Xie Chengui. Although Xie Chengui was the youngest child in his family, he was never granted a favor like this, to eat selected food especially for him. He was so surprised that he repeatedly waved his hands, generally, I. Li Wuding interrupted him, it's all right, I don't have so many rules in my house. You must eat until you're full. After all, how can such a young man beat me if he doesn't eat enough to grow strong? Xie Chengui squeezed his chopsticks tightly, stopped talking, and started devouring the meat and vegetables that were offered to him. After three rounds of drinking, the soldiers were quite drunk. When their chopsticks finally fell, they began to talk about their feats in the battlefield and the reason behind why they became soldiers in the first place. The Xie family joined the army from generation to generation, and ever since Xie Chengui was born, he knew that his fate must be at the battlefield fighting alongside a very powerful army. So, at first glance, when he heard their reasons for joining the army, he felt that they were incredible and surprising. Xie Chengui was happily nodding his head while listening, and then, he turned to ask Li Wuding, generally, why did you join the army? Li Wuding thought for a while and then decided to say, I won't say it, I'm afraid that you will be disappointed. Seeing that Xie Chengui was reluctantly staring at him, Li Wuding felt helpless, fine, I'll tell you. I joined the army because I wanted to survive. Xie Chengui was caught off guard, survive? Li Wuding nodded, when I was sixteen, there was a famine in the village, but because of the war, the last grain has to be handed over to the imperial court. It couldn't be helped. In order to be able to eat, I became a soldier. Xie Chengui asked him again, what about your parents, siblings? Li Wuding put the last bite of rice at the bottom of the bowl into his mouth and softly said, they all starve to death. Those five words, spoken with a light voice, weren't as heavy as a feather, but it still felt like a big mountain was crushing Xie Chengui, making him lose his voice. The lofty beliefs and obsessions of some people are just the bottom line for others to survive. Even though the banquet was simple, it was extremely enjoyable. The several soldiers stubbornly dispersed in the middle of the night. After Li Wuding sent the several soldiers away, he returned to the mansion and saw that Xie Chengui had already changed into his clothes again. Li Wuding said to him, That generous gift, would you like to take it back with you? I'm afraid that it's too expensive. Xie Chengui said, My parents kindly send their regards, I hope General Li won't dislike them. Li Wuding refused again and again, then he laughed out loud and said, then I will accept it. When you succeed at the military field, I'll repay it all. No, I'll double the repayment. Xie Chengui's eyes brightened with enough light to ignite fire, good. Chapter, 63 Some people were happy, and some other were sad. It's certain that Li Wuding must have been the one in the position of great general, but at the palace of Wuning Wanya, the sky was shrouded in clouds. The young monarch promised to Wuning Wanya that he would pass on the position of general to his close friend, but now, out of nowhere, he changed his mind and made Wuning Wanya walk on thin ice. In the dark of the night, at the Wangfu, Wuning Wanya and his advisor Wan were discussing this incident, Wanya, the southern Yan kingdom has quietly sent troops to support you. For the major event, regarding the rebellion, you should make a lightning decision too, no delays are allowed. Wuning Wangye pressed his forehead with one hand and sighed, but the emperor doesn't leave the imperial palace. Day and night he's. His advisor whispered, Wangye, in a few days, the emperor will definitely come out of the imperial palace. Wuning Wangye looked at him strangely, why? The advisor attached himself to Wuning Wangye's ear, murmured in a low voice, and then said out loud, it depends on what Wang Ye wants to do. Don't you think it would be too sudden to launch the rebellion right now? Wang Ye, you've been preparing for such a long time, how can this be an abrupt decision? Besides, these recent days the emperor's temperament had greatly changed. He's not a cut sleeve anymore and he gave the general's position to Li Wuding. Isn't all this a sign for you? Wang Ye, right now hesitation is prohibited. Wang Wang Ye nodded, and in his eyes there's an evil and desperate brightness. 
On the third day after Li Wuding was appointed as great general, the old general Sun passed away. On the day of General Sun's death, the northern kingdom had the last wave of cold in spring and the last snowfall. Everything was buried under snow. Even though General Sun wanted to be buried in a simple way before his death, Xiao Yuan refused and decided that, to be buried as a general, the funeral must be held with the army. On that day, Xiao Yuan saw Li Wuding and Xie Chengui again. They were dressed in white mourning clothes. They were supporting the coffin and walking towards the graveyard. General Sun didn't have any heirs, and still, he didn't lack people that were willing to support him. Some white flags were flying with the wind and copper coins three were flying all over the sky, the sound of sobbing and crying could be heard everywhere. Xiao Yuan stood in front of the tombstone, and suddenly felt the wind and clouds were weird like if the world just got colder and somber. Towards the end of the evening, when the funeral was over, Xiao Yuan returned to the palace inside the imperial chariot. He was escorted by his imperial guards in front and behind him, which made the procession seem like a long and heavy journey. Hong Xiao, who was walking besides the imperial chariot, saw that Xiao Yuan was in a bad mood and with a worried voice, she asked him, Your Majesty, are you feeling okay? Xiao Yuan shook his head and said, I'm fine, it's just that I didn't expect that it would snow again. Hong Xiao tried to calm him down, Don't worry, Your Majesty, it is already February 28, this must be the last snowfall of spring. Xiao Yuan seemed to catch some important words and his voice suddenly changed, February 28. Hong Xiao answered him, Yes, Your Majesty, what happened? Xiao Yuan held the side of the imperial chariot, and some uneasy anxiety gradually filled his heart. February 28, in the original book, was the day when Yang Liuan sacrificed his life for the young emperor. In the original book, there was no funeral for the old general son. The monarch of the northern kingdom simply went out to play that day. On his way back to the imperial palace, an assassination attempt was made by the civilians that weren't willing to deal with his tyranny anymore. As an imperial bodyguard, Yang Liuan in order to protect the emperor's life, gave his in the end. At present, Yang Liuan's position was replaced by Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan raised his eyes and saw Yan Heqing, who was at the left side of the imperial chariot. Xiao Yuan took a deep breath and suppressed the uneasiness inside his heart. No, Xiao Yuan said to himself, he has always been humble, he doesn't squander the national treasury, never collected heavy taxes, not to mention he never punished the common people. Moreover, he's not even playing around, and the imperial palace is not the same as what it used to be, so he shouldn't have anything to worry about. Xiao Yuan comforted himself a few times, until finally, he felt a little calmer. He raised his eyes and saw Yan Heqing staring at him somewhat anxiously. Xiao Yuan smiled at him, the atmosphere was inexplicably calm all around. The snow was falling and the clouds were not scattering, instead these black clouds seemed like they were oppressing the city, and the moon gradually disappeared behind them. For a while, the windy night was very dark, and Xiao Yuan wasn't able to see the expression on Yan Heqing's face clearly. The two of them stared at each other in the darkness, and when the moonlight shined for time to time through the dense clouds, Xiao Yuan's eyes suddenly shrank. Because a sharp arrow came out of nowhere. And it struck the imperial chariot, right besides his ear. Footnotes. Chapter, 64. Warning, Graphic Description of Death. In an instant, thousands of arrows were fired at the same time. Some of them were impossible to dodge and the imperial guards, who relaxed their vigilance before, raised their shields turning themselves into hedgehogs. Their dead faces were extremely terrifying. Xiao Yuan was being protected by Yan Heqing. He raised his sword to block away several arrows and pressed Xiao Yuan behind the imperial chariot, stay here, don't come out. W8, H hold on. Xiao Yuan's body was uncontrollably shivering and he was unable to speak clearly. He still got up as quick as he could, and pulled Hong Xiao over besides the imperial chariot with him as a shelter to block the sharp arrows. Hong Xiao's left arm was pierced with a sharp arrow and the blood was flowing from the injury, dyeing her gauze skirt red. Her face was white and her eyes were full of fear, her voice was sobbing, Why oh your majesty, are you okay your majesty? 
Xiao Yuan held her wound and started to comfort her, I'm fine. You don't need to be afraid, you'll be fine too, don't be afraid. The remaining imperial guards quickly gathered around the imperial chariot to draw swords and protect their monarch. At that instant, there were no more arrows being shot, and after a second of silence in the air, many people dressed in black suddenly appeared from the dark. They didn't even hesitate and immediately raised their sharp swords. Protect the Emperor. The Imperial Guards, after shouting, raised their swords to meet with the enemy, but because the other side had too many people, they were being repressed. There was a bloody smell in the air, and the lights and shadows of the swords were appearing faintly one. Yan Heqing grabbed Xiao Yuan's arm and with an anxious tone of voice he said, Let's go. The voice of Yan Heqing faded when five people dressed in black surrounded them. Their martial arts were exceptional and their swords were fierce, but they didn't touch any vital points in Yan Heqing's body. They were just trying to separate him from Xiao Yuan, however Yan Heqing didn't intend to get separated from him. With so many people, there was a long standoff, and these several people dressed in black were waving their swords at them. Gradually, Yan Heqing showed some weakness and he was unable to protect Xiao Yuan. As a result, the two of them ended up being separated. Yan Heqing's arm was caught by someone and he ended up kneeling on the ground, unable to move. A man dressed in black slowly stepped forward, and when he took off the cloth covering his face, one in Wang Ye's face appeared. Yan Heqing looked at him, his eyes showing complicated emotions for a moment, his four limbs and bones were gradually immersed in cold. Yan Heqing tried to open his mouth, but his throat felt like being strangled, making his eyes dizzy, and his blood freeze. Since it was Wanning Wang Ye the one behind this, that means that these people dressed in black were the soldiers of the southern Yan kingdom that were lent to Wanning Wang Ye, and he was also an important part of pushing forward this plan. Wanning Wang Ye chuckled and whispered to Yan Heqing, Yan Huangzi, you've done a great job in this farce. I know you're supposed to be the emperor's imperial bodyguard, rest assured, you don't have to worry about losing your reputation of protecting the monarch. When I'm done, they'll send you out of the palace immediately and make you return to the southern Yan kingdom. After saying that, Wanning Wang Ye waved his hand gently. Wait Yan He Qing's eyes suddenly shrunk, he was struggling to see at the direction of Xiao Yuan's escape, but he was hit hard at the side of his neck, immediately fainting on the ground. There were so many people on the other side that it was impossible for Xiao Yuan to run away at all. While he was protecting Hong Xiu, he punched a man's face who was dressed in black, and then he received a sneak attack from behind, someone kicked him making him fall on the ground. Your Majesty! Hong Xiu screamed and stepped forward to help him, but she was pulled away. Xiao Yuan was unstable, and he was immediately pushed down by several men dressed in black. When he looked up, he saw Wanning Wang Ye looking down at him. He had a crazy smile on his face. Your Majesty, in fact, I didn't intend to make such a sudden attack. Wanning Wang Ye kneeled and looked down at Xiao Yuan, but, why did you have to give the military power to Li Wuding? Xiao Yuan sneered, because with General Fan Tong too, the Northern Kingdom will be over. TCH TCH, Emperor, that's not what you said before. However, there wasn't any faith in those words three. Wanning Wang Ye narrowed his eyes. Wasn't you the one whose words lacked faith, and secretly colluded with the enemy? Xiao Yuan sneered. He can't lose his imposing aura. Damn you! Your Majesty, even at a time like this, I can't forgive you. Wanning Wang Ye laughed. His Majesty can be assured that if the Northern Kingdom is in my hands, it will grow stronger than when it was in yours. Ha ha ha, these men dressed in black are not my soldiers of the Northern Kingdom. You even have to rely on the power of other countries. Who gave you the confidence to say this, and how will you ensure that the throne will be definitely yours? I will be wanting Wang Ye stood up and slowly raised his sword, his eyes were full of murderous intent. As long as you're dead, I will definitely take the throne. He moved his sword in a treacherous way, and for a brief moment the world went silent. Xiao Yuan slowly closed his eyes in resignation. Your Majesty! A scream suddenly cut through the sky, and Xiao Yuan abruptly opened his eyes. What he saw was something he didn't want to see in this lifetime. Hong Xiao stood in front of him. 
Her body was so delicate, and the sharp blade cut her throat and cheek. Hong Xiu slowly and slowly fell right in front of Xiao Yuan's eyes. A warm liquid splashed on Xiao Yuan's face, and his body unexpectedly started to shiver. He can't hear anything, he didn't even hear what Wan Ying Wanya said to him, there's still people who are willing to block a sword for you. It seems that you must have had some good points as an emperor. He couldn't see. He didn't even see when Wan Ying Wanya moved his sword again, but then, an unexpected sharp arrow penetrated his arm making him drop his sword to the ground. He couldn't hear Li Wuding shouting, Wei Chen arrived late to protect his majesty. He wasn't able to see anything just for a brief moment, but the situation suddenly was reversed. He came to reality, hurriedly stepped forward and hugged Hong Xiu's body covered in blood tightly, his mind was full of thoughts, how could this happen, how could this end up like this? Hong Xiu tightly grasped Xiao Yuan's sleeves. Her throat was cut open by the sharp blade and a scar spread to her left cheek, it was shockingly red all over. She seemed to want to say something to him, but when she opened her mouth, her throat was bleeding non-stop. Hong Xiu looked at him twice, opening her mouth and breathing with difficulty, but the blood just kept pouring more and more. Slowly, she reached out to her head and tried her best to remove the red flower hairpin from her hair. With a last effort she slowly placed it into Xiao Yuan's hands. Xiao Yuan saw Hong Xiu smiling at him sweetly, and that smile pulled the cut wound, making her feel extreme pain. Then, her arm fell on the ground and she no longer breathed. It's not this wasn't supposed to be, it wasn't supposed to be like this. When Xiao Yuan heard himself murmuring like this, he felt like his voice was extremely desperate and sad. His body was helplessly trembling while holding the body of Hong Xiu, he seemed to try to stop her body from losing warmth, but all that effort was in vain. This wasn't supposed to happen like this, the ending of Hong Xiu wasn't like this at all. She should be able to escape from the imperial city after the northern kingdom was broken into, take her brother and sister with her, and spend the rest of their lives in a small village, in peace. Why is this happening? Why? This kind of thing. There was a cruel voice, whispering in Xiao Yuan's ear. That's right, you clearly knew that after Yan Heqing and Wanning Wangye meet each other, Wanning Wangye will be assisted by the Southern Yan Kingdom soldiers. You willingly passed the general's position to Li Wuding, forcing Wanning Wangye to revolt against this military change. All of that, isn't that just the truth? Hong Xiu was killed by you. Why did you always treat yourself as an outsider? Why did you treat people as you pleased? For what reason? The howling wind roared and passed through the place they were at, Ji Ji Ji's four voice was like a woman cursing and laughing in Xiao Yuan's ear. Chapter, 65 The rebellion launched by Wanning Wanya shocked all the civilians and military officials at court. Although Li Wuding had heard some rumors regarding this rebellion a long time ago, and he was on constant alert, he was still too late for the rescue. Fortunately, the emperor didn't fault him. As soon as this happened, the situation suddenly changed. The former followers of Wanning Wang Ye's political party, and even his close friends, were thrown into prison waiting for the investigation to be carried out. That night, Yan Heqin pushed open the door of Xiao Yuan's imperial bedchamber and saw him standing by the window holding a red flower hairpin in his hand and looking at the blooming pear blossom tree at the corner of the courtyard. The red flower hairpin was still stained with blood, which by now looked almost black. Xiao Yuan turned around and when he saw Yan Heqing standing in front of him, he asked him, Why are you here? Is your injury better? Yan Heqing looked at him and answered with a very light tone of voice, I know you can't sleep alone, I came to keep you company. Xiao Yuan suddenly realized that yes, he had indeed said to Yan Heqing before that without Hong Xiu's company at the side of his bed, he wasn't able to fall asleep. Are you all right? Yan Heqing asked him carefully. Xiao Yuan looked down at the hairpin in his hand, and in a whisper he said, Tell me, if she knew that I'm not the monarch of the Northern Kingdom, would she still have died for me? She below Jiuquan Wan, will she regret it? And me, why did I let her die for me, why did I? Yan Heqing stepped forward, held Xiao Yuan's hand, and covered the hairpin, you're overthinking. Xiao Yuan raised his head and looked at Yan Heqing. His eyes looked tired and heartbroken, 
his clear little sorrowful tears hit right to Yan Heqing's heart, Yan Heqing, I killed her. Yan Heqing pitifully reached out for Xiao Yuan's body and embraced him in his arms, gently patting his back trying to comfort him, it wasn't you, that wasn't your fault. Xiao Yuan lowered his head, hiding his expression, he clutched Yan Heqing's clothes with force until his fingers became white, Yan Heqing, will you accompany me tonight? Yes, I'll stay with you. At night, the wind was cold, and it seemed to cry with resentment. After Xiao Yuan listened to Yan Heqing's breathing at the edge of the bed for a while, he silently sat up and looked at his sleeping face. Xiao Yuan thought for a long time, and then, reached out and took a key from Yan Heqing's robe. He carefully got up, dressed himself in a thick cloak, and moving as silently as he could, he slowly walked out of the imperial bedchamber. The imperial bodyguards outside the bedchamber were shocked, but after seeing Xiao Yuan making a silencing gesture, they quickly shut their mouths. Xiao Yuan walked under the desolate moonlight and quietly went to the secondary room beside the imperial bedchamber. That was where Yan Heqing, his personal bodyguard, lived. He took the key hidden in his clothes and opened the door, walking inside carefully. With the help of the moonlight, Xiao Yuan looked at the layout of the room for a while. Then he walked towards the bed, bent down, and touched the wood under the bed inch by inch. In vain, Xiao Yuan tried again until finally, he reached the innermost place, and found a small gap. It was a false panel made with extremely rough workmanship, just like it was described in the original book. Xiao Yuan pulled out a tiny scroll from the secret compartment, opened it and glanced at it. Then he stood up and hid it inside his sleeve. Quietly, he left the room and locked the door. The next day, when Yan Heqing opened his eyes, he found that Xiao Yuan had already gotten up. Xiao Yuan was standing by the window, clutching the red hairpin that he gave Hong Xiao as a gift before she died. When Xiao Yuan heard a sound behind him, he looked back at Yan Heqing and said, Are you awake? Thank you for staying with me, I should go to the morning court. Yes. Yan Heqing looked at his eyes, and saw that they were still warm, but he wasn't able to see the smile in them like before. Suddenly, he realized that something was quietly changing between them. The thing that should have been so easily noticed by the two of them, suddenly got its cover lifted, standing completely naked in front of them. It was something extremely serious and cruel. All of them should have run in opposite directions too from the start, why are you feeling so concerned now? Welcome back to the angsty drama. How have y'all been these couple of days? I was working hard alongside Moki Asaji our proofreader to move the S and have them re-edit. So let's give a huge thank you to Moki Asaji. Chapter, 66 When they realized this abnormality, silence spread between them. Xiao Yuan repeated what he said previously about having to go to the morning court, and then got up and left. Yan Heqing tidied up his clothes and planned to go back to his room. However, just when he had left the imperial bedchamber, two fierce-looking men came over, Are you Yan Heqing? Yan Heqing frowned, Yes. Come with us. The two of them seemed afraid that Yan Heqing would try to run away, so they carried him towards the secondary room next to the imperial bedchamber. A tall and mighty man was standing in front of the door of the secondary room with a line of soldiers behind him. The two fierce-looking men clenched their first at this man, generally, we've brought him. Li Wuding nodded and raised his eyes to look at Yan Heqing. His eyes were burning, and he spoke slowly, Prince of the Southern Yan Kingdom, Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing suddenly understood why he was brought here, and with a cold face, he didn't answer. Li Wuding also didn't expect for him to answer, and pointing behind him, he ordered the soldiers, search. As soon as this order fell, the door of the room was kicked open violently, and the poor lock fell to one side. Dozens of soldiers entered the room and began to search inch by inch. The vase was smashed, the table and chairs were overturned, the mattress was pierced, and all the cotton wadding was torn apart. In a short time, the room became a mess, and the dozens of soldiers kept searching in the narrow room over and over again, but in the end, nothing suspicious was found. Li Wuding's eyebrow gradually became a frown while the time was passing. He walked into the room, paced back and forth, and finally stopped in front of the messy bed that had been turned upside down. He asked the men around him, 
did someone look through the bottom of the bed? Answering to the general, I have. After thinking for a brief moment, Lee Wooding said, turn the whole bed over and look through it again. Yes. Yen Heqing's expression didn't change, but his heart suddenly froze. With the effort of three soldiers, the whole bed was lifted up. A soldier groped the wood carefully and after a little while, he shouted, General Lee, there's a secret compartment here. Lee Wooding was slightly pleased and said, open it. The soldier shouted yes, and then opened the secret compartment. To everyone's surprise, there was nothing inside it. Lee Wooding frowned again. He strode to Yan He Ching and stared at him, his eyes gloomy, why is there a secret compartment under the bed? Yan He Ching stared at him fearlessly, I don't know. Li Wooding gritted his teeth, turned his head, and said, keep searching. The group of soldiers almost lifted up the ground, and yet, they still found nothing. Without any evidence, Li Wooding couldn't arrest anyone at will. With desperation, he had to take his soldiers away. When all of them left, Yan He Ching stood in front of the overturned bed. Looking at the empty secret compartment for a while, he wasn't able to breathe well. He was trembling and felt very uneasy. Li Wooding was about to leave the palace feeling very annoyed, when he was suddenly blocked by a man. It was Eunuch Zhao. Eunuch Zhao smiled at Li Wooding and said, General Li, this old servant is in charge of the House of Internal Affairs. Li Wooding had heard earlier that there was an old eunuch that served for three generations named Zhao in the Imperial City, but he had nothing to do with eunuchs, so for a brief moment he was very puzzled, you're eunuch Zhao. I didn't expect that General Li would recognize this old servant. This old servant was sincerely afraid. Eunuch Zhao bowed his hand and said. This old servant wanted to ask General Li one thing. This time, you led the soldiers inside the palace because you suspected that Yan He Ching had something to do with Wanning Wang Ye, who colluded with the Southern Yan Kingdom. Li Wooding thought about it for a moment, and then answered with the truth, indeed. Eunuch Xiao nodded, this old servant understands and thanks General Li for confirming it to me. Seeing that Eunuch Xiao turned around ready to leave, Li Wooding quickly reached out his hand and stopped him, Eunuch Xiao, what does this mean? Eunuch Xiao chuckled at Li Wooding, General Li, men like you that have a righteous temperament pays extra care to the evidence in order to implement punishment, but this old servant is not the same kind of man like you. This old servant just needs to think about how to make his majesty sleep peacefully one, nothing more. After he said that, Eunuch Xiao knocked slightly on his back, and slowly walked towards the secondary room. In Eunuch Xiao's whole life, he had made very little miscalculations. Had been in charge of the House of Internal Affairs for many years. He was ruthless, determined, and killing people with a simple knife was one of his best tricks. And yet, he didn't expect that Yan He Ching would have been a part of this. Eunuch Xiao always thought that Yan He Ching, who was willing to become a male concubine, must have broken the backbone of his arrogance. Right now, he felt that he himself became old and easy to deceive. Or maybe it was that Yan He Ching's true colors were being hidden too deeply. Fortunately, it's not too late to mend the fold after the sheep ran away too. Eunuch Zhao had been inside this palace for more than 40 years. His best skill is to use torture to pry open a person's mouth. Ah, he almost got caught. What will happen next? Chapter 67 Xiao Yuan returned early in the morning and took a short break after having lunch. In the afternoon, he read the memorials for half a day. When he saw that the sunlight became dim, he looked up from the pile of memorials, and felt that something was wrong. Instead of Hong Xiu, a maidservant stepped down to salute him, Your Majesty, would you like to eat dinner? Xiao Yuan nodded. Suddenly, he felt like he could see the silhouette of Hong Xiu, and stared blankly at the vermilion hairpin laying on the table. His chest felt extremely tight and painful. Xiao Yuan stood up wanting to go to the courtyard to get some fresh air. When he walked out of the gate of his bedchamber, that strange feeling surged up once again. He walked back and forth in a dazed state. Suddenly, he realized what was that wrong feeling he felt before, after leaving for the morning court, he hadn't seen Yan He Ching for the whole day. Xiao Yuan went back to the gate of his bedchamber and asked one of the imperial bodyguards that was guarding the door, is Yan He Ching not on duty today? 
The several imperial bodyguards hesitated, but they ended up saying that they weren't sure. One of them replied instead, answering to his majesty, Yen He Ching has been temporarily transported to another palace. Where was he transferred to? Yongming Hall. Princess Yongming asked for him. Answering to his majesty, yes. Xiao Yuan nodded, inexplicably feeling a little bit lonely, he went back to his bedchamber, losing appetite for dinner. He then stood at the window and stared at the courtyard, thinking about the future. After a while, Xiao Yuan suddenly frowned. The imperial bodyguards are under the jurisdiction of the House of Internal Affairs, and the transfer must go through the hands of eunuch Xiao. Princess Yongming can't take someone away with just a few words. Moreover, Wanning Wangye colluded with the southern Yen Kingdom to launch an attack, which caused the palace to go into panic. Yen He Ching, who also happened to be the prince of the southern Yen Kingdom, became the target of public criticism. With such a situation at hand, the idea of him being suddenly transferred to Yongming Hall made him feel that something wasn't right. Xiao Yuan suddenly turned and rushed out of the imperial bedchamber. Regardless of the insisting voices of the maidservant and the imperial bodyguards, he went straight to Yongming Hall. When he finally reached Yongming Hall he asked the princess and, as expected, she didn't know anything at all. Inside his heart, Xiao Yuan was blaming himself for this negligence, and hurriedly walked towards the House of Internal Affairs. At the House of Internal Affairs, eunuch Xiao had already heard that the emperor was approaching. He put down the teacup, tapped his knees, and slowly got up from the chair, saluting at Xiao Yuan, Your Majesty. When Xiao Yuan looked at the kind-faced old man, he couldn't help but think about the river of white bones and blood that was hiding behind his back, Eunuch Xiao, you should already guess why I came here. Your Majesty, this old slave that grew up watching everything inside this palace. What the emperor is thinking, how can this old slave don't know? Eunuch Xiao replied. It is just that His Majesty must understand that after the incident that took place a few days ago, it's necessary to guard against suspicious people, and it's better for His Majesty to not take care of it. This old slave will give the Emperor satisfactory results soon. Eunuch Xiao, without any evidence, you can't just act on simple speculations. Your Majesty, even if there's no evidence right now, will Wang Ye's followers be able to keep their mouths shut? At this time, when everyone that has been involved in the matter has been exposed, this old slave just feels that it won't take much time before the truth comes out. Xiao Yuan's mouth pursed into a tight line. He also knew that Yan He Ching would be persecuted sooner or later the longer he stayed at the palace. But he didn't expect it would happen so soon. Eunuch Xiao covered his mouth and coughed twice. His whole person looked more and more bent, when His Majesty was still a child, he used to listen to this old slave very much. Later, when His Majesty got older, there wasn't a chance for this old slave to advise the emperor anymore. Now, I hope that His Majesty will listen to this old slave's advice again. Your Majesty, even if you like him, you can't keep him. There could always be a substitute, this breakup is not unfortunate. I'm more afraid that His Majesty would hurt himself for the sake of this love. Xiao Yuan stared at eunuch Xiao, and for a moment, he didn't know how to answer. Eunuch Xiao was vicious and cruel, but in this world where Xiao Yuan could hate anyone, he still wasn't able to hate him. Eunuch Xiao has been inside the palace for so many years, and every single thing he had done before was with a single purpose in mind. For the stability of the Northern Kingdom. For the safety of the monarch of the Northern Kingdom. Therefore, even if he was abandoned by thousands of people, Xiao Yuan must not be one of them. Your Majesty. Eunuch Xiao's voice sounded like a pleading, old and hoarse. This time, you must listen to this old slave. In feeling the same as XYA, I want to hate Eunuch Xiao so bad. But in the end I can't, because he's just doing his job, and at the end of the day, YHQ is the Northern Kingdom's enemy, if XYA wasn't the Emperor, he would have longer been sentenced to die like in the original. Chapter, 68 Inside a dark and gloomy room, the candle lights were flickering on and off, giving a weird effect that could bring people's hearts into panic. In the middle of the dark room, Yan He Ching's hands were tied up with chains and they were hung high. His hair was loose, his upper body was naked, and his skin was covered with shockingly deep and bloody whiplash wounds. 
Stuart Fong, while staring at Yen Heqing, was playing with the iron whip in his hands. This whip was barbed and could splatter someone's skin at each stroke. Does it hurt? Stuart Fong laughed and stretched out his hand to press on Yen Heqing's wound, brutally tearing it apart. MNH Yen Heqing's body began to uncontrollably tremble all over, and his throat was groaning with suppressed pain. Tell me, when did Wanning Wangya and you began to plot the rebellion? Where's the evidence? Oh, you better listen to me, hurry up and say the truth. If you speak now, you won't have to suffer this kind of pain anymore. Suffering a short pain is better than a long one one. Steward Fong spoke with particular kindness. He was good at persuading people with words too. However, Yen Heqing didn't appreciate his words and sneered instead, his tone was full of sarcasm. Steward Fong helplessly shook his head and lashed out at Yen Heqing's body once again. The barb drew up the flesh, leaving behind an extremely deep and bloody wound. Yen Heqing swallowed the screams and sobbed so hard that he could barely breathe from the pain. At the present situation, it's hard for you to escape alive, so why don't you just admit it and avoid suffering this torture? Perhaps, you're still waiting for His Majesty to come save you? Steward Fong shook the iron whip on his hand throwing the dirty blood out of it. Wake up! You conspired a rebellion with the enemy, and you almost got His Majesty killed. Yen Heqing's breathing was stagnant, then he gasped full of pain. If you're not able to stand this much, then you can just tell me about your collusion with Wanning Wangya. You'll die anyway, it's better to die quickly than to die painfully, so hurry up. Steward Fong thought that Yen Heqing was finally unable to carry on, so he was trying to persuade him again with some reasonable words. However, Yen Heqing still refused to open his mouth. Steward Fong repeated his words for a second time, then he tossed the iron whip aside, took a shovel from the wall full of torture devices, and put it into the red charcoal fire standing at the center of the dark room. Because of the pain, Yen Heqing's breathing was very heavy and slow. His wheezing sounds blended together with the hissing sound of the burning hot shovel, creating an extremely horrific sound effect. I was kind enough to give you a chance. Steward Fong turned over the shovel in the charcoal fire and carelessly said, None of these tactics of mine can get into eunuch Zhao's eyes. Do you know that he has this rare kind of powder? When sprinkled onto a wound, it will make the victim feel itchy and painful, like thousands of ants gnawing at it. Ah, I've seen it in action once. The man had a horrible and miserable death, his whole body was scratched to feel some relief. So I suggest you, one more time, you better speak up sooner rather than regret it later. Seeing that Yen Heqing was still refusing to utter a single word, Steward Fong picked up the red-hot shovel, walked up to Yen Heqing, and blew the shovel to his face without touching it. The shovel was emitting a heat wave will you explain? Oh, can you explain to me why are you being so stubbornly brainless? All right, I've tried to persuade you enough. Since you're stubborn to death, don't blame me. Steward Fong shook his head and directed the shovel to Yan Heqing's chest. Stop! A furious shout accompanied by the sound of the dark room's door being kicked open interrupted him. Steward Fong's hand suddenly released the shovel letting it fall to the ground. The first thing that Xiao Yuan saw in the dark room was the miserable state that Yan Heqing was in. Suddenly, he felt like he couldn't breathe at all. Your Majesty! Steward Fong fell to his knees in fright, like being between two wars three, his face turned pale. Xiao Yuan didn't bother to pay attention to him. He quickly walked to Yan Heqing and untied the iron chains on his wrists. Yan Heqing, who couldn't stand up, fell straight into Xiao Yuan's arms. Xiao Yuan didn't dare to doubt whether it was too late or not. He embraced Yan Heqing, and rushed to the Taiyi Palace in a hurry. Yan Heqing, who stood unconscious for an entire day, still hadn't woken up yet. Xiao Yuan was pacing back and forth in the Taiyi Palace. The old imperial physician, feeling a bit scared, tried to comfort him, Your Majesty, you don't need to worry. His life is not in danger. Xiao Yuan nodded, and when he saw that the imperial physician was pounding the medicine, he took a few steps over and extended his hand, he'll do it. The imperial physician's face turned pale with fright, Your Majesty. 
How can this subject for let his majesty do such a thing? Xiao Yuan took the medicine weight anyways, it'll help you release stress. He said, regardless of the imperial physician's insistence to stop him, and pestered him twice. The old imperial physician's heart was at the point of suffering a seizure. In fact, Xiao Yuan was in a bad mood. In an extremely bad mood. Because he gradually realized that no matter how much he had changed the original plot before, the overall direction seems to be being pulled back by some kind of invisible force. However, because Hong Xiao died for him, Xiao Yuan didn't want to just sit still and wait for death to arrive 5. He wanted to change something. For his life was no longer his own, but also the life of the young monarch of the Northern Kingdom who had been saved by Hong Xiao. Suddenly, the sound of a porcelain bowl crashing on the floor and Yan Heqing's coughing came from the inner room, startling both Xiao Yuan and the old imperial physician. Xiao Yuan stood up immediately, but then he stopped himself. The imperial physician rushed into the inner room. After a few minutes, he walked out in a hurry, reporting to Xiao Yuan, Your Majesty, he's awake. Xiao Yuan nodded and took a few steps to the door of the inner room, but he didn't go in right away. Xiao Yuan has been trying to see himself as an outsider for a very important reason, he doesn't know how to balance the Northern Kingdom and Yan Heqin together. He always thought that he could be able to ignore the rivalry between the two. While strengthening the Northern Kingdom, he could also protect Yan Heqin. But in this world, there's no way to satisfy both sides. Hong Xiao's death occurred so suddenly that it made Xiao Yuan abruptly wake up to reality, making him understand that he has never been an outsider at all. Never. And even if he hadn't realized this issue before, Xiao Yuan would have still hesitated between both sides. Now, he would not hesitate. He can't disrespect Hong Xiao's death. Definitely not. Xiao Yuan took a deep breath and pushed open the door walking through the inner room. Yan Heqing, who was sitting on the bed, was bending down trying to pick up the porcelain bowl head knocked over when he woke up. When Xiao Yuan walked in, he picked up the porcelain bowl and placed it next to the bed. Carefully looking at Yan Heqing, he asked, Are you okay? How do you feel? Yan Heqing nodded his head. He was enduring the pain he felt on his body, slightly easing his breath rhythm. Then you must rest well. It'll come back tomorrow night, there's something I must discuss with you. The hand Xiao Yuan was secretly hiding behind his back was clenched into a fist. Looking at Xiao Yuan turning away, an uneasiness gradually surged up from the bottom of Yan Heqing's heart. It was the vague feeling that he had experienced before, and now it was growing more and more intensively. Xiao Yuan. Yan Heqing suddenly opened his mouth to call out for him. Xiao Yuan slowly turned his head, his warm black eyes fixed right to Yan Heqing's. Yan Heqing suddenly realized where that uneasiness feeling was coming from. Ever since Wanning Wang Ye's sudden attack, resulting in Hong Xiao's death, Xiao Yuan had never smiled at him again. Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan began to speak slowly, as if he was making a final decision. Finally, he continued, his words were like the silver light on a sharp blade, extremely cruel. You should call me your majesty from now on. Yan Heqing breathed slowly and his back abruptly straightened. His mouth opened blankly, as if he wanted to answer something, but in the end, he couldn't utter a single word. Xiao Yuan no longer lingered and walked out of the inner room, leaving Yan Heqing completely alone. For a long time, Yan Heqing's head stayed low, his hand was tightly gripping his chest, and when he touched a wound the pain began to stimulate the nerves. However, Yan Heqing seemed like he was ignorant of this pain and just pressed his heart more intensively, because what was he feeling right now was even more painful than physical pain. Aag my heart hurts. Ooh at least Zaya came save YHQ but now I'm scared, colon. Chapter, 69 Because he was unable to sleep out of grief, he held his clothes up and wandered around. Accompanied by a solitary lamp, Xiao Yuan sat at the table staring at the two hairpins in his hand. One was red and had carved flowers on it, the other one was made out of white flawless jade. Xiao Yuan's mind was still full with the words Eunuch Zhao said to him before, will wanting Wang Ye's followers stay silent. Finally, he made a decision. Xiao Yuan put away the hairpins, 
and while holding his clothes tightly, he went to the Taiyi Palace alone. When he reached the inner room, Xiao Yuan pushed the door open and found Yan Heqin leaning against the bed, patiently waiting for him. Probably because of his injuries, Yan Heqin's face was bloodless and his pale lips were lifeless. Xiao Yuan had to swallow back the words of concern that wanted to get out as he thought of his next decision. Yan Heqin. Xiao Yuan, who stood with his hands down, said in a soft voice, I didn't expect that there will be some things that we couldn't stop from happening in the end. Yan Heqin looked at him, remembering the first time he saw him at the firewood room. When Xiao Yuan sat on top of the wood pile, laughingly patting the side next to him, telling him to sit down. How long has it been since that happened? How long? Yan Heqin cleared his throat, his voice was hoarse and dry, do you believe me? Xiao Yuan took out the two-inch scroll and gently placed it on the table, what do you want me to believe about? In fact, Xiao Yuan was seriously asking him about this, but Yan Heqin heard it as if he was speaking sarcastically. This scroll was like a sharp blade, cutting off Yan Heqin's last shred of hope. That's right, how could he still dare to ask Xiao Yuan to trust him? Xiao Yuan was always helpful and friendly to him in every possible way. But what about him? He colluded with people that had some ulterior motives, even causing Xiao Yuan to almost die at one in Wang Ye's hands. Yan Heqing has been treated by Xiao Yuan with an open heart, and yet, he betrayed him. If he was in Xiao Yuan's position, he wouldn't be able to forgive himself. How could he have the face one to make Xiao Yuan believe in him again? Xiao Yuan casually reached out and opened the scroll on the table. Yan Heqing, I already knew that you wanted to leave come to think of it, it's also true that you suffered endless humiliation in the Northern Kingdom and that you feel a strong resentment for this country. Am I right? Yan Heqing lowered his eyes, as if he had turned a deaf ear to his words. The candle flame beside his bed was blown by the cool breeze coming from outside the window. This firelight leaped on Yan Heqing's bloodless face, but couldn't leap into the bottom of his dark eyes. Endless humiliation and resentment. That's right, there's no mistake in that. For him, the Northern Kingdom was just that. From the very moment the Northern Kingdom's Iron Cavalry stepped into the Southern Yan Kingdom, there was not a day when he didn't think about taking revenge. Not a day went by that he didn't think of returning the pain that the Southern Yan Kingdom had suffered. Not a day passed by when he didn't think about wanting to escape from the shackles and the cage, escaping the place where the prisoners were engraved into his bones. Seeing that Yan Heqin was refusing to speak, Xiao Yuan lowered his eyes and continued, I thought that I could change something, but now it seems that it's useless. Yan Heqin finally had a reaction, his fingers slightly moved as he slowly raised his head to look at Xiao Yuan, the bottom of his eyes finally showing some emotions in them. Seeing the humiliation he suffered and the hatred he had in his eyes, Xiao Yuan carefully glanced at him, Yan Heqing then spoke slowly, What do you want to change? Xiao Yuan suddenly froze. That's right, what does he want to change? Does he want Yan Heqing to stay in the Northern Kingdom, because of his compassion and kindness, making him into a slave for the rest of his life as his imperial bodyguard? No, he never thought of him that way. He wanted to see the man in front of him becoming like the one from the original book, wielding a sword, ruling over the world, ruling over the unified nation. If that was the case, then what on earth does he want to change? Right, he wants to keep on living. However, he's now the emperor of the northern kingdom. He's carrying on his shoulders the backbone of the soldiers of the northern kingdom, and the dependence of its people. Regarding history, perhaps the change of dynasties cannot be avoided. But when you're part of it, the word country will be engraved into your bones, melt into your blood and burn inside your chest. The later generations will look after it. But at this time, it's the Son of Heaven too the one guarding the country gates, and he will die for his nation. Why does he want to live? Why is he still trying in vain to survive? He has been believing his own lies, doesn't he? As if Xiao Yuan had suddenly been viciously slapped on the face, he looked right at Yan Heqing, his breath quickened as he mumbled, so you've always understood. His voice gradually became weak, and Xiao Yuan slowly became mute, unable to utter a single word. It turns out that Yan Heqing had always been seeing things clearly, 
only he himself was the only one foolishly trying to think of himself as an outsider. Yan Heqing suddenly laughed, his eyes overflowing with blood and trembling with endless pain, but the corners of his mouth slowly curled up as he said, Xiao Yuan, between the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Yan Kingdom, only a life and death three situation can exist. But Xiao Yuan, towards you, I. That's enough. Xiao Yuan interrupted Yan Heqing. He slowly raised his head, only indifference was remaining in his originally warm eyes. If the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Yan Kingdom can only share a life and death fate, then you and I will have to share that same life and death fate. When Hong Xiu died, Xiao Yuan hid his own self away. Ever since Hong Xiu died for the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom, he had decided to become the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom once and for all. Ever since Yan Heqing said that the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Yan Kingdom couldn't live together. Then he, the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom, couldn't live together with Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan's voice was like the last straw, landing lightly on Yan Heqing's shoulder. His eyes were like a candle that was about to burn out, vivaciously shaking with a faint light. He felt like his body was pulled in half. One half was looking at the ruined and desolate Southern Yan Kingdom Imperial City. The other half was looking at Xiao Yuan, who was laughing recklessly on the Yuhua Tower that day. Both parts of his body were festering faintly. Naturally, because of this pain, Yan Heqing hardly wanted to keep on living for. The inner room was in complete silence for a while, only the sound of their breathing could be heard. After some time, Xiao Yuan slowly took out a small white porcelain bottle from his sleeve, he walked to the bedside and handed it to Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing stared at the small porcelain bottle and stretched out his hand to hold and fondle it. He asked with a hoarse voice, What's this? Are you going to? Are you going to kill me? Xiao Yuan didn't answer him. Yan Heqing inhaled deeply, Xiao Yu. Xiao Yuan interrupted him, his voice was absolutely determined, Call me your majesty. Xiao. You. An. As if on purpose, Yan Heqing shouted out Xiao Yuan's name, one word at a time. His eyes were fixed on Xiao Yuan, as if he was about to devour him. He held the porcelain bottle tightly in one hand, his knuckles were white and his fingers blue. Xiao Yuan, do you really want me to drink this thing? Xiao Yuan's eyes fluttered for a moment, feeling like he had a fish bone stuck in his throat five, then hesitantly nodded his head very slowly. Fine, then I'll drink it. However, when Yan Heqing said those words, he seemed to have used all the strength he had left. His eyes finally darkened, like burned out ashes, and after struggling for a bit, only despair remained. Yan Heqing opened the white porcelain bottle and drank the bitter liquid in a violent way. After drinking, Yan Heqing stared intensely into Xiao Yuan's eyes, as if he wanted to see through Xiao Yuan until the very the end. Wanting to rip out the soul behind his eyes, and then open his body, so that this soul could take a good look at his unwillingness and desperation. Xiao Yuan, why did you have to be reborn as the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom, why? His limbs became weaker and weaker, and Yan Heqing's voice gradually faded away. Soon, he held his forehead and fell forward. When Xiao Yuan saw that Yan Heqing was about to fall off the bed, he quickly stepped forward to hold him firmly. When Yan Heqing's consciousness began to fragment, he heard Xiao Yuan's voice as if it was at the distance, I don't know, maybe. It was so I could meet you. Seeing that Yan Heqing was completely unconscious, Xiao Yuan let out a long sigh. For one, this sigh represented that he didn't have any other alternative six, the other reason was that he felt extremely helpless. Xiao Yuan saw himself laughing recklessly not so long ago, when he vowed to be honest with Yan Heqing and said to him, Yan Heqing, do you want to become my imperial bodyguard? I'll protect you and I will never let anyone hurt you. And now, he was doing the exact same thing he said he wouldn't let happen. However, this was also the last time he would protect Yan Heqing as the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom. After this, there will not be a second time. If there's any chance to meet each other again in the future, it will be at the arms of war. That night, at the gate of the palace, a carriage was stopped by the imperial guards. After a little bit, it was let through again. After leaving the imperial city, the carriage ran straight to the west post station and never came back. 
When the captain of the Imperial Guards heard this news, he yelled at them, generally said that the horses and carriages leaving the Imperial City should be carefully searched and checked out these days. But a young Imperial Guard touched his head and replied feeling extremely wronged. That carriage had His Majesty's instructions. His Majesty's instructions, ah. Fine, you guys continue with the vigilance, and by the way, what day is today? Today's the third day of March. Ah, the third day of March. The captain looked up at the overcast sky. TCH. The weather is changing. Yen Heqin was about to confess his feelings but Xiao Yuan interrupted him. And now they're both heartbroken because of miscommunications. I hate it here. Chapter, 70 On the fourth day of March, the second day after Yen Heqin quietly disappeared from the palace, Li Wuding finally managed to get everything out of Wanning Wang Ye's followers' mouths. Without hesitation, Li Wuding immediately led his troops into the palace. But when he got there, he was informed of the surprising notice that Yen Heqin had already escaped from the imperial city. Li Wuding, feeling deep remorse, went to Xiao Yuan's imperial bedchamber to ask for forgiveness. However, when he reached the bedchamber, he was informed that Xiao Yuan was not inside but in the Yuhua Tower. On the sixth floor of Yuhua Tower, Xiao Yuan was drinking wine depressingly alone. When he heard that Li Wuding came requesting for admonishment, he nodded his head in agreement. Li Wuding walked and cupped his fist, kneeling on one knee, Your Majesty, the case has been thoroughly investigated. Wanning Wang Ye colluded with the Southern Yen Kingdom to launch a rebellion. I've dealt with all the people involved, but the Prince of the Southern Yen Kingdom, Yen Heqing, escaped from the palace at some unknown time. Wei Chen is extremely ashamed, I've failed His Majesty. Xiao Yuan, who was feeling extremely guilty, covered his mouth and coughed lightly. Facing Li Wuding's seriousness, Xiao Yuan, who felt very ashamed, guilty, and embarrassed, suddenly patted the railing, how do you usually take care of things? This can't be forgotten, General Li. How can we let such an important person escape just like that? Deduction of wages, deduction of wages. Cut the bonus, cut the bonus. Well, this is a good opportunity. Li Wuding said, I ask His Majesty to punish me. Punishment. Here, your punishment is to drink these three jars of wine. Xiao Yuan moved the wine that was resting at his side, towards Li Wuding. Li Wuding, who thought that he misheard, raised his head in disbelief, ah. Drink. Xiao Yuan simply replied with a more shocking word, opening the seal of the wine jar, and handing it to Li Wuding. Li Wuding had no other choice but to drink with Xiao Yuan. And then, after many drinks, they got drunk. It's okay to get drunk, once in a while. And it's even better to get wildly drunk together with someone else. Xiao Yuan then said that he wanted to sing. When he began to sing, the lyrics he sang were, It was you who wanted to be a part in the first place, if we separate, we separate one. Li Wuding, who's usually an unruffled and serious man, howled to show off how he could crush a big stone with his chest. He took a really big rock. This wasn't the end of it. Xiao Yuan cleared his throat and came over to talk to Li Wuding, you don't need to read military books all day long. Can't you go get yourself a wife? In the end, you're the second male. Why should all the girls belong to Yen Heqing? Li Wuding hid an empty wine jar and his whole face was red, the youngest son of the Xie family, Xie Chengui, is really a young talent ah. Your Majesty, you don't know, but last time he shot an arrow he blinded a bear. The imposing way the arrow penetrated the clouds was extremely high-spirited. Xiao Yuan stammered, I know which girl is better for you in this book, what kind of girl you'll like, and I will guide you on how to properly court her. Li Wuding hesitated a bit and then replied, and now, Xie Chengui and I are in a martial arts constant competition. I feel like I'm less capable than I desire to, before it was very clear that I could easily win over him. But his progress is horrifying fast. Xiao Yuan answered with a flustered tone of voice, The plot is here to develop Yan Heqing's black belly, do you think you'll get gouged out by him the next time you two meet? Li Wuding staggered and replied, Xie Chengui says that he wants to fight against the world in the name of the Northern Kingdom, what an ambitious young man. Xiao Yuan said, 
That's right, I know you. I know all about you, cheers. Lee Wooding replied, right, when you're drinking with a close friend, even a thousand cups will still be too little three, cheers. Their conversations weren't even on the same page. After finishing their cups of wine, the two confidants went and vomited while holding on to the railing. The next day, Princess Yongning came to the imperial bedchamber to greet Xiao Yuan, who was suffering a hangover and a headache, and to gossip, I heard that General Li, who woke up drunk yesterday, was so ashamed that he tried to jump down from the Yuhua Tower. Xiao Yuan, this. Princess Yongning pinched a melon seed from the table and rubbed it, did you hold him? What? I didn't, I definitely didn't. Don't talk nonsense. Xiao Yuan denied it three times. Princess Yangning's face was full of knowing smiles, Imperial brother, I haven't said anything yet. Princess Yongning continued, then he did hold you for. WTF. Where's the supposed innocent mind? Did you switch personalities with someone else? What's more, Lee Wooding is a straight man. Can he even become gay? And even if he wants to become gay, he'll become gay by Yan Heqing's extremely handsome face, do you understand? Bah, what a good pile of bullshit five. Yan Heqing is the male protagonist of a stallion novel. No matter how handsome his face is, he's still more handsome for girls' taste. Imperial brother. Princess Yongning put down the melon seed in her hands, patting away the crumbs, and asking perceptively, are you in a bad mood? Xiao Yuan looked at Princess Yongning and suddenly wondered whether in the original book, if the princess had known beforehand that Yan Heqing would annihilate the Northern Kingdom, would she still have helped him escape? And what was the last thing on her mind when she hanged herself? Xiao Yuan clenched his hand slightly, closed his eyes, and said, I knew something was wrong but I still did it. Princess Yongning was startled, but then said with a smile, Imperial brother, there's no such thing a right or wrong. Otherwise, why would you do it if you knew it was wrong? This is just like putting two objects on a scale in your heart, which side is heavier? It's whichever way it goes, on the other side just remains the guilt. Xiao Yuan lowered his eyes, slightly startled. Perhaps Yan Heqing was more important in his heart than what he previously thought. Now, however, it's not the time to be disappointed. As things stood now, all Xiao Yuan had to do and think about was how to preserve the Northern Kingdom. Princess Yongning chatted with Xiao Yuan for a while, and after seeing that he was no longer preoccupied, she left feeling more at ease. Xiao Yuan was planning to have a good rest when he suddenly remembered something. Wait a minute. Aren't Princess Yongning and Yan Heqing in love with each other? Why was it that now that Yan Heqing has suddenly disappeared, Princess Yongning was acting as if nothing had happened? Xiao Yuan couldn't think of a reason why she didn't react at all. He could only attribute everything to the fact that the male lead and the female lead must have a heart of gold and they don't need to worry about each other. After all, in the second half of this stallion novel, as long as there was a good-looking girl, she would surely fall in love with Yan Heqing and devote herself to him for three lifetimes. Therefore, Xiao Yuan naturally ignores these logic problems. In order to protect the Northern Kingdom, Xiao Yuan began to leave the thoughts regarding the original book behind. He changed the five days per week system of the Northern Kingdom to a daily imperial court. By devoting himself to the politics of the Northern Kingdom, his body, which was not strong enough to begin with, was becoming thinner and thinner. Xiao Yuan thought, well, even if he was the socialist successor of the 21st century and knew little about the rules of ancient law. After so many years of reading history, he believed that he could be able to select and appoint talents and care for the common people's needs. As long as the Northern Kingdom state treasury wouldn't be empty, he would be able to fight a war and give full support to the army. Even if Li Wooding betrayed the country, Xia Chungui would be able to hold on, and when the armies face off against each other, they will survive until the middle of winter. Moreover, Yan Heqing's army was formed by southerners, and because they were unable to withstand the cold, it would be very likely that they would retreat. After stabilizing and slowly reorganizing the court councillors, the Northern Kingdom will not collapse so easily. They can survive. Xiao Yuan suddenly changed from a fatuous monarch who was addicted to male lust, to a wise and open-minded emperor. 
Naturally, this issue became the first topic of discussion on the imperial city. Some people were saying that the late emperor manifested himself in him, while others said that the young monarch was stimulated by the sudden attack of Wanning Wangya. Among so many disturbing voices, only Princess Yongning ran to the imperial bedchamber and said to Xiao Yuan, Imperial brother, you should have a good rest. Don't overwork your body and compromise your health. I'm fine, I'm perfectly fine. Xiao Yuan rubbed the corners of his eyes, they were bloodshot and his voice sounded extremely tired. Ninger, I can't talk to you today, we'll talk early tomorrow. I must finish reading these memorials. Princess Yongning wanted to say something to him, but decided to hide those words, and with a soft sigh, she left. Thanks to Xiao Yuan efforts, the Northern Kingdom, which before was gradually declining, began to slowly improve. And just when Xiao Yuan thought that he could breathe with peace, he was forcefully slapped in the face by the heavens. At the end of May, there was a great drought in the Northern Kingdom. The rain didn't fall, nine houses out of ten were deserted six, and there were starving people everywhere. In the original book, there was no such disaster in the Northern Kingdom at all. After some pain we have XYA and LWD acting like disastrous drunkards and the princess misinterpreting the situation and then the drought Noel. 